In this video, I will explain to you the relation between the Russia Ukraine crisis and the scandalous Amanda Knox case in Perugia, Italy. To understand this, you must understand that Americans are not a people, but a product, and that Russians are still a real people, which the pharaohs want to destroy and mix it all up by importing peoples and races from all over the world in order to stop the growing Slavic nationalism in Russia. Just as Pharaoh has done in America and Pharaoh is doing in Western Europe today. 250 years ago, there was no such thing yet as America and the Americans. While Russia and the Russian people already existed. Where do they come from all of a sudden, 250 years ago? This American product of the big melting pot. Well, Octogon of the Knights Templars and their Freemasons had a dream to build their biggest, all-powerful, horizontal rule empire somewhere in the world. As Switzerland in the Alps, their first octagon state in history from 1291 was getting a bit small. And our masters wanted to split up the tasks, as in specialization. Switzerland, for their financial and diplomatic tasks, and their new giant octagon for their military and economical tasks concerning the weapons productions. Now you can see USA, 54% of all the weapons being produced in the world from America. Russia is only, only this little bit, 5%. They don't stand a single chance, the Russians do. That's why from around the moment of the creation of their American empire, the notorious Swiss mercenaries disappeared from all battlefields. Last seen during the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648, deliberately chasing many prosecuted Protestants into their new American empire. The Octogon's Swiss mercenaries disappearance coinciding with the birth of Pharaoh's biggest New World Order creation. Funny, huh? In 1618, the Thirty Year War against the Protestants started in Europe. And two years later, the Mayflower sailed in a Protestant exodus, being the real founding date of the US, and not 1776. Protestantism got created by the Knights Templars and led to the founding of their biggest New World Order, horizontal rule state of all times and all according to plan. You can watch this video here about it. Therefore, 
it may sound as a paradox that the Swiss mercs under Templar command were fighting for the Catholic Church and against the Protestants. This was only to push the Protestants to colonize the new huge horizontal rule republic called America and its human product called the Americans. So it says a paradox, the definition of a paradox is a statement or a proposition that seems self-contradictory or absurd, but in reality expresses a possible truth. An example by Shakespeare, I must be cruel to be kind. Or by George Orwell, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. And this paradox about the Swiss mercs here, the Swiss mercenaries fighting for the Knights Templars against the Protestants, while Protestantism itself was founded by the Knights Templars. So, guess where the Swiss octagon mercs went to when in 1648 they massively disappeared? from the European battlefields? Well, the answer to that question you can find here on the channel Homeland Security in the video Swiss sleeper agents, agents in USA and the war makers from Switzerland on all key positions. Why do you think it says here 1620 to 2020 on the commemorative and not 1776? to 2020 huh? with the British Queen on a US $10 coin well because the English nobility still owns your butt so the masters started to import first different peoples from all over Europe to make this new product called the Americans who are therefore not a people but a mix of peoples who have lost their original national identities into a brand new serving product for our masters. They brought in the different ingredients from Ireland, Germany, Italy, Norway, Greece, and from all over Europe, and put them into a big blender to make a big American milkshake, falsely calling the new milkshake a people, which they are not, as Americans are not a people but a Freemason product by Pharaoh who have been uprooted out of their original peoples and then dropped into the big mixer as in a big reset and put a new but artificial label on their new livestock, Americans. The masters brought them over on big ships from all over Europe, gave them a penetrating nasal sound, which you find nowhere else in the entire world, and especially developed for their new and biggest New World Order product of all times. It wouldn't surprise me if ancient pharaonic was pronounced with the same nasal sounds of their American product. The folks who were already living there in the new octagon were considered as useless eaters and needed to be decimated 
to make place for the new product for which the Swiss mass murderers, Swiss Colonel Bouquet and Swiss General Costa took over the task like a pair of genuine Freemason enforcers in order to get things done every time it needs a huge war to set in motion the big blender and the gender bender, which is another item of the master's agenda. The Russian people will never accept. And that's funny. It even said the word, it says the word which I'm not allowed to pronounce in reverse. H-O-M-O, -O, one of those here. So World War II was that huge war to put the blender in motion with immediately in 1946 the mass immigration in Europe set in motion where big companies literally went searching for guest workers from Turkey, Italy, African and Arab countries, with the result that countries like England, France, Germany and the rest are no countries with a genuine people anymore. Just as it was done in probably the biggest human experiment ever through the creation of the United States of the Big Blender. This is the main reason for what's happening now with the Ukraine crisis, which was already decided by our masters in Switzerland. When US President Biden retracted the US troops out of Afghanistan, and when I saw that happening, I thought, uh-oh, where do the masters going to need all those troops? Which has become evident now, since the NATO troops are all messed up at the Russian border. And President Putin is of course part of the scam, betraying the Russian people. As the Russian and Ukrainian people are going to be the big losers in the end through mass starvation. And after that, to be put in motion, the big blender needing to accept pink list killers and Nubians all over Russia and the Ukraine. As Mr. Putin is, of course, part of Pharaoh's Mafia, just as any other president in the entire world is. This here, in the top here, is St. Petersburg here. And all this is Teutonic Knights. So Putin is from St. Petersburg, which is almost Teutonic Knights territory of this Black Order being all over the Baltic and Putin is their man to destroy Russia and the Ukraine in order to make another big blender gender bender out of the recalcitrant Slavic peoples. Apparently Putin is a billionaire with lots of companies and having stashed a lot of money in Switzerland. Yeah, Panama Papers put Putin funds in Zurich. So please, dear Russian people, wake up because this guy is not your friend, in spite of the way he's showing himself as a masculine man, Russian 
the way the Russians like to see their presidents. Trump, he did exactly the same thing. Just don't fall in this, into the scam, please, and wake up. Now, I'll read it out loud for you. Putin's friend, one of the people exposed in the fallout about the Panama Papers, is Sergei Roldugin, a close friend of Russian President Vladimir Putin. As reported by the Swiss newspaper Tagus Anzeiger, Roldugin stashed millions at the Zurich branch, that's in Switzerland, of Russian financial institution Gazprom Bank, money that he is unlikely to have earned as a professional cellist and conductor. The records show Roldugin is a behind the scenes player in a clandestine network operated by Putin Associates that has shuffled at least 2 billion through banks and offshore companies. According to the ICIJ, I don't know what that is, German Daily Süddeutsche Zeitung and other media partners, Roldugin is listed as the owner of offshore companies that have obtained payments from other companies worth tens of millions of dollars. A company li linked to the cellist also grabbed secret influence over Russia's largest truck maker and others snagged a big slice of Russia's TV advertising industry. It's possible Roldugin who has publicly claimed not to be a businessman is not a true beneficiary of these riches. Instead, the evidence in the files suggests Roldugin is acting as a frontman for a network of Putin loyalists and perhaps for Putin himself. You know, wake up, dear Russians, wake up, you know, they're all the same criminals all over the world. You know. There also are rumors and actual witness accounts that his children are in Swiss boarding schools and that his children of Mr. Putin are Swiss and born in Switzerland. So here you can see Putin, of course. I wonder what it says here. Oh, it looks like a square compass. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. So this is his wife. She was an Olympic um, athlete, much younger than grandfather here. And these are his two Swiss children. And our witness accounts and um, newspapers have been, even the newspapers have been writing about this. So he's got his money in Switzerland. He's got his children there and when uh, when he's finished with Russia, that's probably where he goes to, eh? So this is uh, his uh, wife of Mr. Putin. It says Alina Kabeva, and she is it says she is reportedly the longtime partner of a Russian president Vladimir Putin. Yeah. So. Quite a young woman. There she is, a uh, athletic star, gymnastics. So, you know, why is this red here? Right? Eh? Just think about it. And um, it says in the personal life as well. Yeah, personal life. Uh, in April 2008, the Moskovsky correspondent reported that Kabayeva was engaged to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The story was denied and the newspaper was shut down. Yeah, well, that's how they do it in a dictatorship, eh? <laughs> Just shut down the newspaper. Okay, shut up, you know. In the following years, the status of Kabayeva and Putin's relationship became a topic of speculation, including allegations that have been 
that they have multiple children together. In July 2013, Kabaeva reported that she did not have any children. Yeah, 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 sure. All a bunch of liars. Look here. I already made a video about this, but it, it disappeared. Like, in March 2015, she was reported to have given birth to a daughter at the VIP hospital, very important person's hospital, of St. Anne in Ticino, Switzerland. Yeah, we go, as always. You know, and the woman apparently, she's, she's a Muslim, you know, and Putin, he's pretending like he's a uh, Orthodox Christian and even, you know, sending some kids into prison because they, uh, they, they made some music in an Orthodox church. What was it? Pussy Riot? You remember that? Eh? He's just pretending, people. And dear Russians, wake up, you know, don't believe his jokes, you know, don't make a picture of this bloke by his jokes. Make a picture of him by, by the money he's having in Switzerland and all the kiddies he's having there in the, in the rich Swiss boarding schools. Forget about the jokes and forget about his smiling. Forget about him being naked on a, on a horseback. Forget about that. You know, that's, that's all cinema, you know. Just look at the facts and wake up. And um, why always Switzerland? Eh? It's always Switzerland, our leaders, because it's their base. And the Teutonic Knights, where he's definitely from, and this is another proof, you know, that he's related to Switzerland, you know, because he's from St. Petersburg, next to the Teutonic Knights area. You know, so I, I knew enough, you know, and, th and this further proves it. And um, why always Switzerland, hey? Eh? Well, because um, it's their base. Remember the video I did about the uh, Teutonic Knights and how I get a, got aggressed by a uh, Teutonic Knights priest in Switzerland? Because that's where they came from. The Knights Templars went to Switzerland in 1291. They disappeared and they went over in the Teutonic Knights at the same time. And they did another 200 years of crusades in the Baltic States in Saint, almost St. Petersburg. So when it got a bit calmer, you know, they, they went over to St. Petersburg to infiltrate Russia and to destroy Russia, which is coming now. They're going to destroy Russia and the people are going to end in, in famine. They're going to die of hunger. And then they will be ready to accept the whole big blender gender bender. So here it is on my other channel, Homeland Security, where I did last week about 22 uploads of long videos, or all two hours, as you can see here, of some of my older videos that got taken down from my old channel. So these are videos I made actually like uh, uh, 10 years ago, you know, and um so here it is there's that video about the teutonic knights here you see the the teutonic priest who aggressed me in a church while i was peacefully filming something and um they hooded up on me on the in my back i didn't even see them coming i was filming and all of a sudden all these guys from the teutonic church they were all in there when I came in there, it was empty and I was filming, you know. And um, also because of this, the Swiss Nazi authorities, you know, would come out of the Teutonic Knights and the Templars. They wanted to put me in prison for this. Also, for everything, you know, they just lie all sort of stuff together. You see how aggressive he is, you know. I was doing nothing. I was just peacefully filming. So this is about the Teutonic Knights. It's a long film. It's two hours. They're all two hours. And um, so, well, check it out. On my channel, here it is. Homey Land Security. Homey Land from Homey Ross Sick Security. It's all sick, you know. And you find it like here in the channel section. And this is what a real Russian said about Switzerland, the same Switzerland where Mr. Putin, 
He's having his base, his financial base, his family base, his political base, everything. Here, this is Russian Major General Konstantin Petrov. And so here's the title on my channel, Gatsevrats. And this real Russian, he said, since the global mafia live in Switzerland. He didn't live much longer after he said this. Putin killed 300,000 Chechnyan civilians, of which 40% children. During the two Chechnyan wars of 1994 and 1999, and he would most certainly do the same with the Ukrainians if he'd get the chance to do so. It says, I'll read for you, in June 2005, Dugvaka Abdurakmanov, a deputy prime minister in the Kremlin controlled Chechen administration, said about 300,000 people have been killed during the two wars in Chechnya over the past decade. He also said that more than 200,000 people have gone missing. You can read more in here in Wikipedia and this one here. Here it says that 40% of them were children. I can't show you because they all ask cookies. So, and I don't want any cookies. So I have to show it to you like this. President Vladimir Putin has been lying to the whole world, saying, no, no, I'm just having some military exercises. Don't you worry. Of course, I won't invade the Ukraine. The whole world and humanity as a whole have heard the bold lies of this notorious Russian liar without any honor, who even lied to the Russian people and even to his Russian soldiers, who were told the same lies, that it was just an exercise until they found themselves in the middle of the Ukraine, where they got threatened by their superiors to obey orders and continue the invasion or to get executed in front of a military firing squad. Putin, the trickster, even tricked his own soldiers into this war in the Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos, Russian POW say they were tricked, threatened during invasion. Uh, there are many more, and um, it might be a lie, you know, these videos, but I don't think so. Because this is what politicians do. They lie. They all lie. It doesn't matter if it's Putin or Biden or Trump or Macron. So i rather believe these soldiers and, you know, what they say than, you know, all these politicians. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's a reasonable chance that it is, uh, these videos are, are true. Putin is a very bad publicity for the Russian people, who now are all considered to be a people of bold liars because of this Swiss sleeper agent of the Teutonic Octogon called Vladi the Liar. Uh, I hope you can all see the Octogon here in the neck in the colors red and white. Octogon. And here it's going four directions, just like here. You know, this is Switzerland, Switzerland north for the Swiss Germans so they can wreck Germany for the French-speaking Swiss going to the west 
so they can destroy France. For the Italian speaker speaking Swiss going south to Italy and here the Reto-Romanic going to the east. A country of four languages with an octagon. Look at the symbols people. It's not for nothing that they put an octagon here with four directions. Vladi the liar with his not very funny put in jokes made by his public relations officers to gain our trust. With his naked butt on a lame horse, just as the rest of those Swiss sleeper agents. I'll show you one more time what Vladi Dalaya did in Chechnya. Yeah, this is a witness account by Vakid, an inhabitant of Chechnya. During my childhood, my father and grandfather would say that we couldn't defeat Russia with force because it had always fought dirty. We need a little patience and measured steps. Russia is already cracking at the seams and there's no doubt that it will fall apart. We need to be prepared for this in order to not to suffer the consequences. We must learn patience from our ancestors. We must wait, Vakin told. Chechens may swear allegiance to Russia a hundred times, but they are doing it under compulsion. Kadyrov, the president, right now, is right when he says that Putin saved the Chechens from annihilation. He stopped an inch before wiping them out. This is why the spark of hatred towards those who brought two cruel wars to their homeland, killing about 300,000 people, civilians, of which 40% were children during the Chech Chechen wars, has never gone out in the depths of the people's souls. If the current generation of Chechens doesn't remind Russia of this, their children surely will. If your Ruskies had a bit more stamina, you could make a song entitled Let's Spank Vladi's Naked Butt. Putin, you're done. Once a liar, always a liar. Are all Russians liars? I don't know. But at least it seems no Russian seems to be bothered by the president's notorious lies. <laughs> as long as the president attacks the terrible West. About whom? the Russians mistakenly believe that the decadent Westerners are no real men who are able to fight. Well, to underestimate the enemy has led to the downfall of many an empire. So this is here from the, um, it's from February 26, 2022. Now it's uh, March 2nd and um, Russia already lost a lot more now. So February 26th, they lost 13 planes. <laughs> They're expensive things, you know. Eight helicopters, 15 cannons, one book, which is a, um, a missile launcher probably, and 536 armored vehicles and um, actually it's the um, uh, the uh, portable missile launch launchers making the difference so the list goes on you know this was uh, eight helicopters you've seen that just before they lost 102 tanks all these you know and three and a half thousand personnel and 200 prisoners. Don't underestimate your enemy. Never do that.
Hey, Ruski, your hero Putin taught you the myth of the superiority of the Russian warrior, and you were so eager to believe these cheap tricks and notorious lies because you felt so flattered by it, integrating it into your daily lives, probably due to a chronic national minority complex, needing to feel superior to the rest of the world, and thus executed through primary violence. The Nazis did the same with the Germans, making them believe their superior and invincible warriors just as Putin did with the Russians. Somehow the naked chest looks familiar, doesn't it now? Oh, there it is. I knew I saw it somewhere. Teutonic Knights Octogon. The French king didn't lie about the Knights Templars and their Teutonic Knights being Pinkley's killers showing naked body parts combined with pseudo-warrior fantasies. And some more pseudo-warrior fantasies of the Octagon Teutonic Knights boys. It says, shirtless Vladimir Putin is back on his official 2022 calendar. The Teutonic Knights and their naked chests. The Teutonic Knights and their naked chests. Same story, same technique, the same ones behind the screens pulling the strings. Same story, same technique, the same ones behind the screens pulling the strings. The Teutonic Beach Boys. The Teutonic Beach Boys. Once a liar, always a liar. So now we have here Vladi the liar. Talk about a certain denazification of the Ukraine. We know that Vladi is most likely lying again in order to divide and rule between the Russians and the Ukrainians based upon the events of World War II, when the Ruskies executed the Holodomor genocide on the Ukrainians, starving 10 million killed by the Ruskies. Now I'll read it for you. Ukraine is the most fertile land in the world, the bread basket of Europe. But when the Ukrainians tried to assert independence from the USSR, the Bolsheviks, led by Stalin, exterminated them through hunger. In 1932-33, an artificial famine was brutally enforced, and 10 million innocents and their animals starved to death. Even as word got out, America and the world did nothing to stop it. This unspeakable political crime against humanity is the genocide known as Holodomor. So, when the Nazis came in the Ukraine in 1941, the Ukrainians saw them as liberators and saviors, saving them from the Russian genociders until the Nazis started to act similarly to the Russians and massacred another 5 million non j Walker Ukrainians. So this is on Wikipedia, Reichskommissariat Ukraine. Here, the Nazi occupation of Ukraine ended the lives of millions of civilians in the Holocaust and other Nazi mass killings. It is estimated 900,000 to 1.6 million jaywalkers 
and three to four million non-Jewish Ukrainians were killed during the occupations. Other sources estimate that 5.2 million Ukrainian civilians of all ethnic groups perished due to crimes against humanity. War-related disease and famine amounting to more than 12% of Ukraine's population at the time. Uh, so here's the Ukraine. And uh, some pictures here. Here it says, Mr. Hitler, it says Hitler. Here it says Hitler. Hitler the Liberator. Now, these people didn't have a choice. You know, they got squeezed into world powers who tried to kill them. Uh, this looks like Bormann. The guy was always there when there was some money to get collected. Probably ended his life in Switzerland. And... Um, where all the money goes to, as usual. So, uh, here it says, the Nazi propaganda poster in Ukrainian that says Hitler the Liberator. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, of course they saw him as a liberator, you know. After the Ruskies, they murdered 10 million of their people and their children and, and everything. The people even ate their own children. Can you imagine? They knew they were going to die anyway, so, you know, make it quick for the children. And, you know, why not eat them? And um, this is what the Ruskies did. Eh? So I'd say, you know, the Ruskies should just shut up. You know, these people are no Nazis. It's, it's ridiculous to say such a thing. So it's ridiculous, Putin saying that Ukrainians are Nazis. It's just Pharaoh not liking the Ukrainians and decimating them over and over again. In a situation comparable to that of the Kurds, some people's Pharaoh just doesn't like. And as Putin follows the directives of the Teutonic Knights Order next to the naked chest Nazi show, just like Hitler using two Muslim SS divisions to attack the white raised Europeans in a genuine jihad butchering 400,000 Slavs in the Balkans during World War II by the Nazi SS Muslim divisions Hanschar and the Muslim SS division Skanderbeg dressed in their black Teutonic uniforms as you can see here. Therefore the Teutonic Putin does everything parallel to the Teutonic Nazi directives of the Swiss Octogon, like using the Islamic Kadyrovtsi, also dressed in black, like the SS, in order to butcher white raised Slavic peoples, just like Mr. Hitler did. Why? Well, because the Knights Templars and the Teutonic Knights also have an Arabic Muslim branch, which I explain in this video here on my channel Homeland Security, and here's the title. Teutonic Vladi here is the biggest enemy of the Slavic peoples since Hitler. And look at the sword here. The sword. Uh, this is the KGB crest. Look at the sword. It's exactly the same sword as the um, uh, um, Kadi Kadirovtsi uh, Muslims fighting for Mr. Hitler here have. So that means they were made by the KGB. Uh, it's all Teutonic. It's all Templars behind it all. I'll show you the symbol. So here's their name. They're called the Kadirovtsi, the Black Muslims. 
um, paid by Putin to um, to murder the white Slavic Ukrainians and their children, just as the Nazis did. It's always the same technique. It's the same people behind it. They don't have much fantasy. Um, and if you don't know history, you will never understand what's happening. So this is what it's about. Well, you can here yeah, you can find it up. You can find it yourself, right? Eh? Wikipedia. So I'll show you the logo. Look, this is one of the logos of the uh, Kadi Rovtsi, same sword as in the KGB sword. So just as the CIA is always doing, the KGB is doing the same, and they're brothers with the C CIA. It's all one and the same bunch octagon out of the Knights Templars and the Teutonic Knights. So they, they created this, you know, just like uh, the Islamic State, uh, you know, were created by the CIA. And uh, so, as you see, the mountains here is Chechnya is a mountainous region. This is probably the badge of the uh, Kadirovci uh, mountain division. And I guess this is the badge of the Kadirovci motorized division. The same KGB sword. I don't know what it says here, but it's also the Roman Gladio. So here we're back at the secret organization Gladio, which in fact the NATO and the CIA, they were all behind it. It was all octagon um, against the peoples. So it is in fact a Gladio where it finally, it all leads back to. You know, it all leads back to history to a certain point. And the Romans, the Romans were also pharaonically led, as I explain in my videos. Uh, it's part of the Octogon. So that's why there is a Gladio. It's all the same bunch. They don't have so much fantasy, really. It's always the same techniques. And uh, so you, you must dig into history people they're really arrogant you know look at this it's so arrogant they're all they're always the same stuff same techniques same pictures the same items the same symbols you know i always say arrogance is the mother of ignorance so and here's a comparison with the badge of the ss um Hanschar and skanderbeg the uh, Muslim SS divisions, you know, also a knife or a sword, because these guys, uh, they just like knives. You know, that's the perfect way for a Muslim, you know, to uh, to uh, to kill your adversary, which we can also see in the outskirts of big European towns. Where all these guys, Muslim immigrants are always walking around with a knife, which they pull out and um, a lot of killings as well and threatenings. And it's just, it's, it's a part of the culture. And that's why you can see it, uh, the parallel of the culture um, into the, um, in the badges of the, um, of these military units set up by the enemy within who are encrusted in our own society. And they use other peoples and other religions, you know, to crush us. And uh, the symbols are really parallel to it. It's really identical. And here again, the uh, one of the badges, they had several badges of the, um, the Nazi SS divisions. This is the typ typical Hanshar or Hanjar, the Islamic round sword which they still use today in Saudi Arabia, you know, to chop somebody's head off for some reason or another, if he's not pious enough. And together with the swastika. And the swastika, as I've shown you, it also comes out of the Middle East. It comes out of a temp Templar cross and before that out of a pyramid. See my video, um, a, uh, a swastika out of a pyramid on my channel, Gatsafrats. And it's just as the Kadirovsky, it's a lot of black. It's always black. And why? This is because of the uh, the Hashashin, you know, the like the uh, 
uh, the the Muslim uh, the um, uh, they they were not Sunni they were uh, Shia uh, assassins an, an assassin cult we were very much friends with the Knights Templars as well that, that's why we find this all in black we find this back you know just as the Dep Japanese dudes in in black um, or the the Japanese assassins the ninjas. And it, it can't, the ninjas also come out of the uh, the Japanese aristocracy. It's the same pharaoh. It's the same stuff. It's all over the world, and we should all unite. You know, all peoples and all religions. We must unite because they want to divide us. And again, personally, I have no problems with Muslims, I'm, or immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself, uh, though I'm white, and. Uh, I met a lot of nice Muslims who took me hitchhiking and uh, who gave me food. And um, so it's not because of that that I'm telling you this. Not at all. I'm not into dividing peoples and races. I have just a problem with the masters who do these sort of things to us, which is extremely evil. Another one of Putin's parallels with the Nazis is that Hitler's pretext of starting World War II was to assist some German minorities in the East, like the Sudeten Germans and the Silesia Germans, who were in fact German guest workers and immigrants in Czechoslovakia and Poland and literally foreign immigrants and foreign invaders. Just like today's situation in the Ukrainian provinces Luhansk and Donetsk of the Donbass region, into which the Pharaonic Tsars imported loads of Russians beginning 1720 in order to ratify the Ukrainian identity, which of course Stalin repeated with more Ruski imports through a massive amount of Russian immigrants in a situation in which the guests started to take over their host like a virus. A situation quite comparable to European towns, where the next immigrant guest worker generations completely have taken over control over entire parts of European towns, claiming it to be their territory. And again, I have nothing against immigrants. I get along quite well with Muslims and others. And I just don't like the game of our masters, you know, to set peoples up and to set religious religions and races up against each other uh, in order to create war. And, you know, this picture here of Mr. Putin, you know, there have been pictures of Mr. Hitler with the Sudetenland Germans and the Silesia Germans, exactly the same way his finger was pointing at Sudetenland and Silesia. Silesia in Poland and Sudetenland in the Czechoslovakia. They're just repeating history. It's the same thing. They're just looking for a pretext. So this is Luhansk, Donetsk, Donbass. And these people here, they don't belong to the Ukraine, they're immigrants and they should behave like guests and not try to take over their hosts, their Ukrainian hosts. This is wrong. And so I just want to look, to have you look at the octagon here at his, um, at his black Teutonic clothes. This is Octogon of the Teutonic Knights and the Knights Templars, and he knows it. So here you can read about the Russification of the Ukraine 
Here you can see it started with the Tsars, Peter, Catherine, Alexander, Nicholas, and it was taken over by Stalin, Khrushchev, they, they all did it. So it's again, you know, the, the Tsars, it already says the word Tsar, uh, they are the pharaohs setting it all up. Um, our masters, our masters created a fifth column inside of the Ukraine, which they can mobilize whenever they want in order to um, create havoc, which is which happens to be the um, the slogan of the Knights of the um, of the Freemasons, Ordo Ab Kao. So. It's our masters, you know, and apparently all these our masters have something against the Ukrainian people, um, just as they have against some other peoples, like the Kurds and also the Afghans. There are some peoples who are not very obedient, who obey their hearts, maybe, or, or obey their the inner being instead of the masters. The, the Swiss are extremely obedient, so they get everything. And they never have a war. But peoples who are not obedient, who don't want to obe obey the masters, who rather obey their, their inner being and their hearts, um, Pharaoh doesn't like them. So Pharaoh tries to mix it all up. And so this was part of the big blender. You know, the Russification of the Ukraine. You know, it's it's always the same. It's the same agenda. And if you don't understand it, and you don't, you can't put it in a historical perspective, uh, you will never understand anything. Then some people say, oh, the Russians are bad. The other ones say the Ukrainians are bad. The Americans are bad. And this is exactly what our masters want. I'm quite sure there's nothing wrong with the people in Luhansk or in Donetsk. Neither is there anything wrong with the Ukrainian people or most of the Ruskies. Um, we're being set up people and it must end. So this is also Wikipedia, Russians in the Ukraine uh, because of a situation created by our masters just like in Western Europe in the uh, 50s, 60s and 70s, our masters went looking for guest workers. They lied to us. They say, well, they're just going to stay for a while. They're guest workers. Although they knew from the beginning, yeah, uh, they knew from the beginning they were meant to stay. You know? So our masters lie. That's all they're going to do. Lie, lie, lie. So we must team up together. Even the people in Luhansk and Donetsk and the Ukrainians, the, old, the only way, you know, is to team up together and um, get rid of our politicians, you know, all these pharaohs, they're all Freemasons. And um, so there has been a, an agenda, you know, to mix up the Ukraine just as, um, what we see happening all over. Ein Volk, ein Führer, ein Reich. You know, one people, one leader. They, they, one empire. They want to make one, one mixed people. You know, it's so much easier to rule. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, it might end up in civil war and in war, which is steered by our masters all the time. So Putin's setup of World War III is perfectly identical to the setup of World War II. <clears throat> no wonder, because it's all Swiss Templar Teutonic Knights strategy behind the scenes. Therefore, Swissy has a very large Swiss sleeper agent fifth column community in the Ukraine, always going for all key positions in all countries in the world, like the one million 
Swiss Americans in the US on all key positions. Hey, Swissy. Yeah, it's on Wikipedia, the Swiss emigration to Russia. There was a significant emigration of Swiss people to the Russian Empire uh, from the late 17th to the late 19th century. And it's been estimated like 60,000 Swiss lived in Russia between roughly 1700 and 1970. That's probably over a million now, you know, Swiss farmers. And they went to Bessarabia. Yeah. So you can see where Bessarabia is. It's uh, part of the uh, Ukraine and um, Moldavia. And they are there. They're always there. And that has to do with the Knights Templars. When the Knights Templars who founded Switzerland, so watch my video, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, on the same channel. It's 18 hours. All the, all the proofs are in it. So here, look. Um, history of German settlement in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, talking about Sudetenland, Silesia. There's a Swiss diaspora. Oh, look at that, everywhere. And here, yeah, Swiss Americans. This is a very interesting website. I've already shown it to you. In which you can see, it says somewhere there are 1 million. Oh, here. Look, total population in America is almost 1 million. They are. And there's the history of it. They rule the US. Swiss Americans by numbers of in towns in like New York and in Oregon, they're 33,000. So especially the more like um, towns with a, um, you know, where they have the Ku Klux Klan and all that, they're, they're mostly like Swiss communities settled by Swiss immigrants. Swiss Historical Society, the um, notable people. Okay, there was also another one that's, uh, I think it was Swiss people maybe, where you can see um, many American presidents, they were Swiss. So you also have Swiss Argentines, Brazilians, Canadians, Chileans, um, etc. So... It's it's because it's all because of the uh, of the Knights Templars who founded Switzerland in 1291. So let's go back to where we were. So in Bessarabia in Ukraine, and of course they went. They also went to other parts of the um, of the uh, the Ukraine and um, Swiss emigration to Russia. Mostly the Ukraine, um, well here, Bessarabia, which is part of the Ukraine. It says Ukrainian Bujak region. Um, I'll show you the video, uh, the Swiss beast in a moment, for the ones who are new to this channel. So for the ones who are new to this channel, that's why I have to repeat this. It's the same channel, Gure. Here's the title, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 1. I'm, to, I'm explaining the, the Nazi Templars. And um, so you have to search it in the channel, give the whole name. If you, if you put it in the search machine of uh, YouTube, it won't pop up because YouTube doesn't want you to see this video. Here's Part 2, The Occult Origins. And there are five parts. It's altogether 18 hours. Here's part three, the final assault. And part five, it's on my other channel, um, Homeland Security. Well, it doesn't even show up. Oh, here it is. Here's part four, breaking individuals and nations. Ukrainians, breaking individuals and nations. Go and, go and watch this. And so the um, the people new to this channel maybe are Ukrainian brothers and sisters. So you must absolutely see this 18-hour series 
because it explains everything. And of course, the Ukraine, the Knights Templars had castles and commanderies in the Ukraine. They were everywhere. And if you don't understand it, I mean, there's not much can you, you can do. You only end up in a civil war if you don't understand who the, who the real enemy is. I fought twice in my life against the Russian army. Once in Angola in 1981, as you can see here, and the second time in Afghanistan in 1985. So this video you can see here on YouTube. And I can tell you that Russian soldiers are a lousy, undisciplined bunch who are good in killing children and raping women, but no good soldiers and always with old weapons material. Just look at the Russian videos on the internet on YouTube about Russian drivers. Russians just can't drive and they see children on the Russian roads as collateral damage. Here you see a, a Russian three-year-old flying. Here you see a part of the pram. And uh, the Russians, they behave similarly in a war. They don't care about children. They are child killers. Even on their own roads, they are child killers. This is what a Russian soldier looks like. They behave similarly and even worse in a war as on their own streets. Well, the Russian army is exactly like that. A bunch of mad drivers who don't care about others and leave a drastic amount of collateral damage behind. There are loads of videos here on the internet, like this one here. They, they just slam a, a tank through a through an airport, you know, and, and they're even proud of it. You know, it's like a it's like a race, you know. Who can who can slam down the most children, you know, with his car? No, I'm serious, I'm not joking. Yeah. Videos show drunk Russian soldiers ram their tank into airport wall damage surveillance systems this is how they are it's a very undisciplined soldiers very bad soldiers you know and when it goes wrong they all they go all crying well if you see those youtube videos you know you see cars flying around and children you know being slammed all over killed and massacred you know, the Russian roads, you know, it, it looks like a war zone. You know. So let's show them. Let's show them what a real war is, shan't we now? The Russian tanks I saw in the Ukraine war on the internet are first generation with a cannon hopping up and down with every bump in the road. Whereas any NATO tank has a stabilizing system, keeping the cannon in target, no matter how many bumps in the road. Here you see, you know, the tank, you know, uh, going down, but the, it has a gun stabilizer. You know, it, it stays straight here, yeah, shooting. These have st these are st straight shooters. Whereas the um, the Russian tanks I saw in the internet like on youtube or by the media you know when every russian tank i saw the, the cannon like hopping up and down during their so-called um, russian army exercises before the war so they've got really very bad old-fashioned scrap material the Germans already in the 1980s had a tank with such a high quality gun stabilizer on the cannon that a glass of German beer didn't fall off on extremely rough terrain. In uh, Afghanistan, the Russians murdered 2 million Afghan civilians 
from 1979 till 1989 and leaving another 3 million wounded and 5 million Afghans flee their country. So this is on Wikipedia. Here you can see these dudes here. In those days it was the uh, Mujahideen. Mujahideen. So here you can see it. Uh, yeah. Civilians during that war. Two million killed, five million refugees, two million refugees in Afghanistan, five million refugees outside of Afghanistan, around three million Afghans wounded. That's what the Ruskies did. The Ruskies even dropped toys for Afghan children with bombs in it in order to maim them. And this is one of the results of the Afghan war. Russian product. The Ruskies are a bunch of child killers. They do it on their roads, on their national roads with their cars. They do it in the wars. And it seems they're kind of proud of it. In spite of his jokes and smooth talk Putin has been trained to kill as he was a lieutenant colonel in the KGB Komitet Gosadarstveno Bezopaznost I was in there once in the 80s inside the KGB headquarters at the Jarzinski Square I remember it was very dark in there with only an office lamp at the tables in the various rooms. A creepy place. Putin is of course a good pal with Biden, Trump, Macron and the rest of his pharaonic cousins ruling over humanity. And Putin will betray the Russian people because Putin wants the same blender and gender bender agenda as the rest of his international Freemason pals. And it's here where we get to the relation of the Ukraine war with the Amanda Knox case in Perugia, Italy. Because the Italian Freemasons, whom you can see here, in Perugia, where it all happened, wants the same chocolate milkshake blender for the Italian people as anywhere else in the world. And when it would have been known too much that in fact the Nubian Rudy Gede from Ivory Coast had raped and murdered Meredith Kircher, then it would have given random lynch parties on immigrants all over Italy, drastically slowing down the master's blender agenda. So, 10 years after the Amanda Knox uh, case in Perugia, this happened. What the Freemasons already wanted to stop. And um, so I read it for you. This guy, Luca Traini. You can see the runic sign on his head. He was into right wing politics. So Luca Traini is a far right supporter. Report, uh, supporter reportedly tells um, the trigger for his shooting spree was the grisly murder of an Italian woman by a Nigerian asylum seeker. So the same story basically as in the Amanda Knox um, Freemason scandal. And I mean this is Italy, the, you know they are hot-headed and um, they have enough of all the many people, most Italians are, well I mean 
they invented fascism it's from Italy, you know, and Mussolini and everything. So I traveled over Italy and I must say it's, that's quite a fascist mentality, you know. So, well, that's not my problem, you know. If you don't like that, you can avoid it. But anyway, this gives a certain situation which the Freemasons and their agenda, which is more important than the life of Amanda Knox, of course, they had to avoid that. So I'll read it out for you what the guy, what he, after this Italian young woman was murdered, just like Meredith, Meredith, Meredith Kircher in Perugia. The, the Freemasons and the one, the masters in power, they knew exactly what would going to happen because they know the Italians and they know the potential for fascist uh, reactions and etc. Um, you know, um, they, they chose Amanda Knox to be the... Um, uh, you know, to uh, sacrifice her, as in a, um... yeah, so this guy here, Luca Traini, he, he said by himself, instinctively, I turned around when he heard the news, I went home, I opened the safe, and took the pistol, and decided to kill them all, and that's what he did, well, actually, he didn't even kill anybody. Um, so, Amanda Knox is just collateral damage in the whole affair, you know, because they know perfectly well what's going to happen in a, in a very similar case, you know, and that's why this is important, you know, to understand the Amanda Knox scandal with that Freemason uh, judge, uh, Minini, uh, Giuliano Minini. He says he's not, he's like, a, he says he's Catholic against the Freemasons, but they're all lying, you know. A judge is a Freemason, most of them, you know. And otherwise, if he was, if he would have been a good Catholic, he wouldn't have done it, you know, what he did. You know, so, Amanda Knox is just a collateral, you know. And so I'll show you some more. So this is what happened, the Maserata shooting in 2018. Uh, 11 years, so let's say uh, 10 years after the um, the Amanda Knox case. And here it says, um, on October 3, 2018, Traini was sentenced to 12 years in prison. And the murderer of, um, of Meredith Kircher, he did also exactly 12 years. It's, you know, these are political trials. So here it says, this guy here, he, yeah, it was a drive-by a drive -by shooting. Okay, I'll read it here. On February 3, 2018, in the city of Maserata, Marque, 28-year-old local Luca Traini driving a black Alfa Romeo 147 and armed with a 9mm Glock 17, third generation semi-automatic, seriously wounded in a drive-by shooting six African migrants. Traini also targeted the local headquarters of the ruling Italian Democratic Party, who, you know, will take them all in, after the attack. Traini reportedly had an Italian flag draped on his shoulders and raised his arm in a fascist salute. That's what I'm telling you. Italy, I mean, it's, it's a fact. It's quite fascist, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this guy, he never killed anybody. And he got the same prison sentence as the killer of Meredith um, Kircher in the Amanda Knox story. So, you know, these are all political trials. So a guy who'd never killed anybody and he did it out of a, an action, a criminal action of some, by someone else. So he was sort of triggered. He got the same prison sentence as 
as a real killer and a rapist and a burglar and a drug dealer you know so this guy was not a criminal but he was politically motivated and he gets the same sentence as a um as a convicted killer the rudy uh, gede probably a german name so you have to pronounce his gude uh, rudy gude just like uh, Ke uh, Kircher, and uh, it's a German name, it's actually pronounced Kircher. So, uh, it's very interesting because if you want to know what really happened, you must find yourself a similar case and of, a, of a woman getting murdered, like in this case of the Maserata killing and in the... Uh, in the Meredith Kircher Amanda Knox killing. So in both cases, you got a woman killed and then you go on comparing. And so you can conclude certain facts out of that, that in the same country, you know, there's uh, funny things are happening, you know, the same prison sentence for the one side a murder and the other side, no murder at all. And um, uh, I mean, the guy, he didn't, uh, it was not prepared to kill anybody. It was just in, in a hot headed moment. Uh, he, he just did it, you know. And, well, not that I say it's good, of course not. But uh, um, so, um, you know, it's, it's quite scandalous, the things that are going on in Italy. And by comparison, you can see, you know, it definitely is about the agenda. And the agenda is far more important uh, for the Freemasons and our masters, you know, to mix it all up. And again, I have no problems with it. I think it's quite interesting, you know, so many cultures... But I don't like the masters and what they're doing, setting people up against each other, people killing each other. There's hatred all over. This I don't like. And they know it exactly. You know, it's not about love and love your neighbor and, and love everyone, you know, uh, that they mix up all the peoples. You know, it's exactly the opposite what they are aiming for. Hatred, war, civil war, murders, like this. these things going on. And, uh, yeah, in Italy, you know, I, I saw black people and, um, yeah, well, it's not easy uh, for a black person uh, being in Italy. Uh, in France, I see them walking around with a big mouth and, you know, and being the kings. Like in, in Italy, I, I, I saw, you know, immigrants walk around, you know, with their head um downwards you know because well they're they're scared in italy so and the judges they know this judge minini you know he perfectly know this and his freemason pals they know this so amanda knox had to be the collateral it has been decided in the freemason lodge so the judge minini he had to lie a whole fairy tale about you know satanic rituals around it you know for the italian newspapers and everything um, a real evil guy this minini a real you know the real force uh, um, in all countries over all nations and over all peoples the freemasons are and um and this is very much related to the uh, to the war in uh, in the ukraine because you have to know their agenda i know their agenda you know it too if you think about it and um it's about uh, destroying a national identity of a people because it's much easier to rule a product of a total mixture of all races and peoples then there would only be the pharaohs our masters and the rest and um, this is one to, what they are, what they are doing in the Amanda Mox, Knox case, and the the Second World War and the um, uh, the Ukraine war. So there you go, people. Know their agenda, 
and you know why they do things. Of course, there are many more items in their agenda, of which I already have been talking a lot. So here's the other case. I pronounce it in the German way, as supposed to, the murder of Meredith Kercher. And um, you see here, in two th it happened in 2008, the good uh, guy, he was, um, he got a 16 year sentence and he got released in 2021. So that makes uh, 13 years. So the killer, he gets the same prison sentence as a guy who actually was more into protecting the women. He was so disgusted by it that he, uh, he went berserk and uh, he went on a, um, on a killing spree. So here you see Perugia. There's the word per in it. Per, it means the house in the Pharaonic language. So the house of Ugia. Now, of course, the, uh, the pharaohs through Sicily, the other way. I mean, um, Rome was uh, ruled by the Pharaonic elite you know, until the, uh, the Vandals and the Germanic tribes, they, uh, they, they put a halt to that when they ransacked Rome in the year 455. Here's again, Pergola, Per, the house of an, an a aristocratic house, so to speak. Let's see if there are more. Uh, it looks very beautiful there. There's the killer. He's a convicted killer. I can say he was a rapist, a killer, a burglar, a drug dealer. From it says from Ivory Coast. It might also be interesting to see who his father is, or if he has any family members um, in uh, Ivory Coast who are Freemasons or politicians. You know, there might um, be the double reason. There is a double reason, which I'm going to tell you in a moment. Okay. Therefore, the whole Freemason machine was set in motion at high speed. Using Pharaoh's lying media to spread the most horrifying lies about Amanda Knox and her Italian boyfriend Raffaele Solecito, just 20 year old kids, that they were Satanists doing a murder ritual, calling her the Ice Maiden, with no media nor authorities talking about the real rapist murderer from Africa in order to protect Pharaoh's Freemason agenda. So this is the guy, Rudy Gude. He committed burglary. So these are the facts for which he was sentenced. He committed burglaries on September 27, 2007, October 13 and 27, 2007 and the burglary and murder of Meredith Kercher on November the 1st, 2007, which is a fact now, it has been proven. His sperm was found inside the, the, the girl's um, inners. The Italian people bought the newspaper lies and it became a genuine witch hunt or against two entirely innocent kids who just happened to be at the wrong place and the wrong time, thus become a mere collateral damage in Pharaoh's game towards total control over humanity and the various agendas to achieve the greater goal. I'll read it here for you. On top, you can't see it, it says the stench of corruption in Canada's courts. Canada, especially British Columbia, has a serious problem with Freemason judges who fix the outcome of cases to benefit fellow Freemasons 
at the expense of innocent persons. Hey, Amanda Knox, you better read this. So, secondly, judges and prosecutors all over the world are usually Freemasons, and particularly in Perugia, where there are no less than 24 Freemason lodges. And in spite of his claiming of the judge Giuliana Minini, whom you can see here on the left hand side, to be a serious Catholic, being against the Freemasons. Of course, the Italian prosecutor Giuliano Minini is lying about his Freemason membership, as they always do. Well, it's a secret order, right? Who are also very much integrated into the Catholic Church. They're everywhere on all key positions, these Freemasons. So I read it out for you. Warning Catholic Church under attack. On March 13, 2013, His, Holy, His Holiness Pope Francis was elected Pope of the Holy Catholic Church. This day marks 187 years since Pope Leo XIII issued the papal bull Quo Graviora, in which condemned Freemasonry. Numerous popes called out the evils of Freemasonry within their papal encyclicals, some going as far as calling them the Synagogue of Satan. So they call Freemasonry the Synagogue of Satan. The Grand Master of the Grand Orient of Italy, so, you know, Perugia, Amanda Knox, Italy, The Grand Master of the Grand Orient of Italy expressed his joy regarding the election of Pope Francis. He, the Grand Master in Italy, Gustavo Raffi, joyfully stated that with the election of Pope Francis, nothing will ever be the same again. Here you can see him, Gustavo Raffi, the Grand Master from 1999 to 2014. So he was the Grand Master when Amanda Knox she was in uh, Perugia. So that was on Thursday, 20, uh, 21st of March 2013. <coughs> the Freemasons letter. To Pope Gregory the fourteenth, the sixteenth, Alda Vendita states that what we must ask for, what we should look for and wait for, as the Jaywalkers wait for the Messiah, the Moshiach, is a Pope according to our needs, and it's up to the secret societies to take the first step towards the Church, with the aim of conquering both of them. So this is what the Freemasons say. The Catholic Church must be conquered and also the Moshiach and the Messiah. They want to conquer all of this. Now I think this is related to the fact, well now I'm coming to somewhere else, you know, that there are two Messiahs. You know. The real one, he comes first, the anti Christ from Anteria, he's coming before, or the Moshiach ben Yosef, as the Jaywalkers call him, he's the real one who gets murdered and then replaced by the one, the Moshiach ben David, or the uh, Messiah Christ out of the house of David, of the pharaohs, of those King David, the killer and rapist, you know all these pharaohs, all these pharaohs. So the real Messiah who comes before, Anteria, the anti with an E Christ, is going to be replaced by the wrong one, if the whole story has any sense at all. If it does, it's rather going to be like this.
the other way around. So next to the Freemason agenda of Pharaoh of the big blender melting pot, there are two more options or maybe even a combination of both in connection to the Amanda Knox case. In Ivory Coast, where the killer is from, from Perugia, the Perugia killer, uh, they speak French. So the name of Ivory Coast is Côte d'Ivoire. Côte, it means coast, Ivoire is ivory. Uh, don't worry about the French, I'll translate it for you. It says in French, pour comprendre la campagne de dé dénigrement de l'église catholique de Côte d'Ivoire contre la franc-maçonnerie. So here you see the free, some Freemasons in Ivory Coast. They're everywhere. And here is the name of one of their lodges, Le Frère Maçon de la Loge Montnebo, numéro 67, Obédience, Prince Al. I'll translate it in a minute for you. So, so here's a Freemason Lodge on this side here. You see the square, here's the square, the compass, the G, here they've got their pharaonic uh, cloth, you know, like the pharaohs, a little tissue in front of their loins. This one looks like an Afrocentrist, you know. They are the ones who think the pharaohs, well, they were all black, in spite of the fact they all had red hair. <laughs> so here's Freemason Lodge called Mason Brothers of the Lodge Mount Nebo, number 67, Obedience Prince Hall in Ivory Coast, where the Perugia killer, Rudy Geda, was from. Now, imagine his father being a high up Freemason of Ivory Coast. It is 100% possible that the message amongst these international Freemason fraternity, a message from Ivory Coast to Judge Giuliano Minini in Perugia would suffice to protect the supposed Freemason son from Ivory Coast and roast someone else instead. Thus making it more comprehensible, the corrupt Judge Minini, whom you can see here, saying out of the blue and totally out of context with nobody asking him, that as a Catholic who hates Freemasons, as if he had to smother all possible assumptions beforehand of him being a Freemason related to his future actions, knowing that one day questions were going to be asked, like just Right now, Mr. Minini, yeah, Freemason corruption, square and compass in the police, happens all the time, people. Here on the same channel, Gure, I have proven you in these two videos about the Mafia, entitled Mafia Mi Anima Fidelem Ius Arian Sent Omerta born out of the holy land of the pyramids and slayer saints pray and slay that the mafia is a brother organization with freemasonry so most italian magistrates are on the payroll of the mafia in italy the most corrupt country in Europe. I'll read it out for you. Mafia join Italy's Freemasons 
to do deals with judiciary. Ain't that so, Mr. Menini? And because all immigrants who cho choose a criminal career in Italy have to work for the Mafia to get the merchandise due to the considerable Mafia logistic network and for not to get killed by the Mafia. A second Mafia sub-network of Nubians have been created. And here you see the Nubian killer, Rudy Geda. In Italy, I used to have pizza parties with the Italian colonel, Colonello Pietro Ciocca of the Artiglieria di Montagna, whom you can see here in this video on my channel Hatzefrat. Here's the title. Italian Colonel Talks Afghanistan and Wild Pizza Party with His Carabinieri Pals. Here he is in the middle. So the Colonel spent five years in Afghanistan being responsible for the Farah province in Afghanistan. So the Italian Colonel and his Carabinieri Pals told me that the entire Italy belongs to the Mafia. In a way that every region in Italy and every part of town is under control of a certain Mafia clan as their working space divided in parcels of land, if you like, making it absolutely impossible for any criminal immigrants like Rudy Geda to work independently from the Mafia, unless having a death wish. It says, it, this is what he said on, uh, on Skype, apparently, Amanda had nothing to do with it. So how does he know that Amanda had nothing to do with it? Eh? Because he did it, he was there, and probably some mobsters as well. So it was on Skype on November 18th, 2007, uh, on the website Injustice in Perugia, in defense of Raffaele Solicito and Amanda Knox. Uh, you know, the whole case stinks, you know. Italy is entirely corrupted. Yeah, the whole internet is full of it, but I can't show it to you because I don't want their cookies so in this censored and highly controlled internet. So here's the Guardian saying, migrants are more profitable than drugs, how the mafia, migrants, uh, how the mafia infiltrated Italy's asylum system, a Nigeria cultural mediator offers condoms and you know, it's white trade uh, or, or black trade in this case. Prostitution, drugs, um, here too. The real migrant crime wave, mafia exploitation of migrants. So, I mean, Rudy Geda was a criminal. It's a fact. And it's another fact that no criminal can work independently. Uh, no immigrant criminal. So he was working for the mafia. And that's why he can't talk. Corruption and migration in Italy, no, etc. Do you have any idea how much money you can earn from immigrants, dubbed Mafia Capitale, the Mafia Capital? Uh, yeah, how the Mafia makes millions out of the plight of migrants. The Sicilian Mafia making millions from taking advantage of migrants and refugees organizing their journeys from North Africa. Oh, they even they even go and get them in Africa. Prostitution, drugs, everything. And, uh, well, Meredith Kircher happened to be in the way. And the other one, the, the, the Knox girl. Uh, old meets new. Oh, only this one I could find. 
Only new, old meets new as the Italian mafia capitalizes on the European migrant crisis, beginning with the coordination of Mediterranean voyages. So this one didn't have any cookies. Bravo. Yeah, bravo. So I'll show it to you. Yeah, I'll read it for you. Abstract. Old meets new as the Italian mafia capitalizes on the European migration crisis, beginning with the coordination of Mediterranean voyages. You know, getting them from Africa, and ending with the indefinite exploitation of refugees at mafia-run migrant camps. The mafia has found an opportunity to profit from the crisis at every step of the way, with no end to the constant influx of refugees in sight, and verging on a humanitarian crisis with the, within the camps, walls, Italy faces a serious problem that requires a multifaceted solution. The Dublin regulations which mandate registration and application for asylum in the first European Union country of entry are in no small part tied to the situation in Italy. Not only does this system disproportionately burden border states and slow the asylum application process, it also traps refugees in a procedural limbo and allows corrupt individuals, you know, Judge Minini, and organizations to profit from their quandary in dire need of change in light of the refugee crisis reforming Dublin has the capacity to loosen the mafia's financial stronghold on the plight of migrants while also safeguarding the fundamental human rights of refugees and giving them a better chance at the life they seek within Europe's borders. So next to the so these this is one of the two other aspects like one, the uh, the killer was working for the mafia, and um, so next to and, and this is all related to the um, to the corrupt Freemason system because the mafia and the Freemasons they, they are one thing which I have proven you. So and behind this, they have their agenda of the um, of the gender bender. Uh, blender mixing thing, you know, mixing it all together. Uh, even behind the uh, the um, the mafia uh, part, and then we have, of course, the um, the Freemason lodges in uh, Ivory Coast. So there are three important aspects of this horrible crime and the um, and the scandal behind it. So that is the, uh, I repeat, the agenda of the Freemasons to mix it all up. The mafia behind the refugees and, uh, and the crimes. The, um, and the Freemason lodges in Ivory Coast. And of course, Judge Menini, 100% Freemason, 200% Freemason. So there are three things. And this is how it's connected with the Ukraine crisis because this is what they're doing. You know, there's always already a million Ukrainians out of the country. So that's what they do, you know, Ukrainians out, immigrants in. Ukrainians out, Muslims in. You know, just, uh, just in Europe after the Second World War. You know, why do they have the Kadyrovsky, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the black, Mos the, the, the black hooded Muslim fighters for Putin, in spite of the fact, you know, that's a real paradox that Putin murdered, you know, 300,000 civilians in Chechnya. And uh, the only way to understand it all is to, uh, to know the history and look behind the screens. So Rudy Gede, the immigrant cat burglar, and drugs dealer was 100% working for the Italian mob. No other options possible. Out of the question. It says, the saga of Rudy Gede, the solo cat burglar of Perugia. The complicit media, both Italian and most of it all English, they talked all the time about the ice-cold killer eyes of Foxy Noxy but they never spoke a word about the eyes of Judge Minini here. 
and the Nubian killer was doing high value burglaries for the Mafia and the elite Freemasons, of whom you can see one of them here. And they most likely tried to, to get Meredith Kircher into a Mafia brothel through the traditional gang rape to initiate a young girl into prostitution by numbing down all her natural senses and it's also very possible that they just dumped the body of Meredith, Meredith Kircher back into her room when they were finished with her in the Freemason Lodge. Ain't that so, Mr. Menini? Well, um, well may, may, maybe, but I can't tell you, because in Italy we have the Omerta. And the police in Italy is as corrupt as Judge Giuliano Menini, whom you can see here. And they know very well which Mafia clans are responsible for the land parcel of Perugia. But they all keep the Omerta. The Omerta by one of the nine initiators, founders of the Knights Templars, Godefroy de Saint-Omer. Omerta. And the Freemasons come out of the Knights Templars. And so does the Mafia. Omerta, eh, Mr. Menini, eh, va bene. Lasciate o in speranza voi che entrata. You all remember when I got in this very dangerous situation when entering an ancient Templar commandery where they had a, um, a satanic ritual place and it said in Italian at the gate, Lasciata o in speranza voi che entrata. It's all related to the Omerta. I mean, why does it say in Italian, in France? Eh? And this Templar commandery is right around the corner from Brad Pitt's castle in France. You can find the video here on the same channel. Here's the title. Go and watch it. It's quite exciting. So, the best option would be to get Rudy Gede into the US to make him talk and roll down some mafia tentacles. There are existing US laws uh, when a crime has happened to a US person abroad, the perpetrators can hold can be hold can be held accountable uh, for a in front of a US court. So let's have a rendition done. Both of them the Nubian burglar cat and his Italian Freemason judge. So, for the Mafia, there, there is a financial interest to keep drug dealers and burglars like the killer Rudy Gede on the streets and provide a certain judicial protection. So he keeps the Omerta in prison. Therefore, Rudy Gede got such a light sentence for his abominable crime. And therefore, the media didn't talk about him. I mean, look at these guys with their sunglasses here. If you don't see any resemblance to the Mafia, I, I don't know, guys. Look at this one here. Look at this one here. And here. I mean, he's surrounded by the Mafia and he knows... He better keep his mouth shut, otherwise he's dead, inside or outside the prison. I guess you didn't see the falcon on the policeman's head, did you now? It's a falcon with red for the old world's order, where they come from, the Bertasser, the red house of Pharaoh. And it's only a falcon that stays in the air like this. This is not an eagle, as they say. An eagle stays like horizontal. You know? And this is, the falcon stands for Horus. 
it's all Freemasonry with the crown here, our masters. So it's like the bird, the pharaohs below in history, and he's holding up the crown here in his wings, the wings of Pharaoh, the wings of Freemasonry. He's holding up the crown. That means the nobility, they come out of Pharaoh, which I'm explaining in my videos. And here you see a little brown part of the Nubian, the same picture as before. I think it's great that Amanda Knox and Raffaele Solecito keep on talking about this conspiracy and the rape of justice. And I'd like to support them with this video to show them the greater forces behind the screens because it happened to me too and probably even worse. And when the media, together with the authorities, start teaming up against you, you know there is a far bigger issue behind, for which they are ready to, sac to sacrifice you for. When this happens, you are a dead man or woman, or at least your social life is over. Just as they did to me with the media and Freemason authorities teaming up against me, which I show in this video here. Here you can see me on my channel Hatsafats, and here's the title. And here in this video here, in which you can see the newspaper articles in which they criminalize me for political reasons to set up new laws based on my uh, person and that's why probably because I show these news newspaper articles it says here the following content has been identified by the YouTube community as in inappropriate or offensive to some audience okay yeah 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 viewer discretion discretion advised I understand and wish to proceed so the title is The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 4, Breaking Individuals and Nations. So you can click on it, yeah, like here. And there you can see it. And so here, this is interesting. Here you can see the, um, the publisher of this, um, of this media, many, many newspapers. It's called Tamedia, and it belonged to the... Um, very influential Swiss aristocracy who are married into the White House because um, W. Booth, George W., he's married to Laura, who's out of the family von Grafenried. And they have a castle in Bern, Switzerland. So the video is here on the same channel showing the newspaper articles, or some of them, uh, in which they, well, they completely dragged me into the dirt, just like they did with Amanda Knox. And I spent five and a half years in prisons where they tortured me for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Switzerland was their very first New World Order baby. When the first horizontal rule was founded in 1291, where they blended four peoples together into one New World Order product. Germans, French, Italians, and Retro-Romanic to, all together in the big blender. So really, everything always comes in Switzerland first, and then in the rest of the world. Then, in 1776, their second New World Order baby was mixed in the blender to create the American product and not the American people. Because there never has been an American people, except for these ones maybe and no matter 
how many US flags you wave, and no matter how many stars and banners you put on your houses and on your pickup trucks, there will never be such a thing as an American people. Therefore, the name A-me-ri-ka is completely pharaonic. A meaning big or pregnant. Me for pyramid. Ri for sun. And ka for the soul. A me ri ka. America. The reincarnation of the big pyramid will take place under the sun where our souls will live, which I explain in my very first video from 12 years ago. The Pharaoh Show, which you can see here on my channel, Gatsefrat. Then in 1789, the third horizontal New World Order was born, where the whole idea came from in the first place by the French Knights Templars. Therefore, France being the only country in Central Europe being entitled by their internal laws to kick the US Army out. Only in France there are no American bases, because France is like the New World Order father, where the New World Order idea was born by the Knights Templars. Switzerland, the mother for the first New World Order birth, in 1291, and America, their ugly little New World Order monster baby. Therefore, Switzerland, as the mother, is also called the Whore of Babylon, with whom all nations traded through her Swiss banks. And Babylon is in fact the reference to the big blender American milkshake mixing nations and races into the American products and not really American people. So my dear American friends, this is why your masters do with you whatever they want because they made you, they shipped you over, and they created you out of several peoples and put you in the big blender. You are their product and therefore their property, as they made a new race and some new genders too, on which they have a secret copyright patented amongst their clan. Now I read this for you. One nation under corporate dictatorship with liberty and justice for sale. Therefore, dear American friends, your masters can terminate their product if they please so by sending their uniformed blue gang who shoot you asunder without any penalty nor judicial consequences, because they are your creator who made you in the big blender USA. And here it says, strength through unity. There can't be unity in a product, in a mixed blender product. There can only be unity in a people. In countries where they still have real peoples and nations, the police is not allowed to just shoot down and kill their citizens. Only in big blender product states like the US or Switzerland, the police is allowed to eliminate certain of their products and human properties as an unwritten law. I read it for you. 
people should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Also, the jaywalkers are a product of Pharaoh, who were 430 years slaves of the masters. Pharaoh gave him a book about the Pharaonic kings, like King David and the rest, gave him a new identity, and then sent them into the world with this guy here in the basket. Here, I read it for you. The Pharaoh as God. Ancient art tells us that the Egyptians believed the Pharaoh was a god on earth. This gave him absolute power over all affairs in Egypt. The Old Kingdom reached its peak during the Fourth Dynasty and saw trade throughout much of the Mediterranean, as well as mining. Pharaoh is considered to be God on earth, just like the aristocratic descendants of Pharaoh all over the world were considered gods, like the French Sun King, Louis Fourteenth, like the Sun God, Emperor Hirohito of Japan. And here you see the rising sun here. This is Amun-Ra. He was considered to be a descendant of the Sun God. They're all pharaohs. Yeah, it says here, Emperor Hirohito. He was looked to as God by his people. And he's having the same octagonal medals as the rest of the bunch. Japanese Emperor Hirohito. The Americans wouldn't accept this surrender of his unless Japan admitted that their emperor was not a descendant of the sun god Amun-Ra and stepped down as a leader. So this means the first, the big New World Order product, America, a horizontal rule, the, the, the very biggest in the world, wanted Japan to change from the old world order with their sun god, vertical rule, to the horizontal republican rule. That's why Japan had to admit that their emperor was not a descendant of the sun god. As I've explained to you in my video, the nobility world wars, that the world wars, in fact, was a product of the transmission or the change from the old world order vertical rule to the new world order horizontal rule. That's why so many people had to die because of this. And you can see it here. Now, here once more, Hirohito, the living sun god. And he looks like two drops of water, like Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, because they're all one and the same bloodline. Even Himmler, he had ears like this and the eyes and everything, the little glasses. And this looks like to be the... Um, the cross of St. George here with St. Michael in the mill. It's all the same. It's all pharaonic sun gods and descendants of sun gods over the whole world. Or the sun god Emperor Bokassa from Central African Republic and many, many other sun gods throughout history in the world. He has the sun here on his lap and this is the Horus the falcon bird. An eagle doesn't stand up like this in the air, it's only the falcon doing this. Just like the so-called American eagle which is not an eagle which is a falcon and it's all a reference 
to Horus, the falcon sun god of these blokes here. And you can see this video. Here's the title on the same channel where I last year I visited the castle of Bukasa's French friend, the Pharaoh Giscard d'Estaing. Anyway, the jaywalkers all seeing God from their holy books didn't even know the existence of the European peoples. As all these Middle Eastern holy books, including, of course, the Bible, stop at the Mediterranean and go no further. Here in this image, you can see how today's Jaywalker territory has always been part of Pharaoh's empire. Therefore, King Solomon in the Bible and in the Jay Walker book, he married the daughter of Pharaoh, which is written in the Bible, black on white. In fact, the holy books are for Orientals only, and talking about Orientals only, and mostly about kings of Pharaonic descent. And you can see it, the oldest was ancient Egypt and here's the Jaywalker territory with, of course, Jerusalem and everything, where King Solomon married the daughter of Pharaoh. And all Pharaonic stories. And here, you know, where the, the, the white race Europeans and here the Chinese, this all-seeing God couldn't see this, you know, because this is God. Pharaoh is God. There is no other God in these holy books than Pharaoh. I mean, it's written blacks on white in these holy books that Pharaoh is God. And you can see it in the picture here. And the whole story is telling this. And uh, yeah, well, Pharaoh God also had a son called the Son of God out of the aristocratic Pharaonic house of King David, and whom they finally put a crown of thorns on his head. Look, here you can see the French sun god with a crown of thorns around his head, symbolizing the sun and the sun rays of Amun Ra. The jaywalkers come in all colors and all languages, just as the American product, which is the contrary of the definition of a people, and definitely is the definition of a product. As a genuine people has one single language and one single color. So I read it here for you, the upper class of society in ancient Egypt. The upper class ran the government and religion, just as today, because they're still the same ones. Pharaoh was all powerful, seen as a living God on earth. Priests and priestesses were important and had great influence because life revolved around religion. They knew how to please the gods, Pharaoh, 
and help the dead into the afterlife. So, my dear Jaywalker friends, Pharaoh's priests are those whom you call the Erev Rav today, and whom you still call Rav or Rabbe today, who cannot even tell you your real history as I do here, because they don't know. The Erev Rav, Rav, Rabbe, or Rabbis in English, are the product of Pharaoh's religious indoctrination for the chosen ones amongst his slaves. My dear Jaywalker friends, I've come to set you free. Therefore, the Jaywalkers are very divided between the ultra religious ones and the more secular ones. Divided between the Jaywalkers out of Germany, the ones from Spain, and down below at the leather, the ones from the Middle East, which you can see here in this very good video by Al Jazeera. Uh, and here's the title. And here you can see uh, the, the, the names like. So here's the text um, in the description of the Al Jazeera film, which was even made, I think, by a, G a jaywalker itself. I would like to read it out for you, but I cannot uh, pronounce words like this here or words like this because of the censorship. It would immediately uh, censor and delete my video. So that's why I say jaywalker, which is an honorable expression as I have nothing at all against the jaywalkers, against this people, no problem at all. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to help them. Uh, so this is the reason why I have chosen this word um, to avoid having my video deleted because of the general censorship. And of course, as the jaywalkers are Pharaoh's product, and it's a, it's, it's a product of Pharaoh, of her masters. That's why you, can, you cannot say anything about it, you know, other, otherwise then uh, repeat everything what the media says and what Pharaoh says um in this global dictatorship of pharaoh in which we are living so again i have no problem with the jaywalkers neither is the word a negative word for them it's rather a um an honorable expression and um so do read this text here, it's very interesting. And this is not a united people, also far from it. It's being held together by Pharaoh's government in their country, their uh, jaywalker uh, country in between uh, brackets, so to speak, because it's, um, it belongs to Pharaoh and uh, and their Freemasons. It was a setup by the uh, by the nobility. If I, what I've already explained in some of my videos, the Jaywalkers are divided between the ones with a Jaywalker mother and those who haven't a Jaywalker mother. No. This is not a people, this is a product. Because within a people, there is a union. 
and this is the lie of Pharaoh's new world order. Because with all those different colours, there can't be a union, nor the potential to rise up against Pharaoh. And it's therefore Pharaoh wants to destroy all the genuine peoples of this planet, like the Ukrainians today, and throw them into the big blender in order to destroy the Union, making it easier for the masters to rule over their slaves. And for this purpose, Pharaoh uses their Freemason technique of Ordo Ab Kao, meaning order out of chaos by bringing the chaos of war. Ukrainians out, immigrants in, Ukrainians out. Immigrants in. Again, I have no problem with immigrants, nor do I have a problem with people who have another skin color. I just have a problem with our evil masters and their evil politicians who deliberately want to destroy the sovereign and genuine people of the Ukraine through mass murder on this unified Ukrainian people in order to install Pharaoh's agenda through which all peoples of this earth are the victims of. I hope you noticed the same double header birdie birdie of the Teutonic Putin here, and their Templar Teutonic political wing of their Freemasons, also having the same double header birdie birdie. Similarly to destroying the peoples, they want to destroy the union of the family, which the evil ones in the Alps did with my family. And this is exactly what the Son of God Pharaoh said, that he will destroy the union of the family, which he says in the Holy Book of the Orientals in its adapted form for the Europeans. Here it says in Luke 12:53. Jesus said he would bring divisions. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is very extremely evil stuff, and it's all by Pharaoh. And it is the same power like behind the Ukraine war and what we see going on now. They want to divide everything, divide and rule. And it's all from Pharaoh. It's all evil, extremely evil. And here's some more of this evil stuff through which the strategy through which the, these pharaohs rule over the whole world, you know, divide and rule. And if you want to destroy a people like what's happening in the Ukraine and what happened to the Europeans actually after World War II, you have to start destroying the family, you know. So here it says, Jesus said he would bring divisions. Well, that's what they do, people, divide and rule. So in uh, Matthew 10, 34, he says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. Oh, wow, nice, eh? Nice bloke. 
I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Well, that's what we see over 2,000 years of wars without end. You know, the Christians are the biggest butcherers in history, where in two world wars, millions of Christians butchered millions of other Christians. I mean, this is a fact. Uh, and I've, I've seen military graves, war graves, you know, until the horizon, you know, all Christian crosses on a, on a, on a, on a field. Eh? It's horrible. And here, M Matthew 10.35, For I came to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Matthew 10.36, And a man's enemies will be the members of his household. Now, what do we see today? This is exactly what we see. 50% of the marriages, they are divorced. Uh, the daughters, they hate their fathers, have no respect because, you know, he's not even there anymore. And um, this is one of the ways how they can get, how they can get drugs in, prostitution, complete uh, decadence and... Uh, sexual uh, de deviances and 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 so forth you know it's 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 a it's a creepy setup by these pharaohs and as the jaywalkers were the very first product of pharaoh pharaoh god called them his chosen people as he created them, being Pharaoh's obedient product, with a holy book to take with them on the road, for not forgetting the rules, in order to unify the product into a identity organ. Some European rulers of Pharaoh's European nobility didn't like it at all. Seeing this pharaonic product swarming all over Europe, being afraid that the new system would make them lose control over their European feudal slaves. So now I come to the last reason for World War II and its various genocides, which I wanted to keep for the end of my video series. And I hope you all see the double-headed Old World Order, New World Order, Birdie Birdie, as Mr. Putin, the Teutonic Knight, has in Moscow because this is Prussian and out of the Teutonic Knights in the same area came the, the, uh, the Prussians. Prussian is Teutonic and the same double-headed um, Ardo Abkau Freemason double-headed birdie birdie because the Freemasons, they cannot come out of the Knights Templars and the Teutonic Knights. It's all one and the same thing. So here it is Prussia. And because of that, you can see here the coat of arms of Saint Omer, the Omerta, remember? One of the nine founders of the Knights Templars. And this is why Mr. Putin is having this here, because he is a Teutonic Knight. Due to the jaywalkers' overall censorship and the various draconian punishments for those who dare to think differently, I had to choose different names and words for everything. In spite of the fact I don't even have any problems with the jaywalkers. On the contrary, the jaywalkers have weaponized the borders between free speech and censorship for humanity not knowing anymore where free speech ends and censorship begins due to the weaponization of normal human rights. Without 
for the jaywalkers and their Erev Rav, even knowing who in fact are the real responsibles for World War II's atrocities, using weaponized laws to randomly hit around in the dark, hoping to at least hit someone in this Nazi-like practice, needing a random scapegoat. I'll read it for you. Scapegoat. A good scapegoat is nearly as welcome as a solution to the problem. Look, I'm making videos against these ones here with their flags and all, you know. What happened? It got deleted because of all these laws, you know, this weaponized censorship free speech laws. All these videos, they got deleted. I'm making videos in favor, in favor of the jaywalkers. I'm not allowed to pronounce this word here. Just read it yourself here. Don't say it out too loud you know you might get arrested it got deleted video deleted by these ones here and i'm against these ones you understand this i'm against it so it all gets deleted you know weaponized laws so i had to go to here and put it on here my whole channel got deleted huge parts of the European nobility and especially in Germany related to the order of the Teutonic Knights in Prussia didn't want to put their European feudal slaves into that global blender because they were their property and their feudal slaves in a tight and secure system. Why take the risk and change it? Of course, Britain, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands, with the many colonies, wanted the big blender for all their slaves, including the ones overseas, in an empire on which the sun never sets. But Germany didn't have any real colonies, or hardly any. So what for the big blender? It says, German colonialism, a short story. And a short story it was. Here you can see a German soldier here to the left, and a Swiss soldier to the right, you can see the difference in helmets, standing at the border, the Swiss-German border during World War II and having a pleasant chat. And in the end, the German nobility, together with the Swiss Nazi Templars, said to each other, we'll show you what we'll do with your big blender. And we'll start with Pharaoh's first product and chosen ones to get this idea out of this world once and for all. And they almost succeeded. Therefore, I don't really agree when the jaywalkers talk about the righteous amongst the nations when talking about the Second World War and the Nazis trying to eliminate Pharaoh's first product once and for all. They even say there have been only uh, 24,356 righteous Europeans. But this is outrageous and should be qualified as hate speech because the jaywalkers imply that all the other Europeans are not righteous. This is hate speech. First of all, because the whole idea 
of the genocide on the jaywalkers derives out of a part of the nobility and their octogon Swiss Nazi Templars and not out of the simple European peoples, not even the German people, who didn't even know what was going on in the Nazi camps, as you didn't want to risk your neck approaching the camps too near. And most camps were not even in Germany, but in Poland, far away from any influence of the average European and or German people. So the proofs are here in this video. It's called the Nobility World Wars, as you can see here, which won't even show because Google doesn't want, want you to see this. So you have to go into the video section of the same channel here, Gure, and scroll down. Otherwise, it won't even show. And the rest of the proofs, amongst other, are in this series, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. Here's part one, the New World Order Nazi Templars from Switzerland on the same channel. So it's the same thing. You go into the video section and you have to scroll down all the way down until you find it because our masters don't want you to see this video, you know, and it is in five part. It will take you 18 hours and we must be able to talk about this because, you know, I don't want this to happen again, you know, all these genocides and um, we haven't dug far enough into it, you know, who's really behind it. And this vid these videos show who's really behind it. And I tell you, it's not the European peoples, it's not, not even the Germans, it's Pharaoh. So with the expression righteous among the nations, the jaywalkers imply that the only good Europeans were the ones who risked their necks, their own necks, for saving some jaywalkers and that the rest of the Europeans are not righteous at all. This is a horrendous, very discriminating and nearly racist thing to say. And if you realize what is finally being literally said here, the message is really shocking and absolutely disgusting. This is hate speech and should be censored. I also lost my grandfather in 1942 because of these damn Nazis. While he was not particularly saving any jaywalkers at the moment of his death in his mission for the Navy intelligence. Meaning, my grandfather died as a supposedly unrighteous person among the nations, with which the jaywalker community, with this very shocking expression, smears the memory and ultimate sacrifice of my grandfather against the Nazis. Only because at the time and moment of his death, he was not risking his neck for the jaywalkers. Here you can read it yourself in Wikipedia or in the Righteous Among the Nations website. So, you know, you can say an, an people have been acting righteous. But you can't say that only 24,000 people of the Europeans were righteous and the rest were not. You can't say this. You know, it's horrific. Yeah, look, and, and whom, you know, they're, they're giving away like a, uh, a medal or something um, to the righteous, righteous, well, I can't even pronounce this. 
Well, they're, they're being they're getting honored. And uh, who who's getting honored? You know, it's look. The award, it's an award, has been given without regard to the social rank. No, 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 of course not. No, not to this. But they're giving it to the royalty as a princess, Alice of Battenberg. Oh, it looks like a bloke. Or the Queen Mother Helen of Romania and Queen Elizabeth of Belgium. Another pharaoh. Look, look at that pharaonic thing on her head. And here it says... The award has been given without regard to social rank. Uh, whom are they giving it to? To princesses and queens and kings and... It's another thing, you know, from pharaoh to pharaoh. I mean, th these are the ones who organized the genocide, you know? This pharaonic bunch. And again, let me tell you one more time, you know? You can say, you know, officially, that the actions of certain persons were righteous. But you can't say this, you know, that only these 24,000, they were righteous and the rest were not, you know. Even by law, this is forbidden, you know. It's hate speech. And, uh, and you, you smear the memory of my grandfather who was killed by the Nazis. You know, you really do. Let me tell you. My dear Jay Walker friends, of whom I hope that they will still be my Jay Walker friends after they've heard me revising this absolutely horrendous, aggressively condemning expression towards the European peoples, who were all victims themselves in this Nazi dictatorship in which all Europeans including the Germans, were living in constant fear for his or her own life and one's children. There's no need to divide the Europeans into righteous ones and not righteous ones, and even ins insinuating that only a few were righteous and the rest were not. You can't possibly do this. These damn Nazis, they even hanged their own German children, as you can see here, only because they were looking for food, because they were hungry. It says in German, Plündern wird mit dem Tode bestraft. It means pillaging will be punished with by death. But it was not pillaging, just looking for food, you know. The Nazis even killed their own German children, so... Dear Jay Walker friends, your horrendously shocking expression, righteous among the nations, therefore also implies that you, Jay Walkers, yourselves would risk your necks for any other person in peril. Now, do you really know? No. Definitely not. You absolutely don't. It says, after all I've done with the snake here, hiding in the bushes, and after all the work I did for you, explaining you jaywalker friends of mine, who really is behind World War II and its genocide, and changing many neo-Nazis worldwide and in Germany, that not the jaywalkers are the masters of the world, as these neo-Nazis and Muslims thought, but that Pharaoh is behind it all, helping many young misled neo-Nazis to exit, similar to what you can see here in the image it says exit exit the swastika in your head i risked my neck for you jaywalkers but you were not there to save my life 
when I asked for help to open up a bank account in your name for me or rent a housing facility in your name for me or when I asked for help at your embassy you turned your head away and if not in my rotten situation sleeping outside for six long years in the forest in the snow in winter plus those sanitary bug war restrictions making things hell for a homeless if not i had the help three times during some lockdown winters and if not having had the help of those unrighteous Europeans I would have perished in one way or another from exhaustion from the cold from authority measures during the lockdowns or an accumul accumulative combination of it all so you can see a little bit of it here on the same channel Homie Ross sleeps three win long winters. Well, it has been, it lasted for another three more winters and it's not over yet. Out in snow because of Swiss Nazi terror. Yes, okay. Some jaywalkers were helpful. Like one jaywalker man from the Middle East sent me a new tent. And one jaywalker, a woman, had me bring a lot of money by this dude here. And uh, which you can see in this film here, same channel, here's the title. But what can I do with all that money when all the laws in Europe are so restricted that I couldn't fill in? the obligations for renting just a room without showing a passport which i don't have needing to pay two months in advance show them two months salary which i don't have and needing to officially inscribe at the authorities which i can't do because of the Swiss murder th threats by the Swiss Nazi authorities and by the Swiss Nazi police and their octagon. I just couldn't get out of this rotten situation, no matter how hard I tried, and I stayed in the snow, in the forest, for some more years same channel here's the title yeah i read it for you here Re we remember and pay tribute to the righteous among the nations those extraordinary people who risk their lives by saving jaywalkers during the genocide well, i guess this here is a one-way lane and absolutely unilateral in its idea and foundations which i had to find out the hard way even without any risks at all for saving one's life there were no jaywalkers at all to pull me out of the snow and out of the forest so i had a, I had a lot of time to think this over you can believe me. It's a one way lane without any lane leaving the dark and cold forest. I don't believe jaywalkers are bad or evil people. No, of course not. And yes, they can be helpful. Absolutely. But please. Don't judge the Europeans upon some very discriminatory expressions and very close 
to the very standards of Nazism itself. Concerning actions, you yourself would not even be capable of doing in return. I mean, this single phrase says it all, what I'm trying to tell you in this video. I quote, be a good person, but don't waste time to prove it. I repeat, be a good person, but don't waste time to prove it. For you, my jaywalker friends, it would have been so easy to rent something in your name or open a bank account in your name. But you didn't, because you thought that could have been risky, let alone risking your neck, what you demand from others, and yet not even willing to take the smallest risk, which is in fact no risk at all. And in fact, this great jaywalker here, by the name of Simon Wiesenthal, a person whom I, I respect a lot, says exactly the very same thing as I do. I quote, I know I'm not only the bad conscience of the Nazis, I'm also the bad conscience of the jaywalkers, because what I have taken up as my duty was everybody's duty. And he says, in fact, that the jaywalkers themselves did not even act themselves as those so-called righteous among the nations did. Meaning this great jaywalker agrees with me, what I'm trying to say here. And I show it one more time in order to pay respect to the Honourable Mr. Wiesenthal, I quote, be a good person, but don't waste your time trying to prove it. And also this famous jaywalker here, by the name of Albert Einstein, says the same as I do. And I quote, yeah, the world is a dangerous place to live not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. So he's having an excellent knowledge about himself and about his roots, because he himself did nothing against evil. On the contrary, even, as he helped developing the atom bomb. But hey, well said, Mr. Einstein. I'm sorry, I can't say it out loud due to the perfect dictatorship and its censorship. So watch the message in the picture here to understand. Allegedly, 200,000 women in Israel have no more menstrual cycles since this happened. As I've explained to you two years ago in this video here on my other channel, when it all started, it's on Pharaoh's agenda to make us all infertile. And um, then they put this under it because these ones, they know it all. You must listen to these ones, hey? Listen to Pharaoh, and this is in Geneva, Switzerland. Listen to the Swissies, hey? They know it all. On my other channel, here's the title. And when I saw how obediently you jaywalkers in Israel had yourselves pushed in taking Pharaoh's poison due to Pharaoh's bug war, I thought by myself, okay, this is the most obedient people, or rather Pharaoh's product, 
in the entire world who let themselves once more led to the slaughterhouse without any resistance at all, just as during the horrific events of World War II. And I thought to myself, this really is God Pharaoh, his chosen people. A pharaonic product made to obey and serve Pharaoh. I'm not angry with you jaywalkers, but I'm utterly disappointed. And I hope you jaywalkers can see that in spite of you letting me hang, that I, Homie Ross, am still there to help and guide you. Because I'm aware that you are, in fact, Pharaoh's first victim and Pharaoh's obedient product. But do not, and I repeat, do not imply that those Europeans who didn't do what you're not even capable of yourselves are unrighteous people. Because the vast majority of Europeans are not responsible for the horrific actions of Pharaoh's nobility and their Swiss Nazi Templars during World War II. The European peoples and their children are not responsible for your traditional incapability to defend yourselves. Do I make myself clear? I love these secular Jaywalker Bielski brothers of the true film Defiance, who had laid down Pharaoh's crippling religion, enabling the warrior's defense, which made the Nazis tremble. My dear Jaywalker friends, I tell you that all rabbis also called Rav, are in fact the Erev Rav. Just as the Pope, with his Teutonic cross here, like Putin, the Teutonic Knight, and the Imams, it's all the same. It's all Erev Rav. Why do you think there's a crown here on top of it, eh? And if the rabbis, popes, imams, and the entire ecclesiastical leaders of this world and pharaonic realm really had this divine connection to this almighty entity in the sky, as they all claim, then these rabbis, popes, imams, and whatever would have been able to tell us directly through this alleged divine spirit, what really happened during World War II, who were the ones behind it all, and that the vast majority of the Europeans and even the Germans are victims of those damn Nazis as well, who do not need to be implied to as unrighteous Europeans, only because they did not risk their necks for Pharaoh's chosen product of perfect obedience to the masters. A well-known rabbi of Los Angeles and a fan of my videos gave me some contacts of some religious jaywalker institutions in France like the Chabad jaywalkers, who told me they'd think about it and they would contact me back when I asked them for help. And then I never heard anything anymore. They'd rather let me die in the forest, in my tent, in the snow. No righteous among the nations stuff in return. You might want to have a look at this video here. Here's the title. And there's a swastika on a Chabad house.
in Strasbourg. Here you can see the swastika on their house, on the Jay Walker house, which is a bit odd, I might say, on my channel, Gatsefrat. Oscar Schindler was what you jaywalkers call a righteous man among the nations because he risked his neck for you jaywalkers and f maybe for being unfaithful to his wife with what he did. It says, a righteous Oscar Schindler a righteous man among among the Gentiles, the unforgettable lifesaver of 1,200 persecuted jaywalkers. Here you can see Oskar Schindler here in the middle, between the ones he saved. And when all your celebrations of honoring Oskar Schindler as a righteous among the nations were over, Oskar Schindler died as a poor, lonely, and forgotten man, which you can read here. Similarly, as I felt all alone in my tent, in the forest, in the snow, during the various lockdowns, after all the work I did for you jaywalkers even producing videos with all the proofs that the genocide deniers are lying, like this video here on Brighton as YouTube deleted this video. Here it is, and here's the channel. So here you can read it, it's a historical fact, you can find it everywhere. Oskar Schindler died alone impoverished and practically forgotten on the 9th of October 1974 at an age of 66. From 1939 etc. So here about Oskar Schindler on Wikipedia here here he is and you can read it all by yourself. Oh, here, the righteous among the nations, there they are. And uh, wow, well, look at this here. By the end of the war, Schindler had spent his entire fortune on bribes and black market purchases of supplies for his workers. Oh, you had to pay off the Nazis, right? Virtually destitute, he moved bravely, briefly to Regensburg and la later to Munich, but didn't prosper in post-war Germany. Um, in fact, he was reduced to receiving assistance from jaywalker organizations. Food, you know, he needed food, eat. In 1948, he presented a claim for reimbursement of his wartime expenses to the American Jaywalker Joint Distribution Committee and received $15,000. Estimate, he estimated his uh, expenditures at over $1,056,000. So for over one million, he got back like 15,000. Know, that's supposedly a life was worth, or a thousand lives. So, and here, this is interesting. Uh, here, down here, he and his wife Emily were named Righteous Among the Nations, an award bestowed by the State of Israel on non-jaywalkers, who took an active role to rescue jaywalkers during the genocide. So, here, his wife Emily, she was also a Righteous Among the Nations, and she also helped saving so well, let's have a look what happened to Emily if they forgot her as well. Here, um, Emily, Emily Schindler, who helped her husband to save more than a thousand jaywalkers. Schindler's widow left to die in bitterness and poverty in Argentina. So this is a fact, you can read it everywhere. Uh, Wikipedia, it's everywhere. So, 
both of them they died alone forgotten and uh, oh. look this one here Abdul Hussein Sardari oh, that's the word Sar for king in interesting he was an Iranian diplomat in 1940 and they call him the Muslim Oskar Schindler, and he saved the lives of thousands of Iranian jaywalkers in wartime Paris. Uh, let's have a look how he died. You can, uh, well, you can read the whole story if you want. Oh, look at that. There we are. Mr. Sadari ne neither sought nor received much recognition for his efforts in his lifetime and died lonely in a bad sit in Croydon, South London in 1981. Wow, very honouring. The Jay Walker statement about the righteous among the nations is horrendous and discriminatory and should be forbidden for hate speech and appeal for discrimination of peoples under false assumptions. It's a typical Nazi expression like you are good and you are not good. Is it the fault of the Europeans that this obedient chosen product of Pharaoh were obedient to the Swiss Nazi Templars? No, it's not. And then, only a couple, a couple of years after the disaster of the camps, Pharaoh and his Erevrav wizard say, oh, it was all part of the plan which has been written down two or three thousand years ago. Isn't it beautiful? Hallelujah. Is that the fault of the Europeans? That the jaywalkers believe that everything has been written down already and there's nothing you can do about it to change that? And they swallow it down like the sweetest fairy pie of all times. As Pharaoh's product loves the system and obedience, chosen to obey and serve Pharaoh in the Oriental world of lethargic fatalism. Therefore, by law, it is not allowed to criticize the jaywalkers, punishable with many years in prison especially about this here, which I better not pronounce. You never know. Did the jaywalkers themselves set these free speech terror laws in place? No, Pharaoh did, because it concerns his favorite product, his chosen product, and his main objective and cosmopolitan agenda to destroy all homogeneous peoples and make one huge product out of it, as their agent Hitler already announced. One people, one leader and one empire. That's the agenda. So Mark Zuckerberg from the, who is a jaywalker, from the Facebook company, he says this. I'm a jaywalker and there's a set of people who deny that the genocide happened. I find that deeply offensive, but well, at the end of the day, I don't believe that our platform should take that down because I think there are things that different people get wrong. I don't think that they are intentionally getting it wrong. So it's what I'm telling you, this guy, is a typical uh, Erevrav pharaonic jaywalker and the pharaohs they are amongst all peoples and uh, this is definitely one of them otherwise he wouldn't be the uh, the owner of Facebook and, and all that and uh, you know 
and the, the, the pharaohs, they want to set people up against each other, just as these laws about this here and this have been set in place by Pharaoh. So Pharaoh can set peoples up against each other and hatred is growing again against the jaywalkers because of these laws, because people don't like it when their liberty and freedom of speech is getting raped. And Hitler betrayed everyone, both the Germans and the jaywalkers, because in the end, it's only about one thing, total control for Pharaoh, ruling over a dumb slave race. So this here is what Mark Zuckerberg says, genocide deniers, deserve a voice, here it says. Because Pharaoh understands that these laws are contraproductive and making people hate the chosen ones again. Personally, I like the cosmopolitan lifestyle, meeting many different cultures in one place and try to be friends with everyone. But I don't like the evil idea behind an, an idea covered in blood, deception, endless wars due to Pharaoh's endless lies. By the way, when the Bible talks about the divided kingdom, it actually refers to Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, the Perhet, White House of Upper Egypt, and the Pertasser, Red House of Lower Egypt. I have nothing against jaywalkers. They are who they are, and have a good sense of humor and all that. I have nothing against Americans, nor against Russians either, and among the best and most loyal visitors of my videos are a majority of some very good Americans. I have no problems with immigrants, nor with people from other races, and I even made videos to help them. Yeah, I read it out loud for you. I'm never smoking weed with immigrants again. I asked for papers and they all ran. I just want all peoples and all tribes to unite against this terrible enemy within, with their neutral base in the Alps, who always try to divide humanity and setting people up against each other. Eh, Swissy? My dear friends, the truth can be a hard and bitter pill to swallow, and especially in this film, but it has to be said, so we may advance as a whole. Sorry for being straightforward, but I just don't like pissing around the pot. If you really need to, you may call me the old piss pot. And while talking about the urinary tract, is the aim of a Vladi the liar to take Russia down the drain. In order to destroy the still homogeneous nature of the Slavic peoples, in order to make a Western melting pot product out of these still homogeneous tribes, who as a homogeneous people have one skin color, nation-wise speak one single language with one single homogeneous cultural tradition. 
Ukrainians out, immigrants in. And there are already 2 million Ukrainians out. Through the Ordo Apkau of Pharaoh Putin's war in the Ukraine, perfectly shown on the Ukrainian channel here of Yulia Valova, where hatred between the Slavic brother nations is building up together with Putin's crimes against humanity. This channel of Yulia Valova shows the most genuine and uncensored footage of the brutality of Russia's crimes on the Ukrainian people. So here it is, Yulia Valova. I suppose that's her here as well. And these are some of her videos uh, with war footage you, you see, you find nowhere else. And again, it's all related to this. This is the agenda in order to break the backbone of a homogeneous people. So this is homogeneous. You can see the Japs here. It's a society made up of people who share the same culture, beliefs, language, and racial background, like the Ukraine, Russia. And this is heterogeneous, a society made up of people with a variety of cultures, beliefs, languages, and racial backgrounds. So, like this here is New York City in the um, in the melting pot of the of the of the United States of America, and this here is Japan. Homogeneous, heterogeneous. Pharaoh's agenda to break the backbone of a people's identity. I wonder if Edward Snowden has thought of his Russ exit in order to avoid his 300 years US prison sentence when Russia comes crumbling down, which is inevitable because this is the agenda. This is Putin's aim. And here we get to a reason number two for the Ukraine war, next to reason number one of snapping the backbone of a homogeneous people, like the Russians, Ukrainians, and the Slavs in general. So here you can see the worldwide statistics, the percentage of adults who would not take a bug war pharaoh's poison. And here green, of course, light green is, um, you know, people who, who took it, like here, very obedient. This here, very obedient here. But these ones here, it's, it's all black, you know, here. Yeah. Uh, that's why they call it the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. um, they, they are not very eager to take it. Neither here, this is the Ukraine, and here is um, Bulgaria, Romania. You know. So the Ruskies and the Ukrainians don't want to take Pharaoh's poison against the bug war. So it needs a little Ordo Apkau order out of chaos in the form of a vicious war in which young Russian soldier boys and more looking like Boy Scouts are being sacrificed, saying, I didn't know I was going to Ukraine everything turned out to be a lie and Ukrainian civilians being bombed out of their houses. As you can see on the map, Russia and the Ukraine are the places on earth 
were the people's reluctancy to obey Pharaoh and take Pharaoh's poison is the biggest in the world compared to Israel being the exact opposite on Pharaoh's so-called sanitary specter. On one side, Pharaoh's most obedient product on the planet, and on the other side, the most disobedient, homogeneous peoples on the planet, the Slavs. You might want to think that it might also be the other way around. That what you see here on the map and the reluctancy to take Pharaoh's poison is the number one reason and the creation of a product out of a homogeneous people, number two. But then again, as I've been explaining you, that the resistance of a homogeneous people is far greater than that of a mixed product. So, in fact, reason number one and reason number two are one and the same thing in its essence, of which we can see the proof here in this map that a homogeneous people has more stamina, more character, and more backbone to resist the enemy within and his various poisons and bio attacks. Of course, the Ukrainians are even far more homogeneous than the Russians, as the Russians have millions of so-called ethnic Russians, being Muslims, Asians, and whatever, inside the Russian Federation. But Russia is, of course, still not as heterogeneous as the Western melting pot product. And this is something that Pharaoh doesn't like, these homogeneous peoples, and needs to be destroyed by the masters for the obvious reasons. And what you can see here on the map, so where it's brown, they're all Ukrainians. So it's very homogeneous, except for a few Russians here, a few Bulgarians here, a few Hungarians here, very little, a few Moldovans here, and a few Romanians here, or the other way around, it's both light green, a few Russians here, it's very, very little. I mean, Russia wants to take all of this only because of this little dot here and this little dot here. Yeah. So it's very homogeneous. It's all, it's one people. And because of what you see here on this map is the reason that the Ukrainians have such a fighting spirit, which is inspiring the whole world and that they have such a union because they are homogeneous. And this is what Pharaoh wants to destroy. Here you can see a religious map of Russia. Here it says, and Christianity, the Orthodox, everywhere where it's yellow. It's about 90% of the country is Orthodox Christian. The black here, the black triangle, is Protestants, a little bit here. Probably on the side of the Ukraine, here. And then there's a whole lot of other things here, Buddhism, Islam, and, uh, Judaism, uh, all these little dots here. Then there is green, they have uh, tribal cults, like old Slavic cults, apparently, and of course the uh, the Mongols and the uh, shamans and all this. So of this 90% Christians are like 41% who are really active in their religion. They are really active Christians. And um, of which, and uh, plus 4% who are from another religious affiliation, 
and um, and, and 1.4 percent of another form of orthodoxy. And so it's about f almost 50 percent who are really active um, Christians in Russia, where whereas all these yellow, they are Christians on paper. So, 90% of the Russians are Christians. So we can see here, again, a bloody war unfolding in the Ukraine, in the Ukraine, by those murderous Christians. Just as they did in two world wars. I have nothing against Christians. And, but I'm just accumulating the historical facts that in two world wars, millions of Christians butchered millions of other Christians. And these are Christian crosses on this World War II military cemetery, meaning there's a Christian buried underneath and butchered by another Christian, as it is happening once again in the Ukraine, where Christians are butchering other Christians, and no Christians standing up against this Christian butcher ritual. Look, here it says, Putin, defender of Christian faith and morality with the cross of saint george and the concept of three for our masters three swords so saint george is the slayer saint of the knights templars and look the christians believe that putin is their savior and now all those christians follow him into another bloody war. I quote here, Russia became the leader of the global Christian right. Christians love to see their cross on their warlord's head and it makes them ecstatic. But I hope they see the octagon too here at the back of the Russian Pope. Russia is huge with so much empty land, so it's weird waging another war grabbing land from the neighboring state the Ukraine and saying the land belongs to Russia. It's a bit greedy, isn't it? Why do they need this teeny tiny piece of land in the Ukraine while Russia has so much unused land in which you could fit in the Donbass and the Crimea more than a thousand times and I'm not exaggerating more than a thousand times easily so why do they need this so there must be another reason for waging this war in the Ukraine, other than what they say. Well, I give you the real reasons in this video here. So these statistics about this here, I can't pronounce it for you because of the total dictatorship and the total censorship we're in. They are from last year, December 2021, so they're quite new. Is the Portugal 88%, uh, Belgium 75%, France 70, Germany 68, UK 68, and here it's going down, you know, getting in the Balkans and the this, this Slavic countries. Croatia 48%, Romania 39%, Russia 39%, Ukraine 27%, Bulgaria 26%. So Pharaoh doesn't like this at all. And if you look at the bug war poison being administered here in this, these statistics, in the neighboring countries of Russia, like Bulgaria and Romania, 
and how low the percentage of actual clients is, it is clear that Pharaoh's elite will drag all neighboring countries, including Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Moldavia, and Belarus into Putler's war and knock him around with some Ordoap Keo to enable Pharaoh's infertilizing poison and massive immigration from Africa and Arabia as in the Western world. So here it says, Vladolf Putler with his Ordo Apkau. And again, I have no problems with immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. I just have a problem with Pharaoh's agenda, killing millions and killing children by this monster, this Vladov Putler. This is what I have a problem with, the agenda of Pharaoh. Just as I've shown you the Swiss Huber lookalikes bloodline, of US President Herbert Hoover on the left hand side and FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover on the right hand side and being very brachycephalic as I explain in these videos here here on my channel Homeland Security entitled The Nazi Templars and in this video here about the dolicocephalic index, this is European long heads, and the brachycephalic index, this is the round heads, only to be found in Switzerland. So this is like Putin, President Herbert Hoover, um, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, by the name of Swiss Hoover, in the video, The Huns from the Alps on Homeland Security. It's a 10 year old video. I just recently re uploaded. And here you can see a Putin clone in Switzerland who came and aggressed me in 2013. Go and watch this video. Here's the title Swiss Nazis ring at the door, hit, aggress, and threaten the immigrant Sean Ross on October the 10th, 2013, on channel Hatzefratz. And here I, I wrote some more about it. Um, well, you can read it yourself. Uh, there you go. Okay, so in Switzerland, there are a lot of Putin models, maybe even Putin clones walking around. As you can see in this video here from 2013, almost 10 years ago, this Swiss Putin clone and his Swiss Nazi pals came ringing at the door in order to beat and physically aggress Homie Ross. While the Swiss Nazi police was waiting around the corner in order to intervene and arrest Homie Ross in case he would hit back, which Homie Ross wisely enough did not. Keeping it for another day on my own terms, a eh, Swissy. Just wait, Swissy. I haven't forgotten this, Swissy. Yeah, I'll show you some more screenshots of the Swiss Putin who aggressed me physically and terrorized us as a whole family with his pals. Um, in my time in Switzerland, I, I, I've seen at least seven or six or seven Putin clones, you know, doubles or like, there's something terribly wrong with this country in the Alps, high up in the Alps, looking over the whole of Europe, and having such an influence on the world, there's something terribly, terribly wrong, people. Very, very wrong things going on there. And here's the other one, the other Teutonic Knight. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, look at it. He's destroying Russia. He's terrorizing the Russian people. So therefore, is this guy Russian? No, he's not. Maybe someone can make a comparison picture, putting the two of them together or a couple of them, like using these images here, uh, because I, I don't know how to do it. And it's like, in, I've also seen Obama doubles, many, really many. I've seen J. Edgar Hoover doubles, many. Um, Mengele doubles, even more. Um, remember the Swiss serial killer? It looks like uh, Joseph Mengele, the angel of death. There's something terribly wrong in this country. How is it possible in two world wars that were not even attacked? And, and, and this guy here, he's, he's having billions in Switzerland. His children are in school there, at school. Uh, his children were born in an elite clinic in the Tessin Canton. I, I've, I've been telling you for, for more than 30 years, you know, I've been telling the world about, about this. There's something terribly wrong going on there. I mean, look, look at the mouth and the eyes, the, uh, the front of his head, the whole skull form, the ears. It's, it's the same, you know? It's the same bloodline. It's all Templar stuff. I, I've been telling you. And out of the night, Templars came the Teutonic Knights. Who went there where Mr. Putin is born? Hey, eh? This is the same bloodline, people. Remember how I got aggressed here as well in the uh, in Switzerland by this priest of the Teutonic Knights Church. Same people. You know, I never forget these faces of these Swissies because they terrorized me and my family for 25 years and they never stopped, you know. Just just like this puts in here, it's exactly the same thing. How he's terrorizing Russia, Ukraine and the, and the whole world. I mean, it's it's Swiss terror, you know, it's exactly the same thing. And they've got the same bloody skulls and the same expression and they're doing the same stuff. And it's all, it's, it's all Nazism. You know, this one is a Nazi. The other ones who came aggressor, aggressing me, they're all Nazis. It's the same bloodline people. And, and then, and they're not European. They're from Egypt. Yeah, look at it, the same narrow eyes like Mr. Putin. And, you know, they feel so strong, you know, like being together against one person, you know, and having the whole system behind them. They're so organized, you know. I was feeling for 25 years in Switzerland like, you know, like, like in Nazi Germany in the 30s. You know, you can see it going on here, you yeah? know. You can see it here. I mean, look at his face, you know, this, this is the Putin bloodline. I Swissy, you're not fooling me, hey, you're not fooling me. I can see it straight in your eyes, you know, and I never forgot, I never forget the faces of all these Swissies who aggress me. Uh, I won't forget my friends, and I don't forget my enemies, hey Swissy. It's like engraved in my head, you know, like a, uh, like a DVD a record, you know, like a CD-ROM. It's engraved in my head, you know. I'll never forget what you've done. I'll never forget your face is Swizzy. Yeah, what are you looking at, Swizzy? Hey, you see me? And you called up the cops, eh? that I was filming you, but I hid the, um, I hid my camera with the, uh, the SD card and the memory card. Got you, Swissy. I got you. Now the whole world is gonna see you here and what you've done, Swissy. We can all see uh, the hatred in your eyes. You know, you see the, the, the Nazi organizing in your eyes. We can all see it, Swissy. Eh? Yeah. You're not going to forget it, Swissy. Eh? I'll make you eternal, Swissy. And this here, you know, Ukraine, 
It was organized in Davos at the WEF, the World Economic Forum, you know, where you can see this Swissy here smiling with Biden and smiling with Trump and with, uh, with Klaus Schwab, all of the Macron, all having a good time there together. And Ursula von der Leyen, uh, all together in Switzerland, organizing this. Eh? I mean, we can all see it on the pictures, right? Pictures don't lie. And then here, the Swiss Mengele model clone to the right, the Swiss serial killer, Thomas Nick who also toured over the US with the original, the Angel of Death of Auschwitz to the left, who actually was into cloning and things like that, wasn't he now? And Mengele quietly lived in Switzerland after the war and went skiing with his son Rolf, who went to some pharaonic Swiss elite boarding school for the uppermost elite, just like the Putin kids. There's something rotten in the state of Switzerland. And so this is the video here. On, here's the title on the channel Homeland Security. Go and watch it. Or here, where I went to the home and school of the North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un when he lived in Switzerland, which you can see in this older video here, where you can read how the Swiss Defense Ministry finances North Korea army training. It says, Swiss Defense Ministry finances North Korea army training. This is from 2014. And uh, this is the title of the video, original footage of dictator Kim Jong-un Swiss school and North Korea army training in Switzerland on my channel, Gatsafrats. May 31, 2014. Here, this is South Korea and here's North Korea and 90% of Asia is lactose intolerant. Yeah, it has a, uh, the Freemason symbol, so to speak, 90% milk intolerance in, a in Asia. So while the Koreans, as most Asians, are lacto intolerant, and can't digest dairy products because of some missing enzymes. Gimme boy chews away on his Swiss cheese like a real Swiss hillbilly. In this case, a hill Kimmy. Kim here is yet another of those Swiss sleeper agents on all key positions in the world, like the Teutonic Swiss Mr. Putin. This is what the Chinese call the banana man. Outside yellow, inside white. Here, yeah, I read it for you here in channel Marina, Marino Delfino, Marino Delfino. Here, yeah, UFO hovers above demonic Swiss police. And then this strange stuff happening when homie Ross got aggressed by this corrupt Swiss cop Hans Ruedi Kuni, after which Marino Delfino did some disturbing discoveries, which you can see in this film here. What's going on in Switzerland? Who or what are its inhabitants? And where do they really come from with their neutrality swindle and all? So here you can see the title of the video. UFO black eyes Swiss police assaulted on Doc Ross, a.k.a. 
Gure Hats of Hats uh, in 2013, Marino Delfino. So Marino Delfino, he's an expert on uh, on uh, aliens and reptilians and, uh, and, and this sort of stuff. I, I didn't even see it, but he saw it. And then I, I had to admit that uh, he saw it right. He saw something because he's got a trained eye for it, which I don't. Uh, but he's absolutely right. This is really strange, the things going on. There, there was a UFO, something unidentified, hovering over. And the cop really had these uh, demonic Swiss eyes. And, well, he was very aggressive and uh, threatening me and my children, aggressing me, hitting me. And uh, I had to go to prison for this because I, I filmed him. You know. That's how Swaziland works. And here, another analytical video on the brachycephalic skulls, predominantly both in Swaziland and in Prussia, the land of the Teutonic Knights, where Vladi the Teutonic Liar is from. Yes, Putin has a Teutonic Prussian brachycephalic skull form just as the Swissies have, like his Swiss clone who aggressed me. And you can find this um, analytical video here uh, with academic proofs on channel Homeland Security entitled The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 5, Per Set, House of the Lord of Chaos. But as YouTube doesn't want, want you to see these kind of videos, you must go into the video section and scroll all the way down until you find it. Uh, I'm blacklisted, I'm shadow banned, I'm pink listed. And you won't find these videos, or quite rarely, if you punch in the title. It doesn't work. Anyway, the creatures of the Alps have developed an interesting system. By occupying all key positions of a nation through infiltration instead of invasion, as Mr. Kennedy said. And then rob their host blind transferring its entire national reserve onto a Swiss bank in their alpine safe haven. And these creatures have been doing this for ages, parasiting on the entire humanity. I quote, For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. President John F. Kennedy gave this speech at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. On April 27, 1961. And soon after, they murdered him. I swear he. Apparently, even some inhabitants of the Octogon in the Alps and their Templar related flag in the middle are waking up. And I quote here it's. Um, very bad English. It's like German, local German English, like, like this, you know, in German you say, you know, uh, well, they say it with a, with an S, children, one, one children, two children. 
and not on our name but in our name but it doesn't matter it's just you know to to show that this is local english but i quote putin's wife and children are there not in our name let's make them leave and freeze her assets so octagon's swiss sleeper agent putin has his own pack of mercenaries after this famous swiss mercenary model called the wagner group and wagner is a swiss german name maybe some ukrainian freedom fighters go visit this sinister country that has such a fatal influence on the world and on ukraine's future it would certainly put some genuine pressure on putin when some ukrainian freedom fighters would go into the alps and interview putin's charming little family in switzerland and make a video about it asking them why their husband and father is murdering ukrainian children i'm sure putler would be thrilled about the idea some ukrainians armed with cameras go visit the wagner base in the alps now why would a russian who accuses the ukrainian people of being nazis have a merc pack with a german name closely related to the nazis and the Teutonic Knights. And that's why in one of their sev several logos of Putin's Wagner group with a Swiss German name, there's the black Teutonic cross inside an octagon. Here you can see several Russian private armies called the Kontraktniki in Russian, meaning the contractors and these ones here are active in the ukraine so you can see this russian private military companies and in the ukraine this these one these and these here are active now and here this is another one of their wagner logos here wagner group there is a um, a Teutonic cross here in black, which is the uh, the Templars cross uh, in black, and it's inside a uh, octagon. Yeah. So there's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, it's all Putin is a Teutonic knight. He's all based in Switzerland. Yeah, the logos don't lie. It's all. Templars, Teutonic Knights, Octogon. Uh, Putin's Wagner group is killing defenseless civilians and their children under the banner of the Black Templar Cross of Putin's Teutonic Knights, which you can see here. Nothing has changed. The Nazis have won the Second World War. And it's still the same ones ruling since thousand years and using their Swiss Templar base from 1291. Here's the ultimate proof that not the Ukrainians are the alleged Nazis but in fact Putin and his vast Teutonic organization are Vladi the liar and another one of his evil lies, just turning the truth upside down, like the proverbial upside down Christian cross of evil, always inversing things. 
the inversed cross, as you can see here. Inversed speech, inversing truth into a lie. Look, here's the Pope's inversed cross, and they all have Templar's crosses as the Knights Templars and their Swiss Guard have already taken over the church after the Thirty Year War in 1648. So here's the Pope's inversed cross. This is a real picture. Here is his Teutonic Templar cross of the Pope in black. And here the dude has another Templar's cross here. Hitler's favorite composer, Richard Wagner, glorified the Teutonic Knights in his opera Tannhäuser. And it says Tannhäuser, Minnesinger and Knights Templar with his Teutonic Knights cross. This is why Hitler wrote in Mein Kampf, and I quote here, whoever wants to understand National Socialist Germany must know Wagner, Adolf Hitler. Strange sentence, isn't it? And when I infiltrated Octogon of the Teutonic Swiss Nazi Templars in the Alps, I heard Swiss industrials talk about their Putin and the money and his children he was having in Switzerland. And I know, therefore, that Putin understands National Socialist Germany the way Hitler did, which is related to the Nazi Templars and their Teutonic Knights. Therefore, the name Wagner for Putin's personal Teutonic Knights. Putler's personal SS Schutzstaffel, the grandfather and name giver of Putin's little Nazi army by the name of Wagner, and whom you can see here to the right and with his right hand hidden under his jacket was a Freemason and a profound hater of jaywalkers, just as Hitler and Mr. Putin himself. Therefore, Wagner in the picture himself can be seen on every picture with the hidden right hand of Freemasonry. And as the Freemasons who come out of the Knights Templars, they were therefore never persecuted by the Nazis, which I've already explained you in my other videos, and I have given you all the proofs. Here it says Richard Wagner with the hidden hand of Freemasonry. So the Freemason Richard Wagner and example of Mr. Hitler and being his big hero for Mr. Hitler, he said this here, and I quote, it should not be presumed that these people, the jaywalkers, who are so separated from us by their religion, have any right to make our laws. But why blame the jaywalkers? It is we who lack all feeling for our own identity, all sense of honor. So you see, here's talking about the identity and the people here. He knows it, what I've been telling you about the, um, the people and the product. It is therefore Richard Wagner talks about the identity of a homogeneous people against the idea of a heterogeneous product. And that's why the jaywalkers must un understand the contents of this video, whether they like it or not.
if they don't, the genocides will happen again, with Mr. Putla starting with President Zelensky, the jaywalker, whom he and his Wagner organization hate very much. It says Putin's hatred of jaywalkers in the Ukraine, his hatred of Zelensky. Here's the, uh, Hitler's man, Richard Wagner, lived 15 years in Switzerland, making it obvious where Wagner got all his funny ideas from. All roads always lead to Switzerland in the Alps, the base of Octogon of the Nazi Templars where every crime against humanity gets organized, financed, and set in action. Here it says, more, uh, the more than 15 years Richard Wagner spent in Switzerland. So here's a Wikipedia about Richard Wagner. And um, I'll show you here. Look here. In exile in Switzerland from 1849 to 1858. More than 15 years. And uh, it's actually here where he started to um, write things against the jaywalkers. Well, the whole article is interesting, but you know, yeah. Wagner's primary published output during his first years in Zurich was a set of essays in the artwork of the future. He described the vision of opera as Gesamtkunstwerk, in which the various, uh, means total work of art, in which the various arts such as music, song, dance, poetry, visual arts, and stagecraft were unified. Um, Jaywalkerism in Music, 1850, was the first of Wagner's writings to feature anti-jaywalker views, the first, and he made it in Switzerland. So I hope you understand now why Putin, who has his whole family and all his money in Switzerland, why he has a Wagner group who are killing and murdering and butchering Ukrainian children. Do you understand this? In here, this pol polemic Wagner uh, argued frequently using traditional anti jaywalker abuse that the jaywalkers had no connection to the German spirit, well, and so on and so forth. It started in Switzerland. As all the, like the Duke uh, Hartwig uh, von. Well, anyway, it's it's all in my video, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, and um, the 18-hour pentology, The Swiss Beast, and um, in many more of my videos. It always leads to Switzerland, to just any crime against humanity that has been going on. It always comes out of this base in the Alps of the Octogon of the Knights Templars and their Teutonic Knights. So here, one more time, you get all the information about how Switzerland is behind all crimes against humanity throughout the, uh, uh, the centuries before, throughout history. Uh, it's on the same channel. Here's part one, here you get part two. It's a bit difficult to find. You have to go into the video section here and then scroll down because uh, YouTube, YouTube censorship doesn't want you to see these videos for the obvious reason. I am uh, blacklisted, I'm pink listed, I am, uh, I'm shadow banned. So if you put in the title, it won't pop up, pop out. Um, so um, it's in five parts. 
number part number five is on my other channel which you can find here homeland security and you have to go into the video section and scroll down until you find it um yeah well you know i guess youtube loves Switzerland, hey probably got a lot of money stashed there as well hey google so here you can see the wikipedia site about the pmc private military company wagner named after hitler's hero the composer richard wagner who made the teutonic opera called tannhäuser and here this is interesting the wagner group is believed to be owned by yevgeny prigozhin a businessman with close links to Russian President Vladimir Putin. It has been accused of war crimes in areas where it was deployed. And if you look at the logo, it has the typical Nazi colors, red, white and black. And the whole thing is in a circle for the concept of three, meaning the compass. You can make a circle with a compass. And here you can see four, the crosshairs, four things like the concept of four. So it does say square and compass. And of course, the, uh, the death skull, like the SS, like the Nazis, it's a Freemason symbol. You know, they put it in every lodge, they put a skull, like skull and bones, you know. And if I only look at this here, this part, there's only the, the little top is not there. But this is definitely with, you know, the smaller one here and the bigger one here. This is on the crest of uh, Godefroy de Saint-Omer, one of the founders of the Knights Templars. And um, uh, their leader is a Lieutenant Colonel, Dimitri Utkin. So here you see, you know, they got their allies, their allies opponents here but you never know what's you know well I'll let you look at it yourself look it has offices in saint petersburg you know this this is teutonic knights area it's right next to prussia saint petersburg you know i mean the proofs are all over people it's all over and uh, so Wagner, like the Wagner group, uh, he made the um, the Teutonic opera called Tannhäuser. The Teutonic order were also called the Third Order, like the Third Reich, das Dritte Reich. So they were also called the Third Order after the second other orders, the Hospitallers, then the Knights Templars chron chronologically, and then after that, finally, the Teutonic Order. And you see the two blokes of the, uh, the Knights Templars. So Tannhäuser was a Teutonic Knight who fought in the Sixth Crusade in the year 1228 and this is the typical teutonic knights outfit and these wings are of course the isis wings within the middle the form of the isis horns which uh, represents the horns of the cow apis the bull in pharaonic so here you can see the goddess Isis with the sun disc and here the uh, the Apis horns of the bull like APIS like for the advanced personal information system in the US I made a video about it and these are the Isis wings so it's a combination of both because we're being ruled by a foreign power it's all occult and they come from Egypt. Uh, see my videos. So it's in black because the pharaohs, they sometimes they use the black stone. I forgot the name of it. But um, so, you know, there, there were no black.
black pharaohs actually. Uh, all the mummies we uh, that have been found, they uh, they're all redheads actually. They had red hair and they were very white. So all you who are into um, Afrocentrism, um, just leave it. You know, it's um, it's um, it's not correct. Here you can see the historical Tannhäuser in his Teutonic outfit. Though this is from a picture from the year 1300 and the Crusades ended in 1291, the same date as their base Switzerland was founded. So here we can see the Isis wings within the middle, the uh, the horns, or here also the horns here, you see, the Apis horns, the bull of Egypt, here the Teutonic black cross. So this is the original uh, like picture of those days. And so this is from Wikipedia. And um, so it depicts him, Tannhäuser, in the Teutonic order habit suggesting he might have fought in the Sixth Crusade led by Emperor Frederick II. For a while Tannhäuser was an, exit, an active courtier at the court of the Austrian, well, etc. And so the guy really, you know, he really lived. And even So even Alistair Crowley wrote a play called Tan Häuser. Yeah. And also Oscar Wilde is was somehow in it as well, yeah. Um Tannhäuser. They're, they're all sort of seem to be like uh, attracted to Tannhäuser, right? So, you know, so they must have been all Freemasons, you know. Just the Freemasons that come out of this Tannhäuser, Templar, Teutonic Knight stuff. And they come all out of Egypt, eventually. Now, one more time. The Apis horns and here the Isis wings all together in the uh, Teutonic Knights outfit. And apparently, I mean, the proofs are here that Putin, he's also into it. Otherwise, he would have, he would have never called his uh, his PMC um, Schutzstaffel Wagner, which is a bit odd for a Russian, eh? Don't you think so? It's very odd. A sort of patriotic Russian, at least that's what he's selling him, himself for, um, giving it a German name. And he says uh, uh, that he hates the Nazis. It doesn't fit. The guy's a liar, you know, and they turn it all around like the cross, you know. So um, he's not going after the Nazis. He is the Nazi. So here is the town of Tannhausen, where the name Tannhäuser is from. And you can see here it's in the south of Germany, uh, which is called the Swiss buffer zone. It's, they speak Alemannic here. And um, as I've explained in my videos, the, um, the Swiss mercenaries during the Thirty Year War, they murdered everybody here. And the Swiss massively settled down here. It's like the Swiss buffer zone. And the Tan, it's like a fir tree. And Hausen, it means the house, like here. The fir tree and the, ha the house, which is, of course, a royal house, you know. And this is probably a reference to a pyramid or something. But this is a, uh, a definitely a royal house, like the Perhet and the Pertasser of Pharaoh. And um, here you can see the Tannhausen Castle, the, the typical Swiss castle. All these Swiss castles, they've got these things here for the win in front of the windows in red and white, Templar's colors, with a Templar V in it. And there are four in red for the concept of four and three in white for the concept of uh, three. Um, here it says the Lord of Tannhausen. And 
in that crest you can see in the middle the uh, the Teutonic cross uh, Freiherr means a baron so nobility Teutonic knights Tannhausen yeah this is a real picture though it looks a bit like out of a Charlie Chaplin film I don't know I hope you all see here the pharaonic sun hieroglyph the hieroglyph of pharaoh here um, this is the hieroglyph for the sun here in the middle and this symbol actually is the uh, it says square and compass the circle here it's a you know with a compass you can make a circle and this is here you got one square two square three square four square it says square and compass all the people who are initiated in the masons they see in immediately square and compass and it has also the concept of four once more for the square and, uh, and also here four of these things here and uh, so this is a real picture with the real uh, the real dude here so uh, every year hitler he went to the richard wagner bayreuth opera festival which to this very day has become a hot spot for octagons nazis from all over the world like the recent scandal over the russian bass baritone opera singer yevgeny nikitin going to perform at the Wagner place in 2012 with a swastika on his chest. Here he is on the picture. I mean, I've never seen an opera singer like this, but I guess maybe he was a, a member of the other Wagner group who just had a, uh, a good voice. Eh? And the uh, Russian also has the inversed pyramid of death on his chest with the Templar V here and this is the same symbol uh, these poor people in Auschwitz the political prisoners and, and the other inmates they had this um, on their left chest just as this uh, Ruski here so this is definitely you know it's wagner plays the wagner group he's probably a friend of mr putin as well so this guy he's deep 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 into it you know and i'm making a big scandal because the, the bayreuth wagner plays you know it's a it, it really is a hot spot for the elite nazis of octagon nowadays and it, it has been ever since 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 the 20s and the 30s and you know and they know it people i mean look, look this is a swastika here's the auschwitz triangle uh the templar v here i mean these people are these are the initiated ones eh? So here you can see him, Yev, Yevgeny Nikitin. Um, and um, here you can read about his, uh, uh, the tattoo controversy. So here, Nikitin was scheduled to sing the role in Wagner's opera, The Flying Dutchman, at the opening of the 2012 Bayreuth Festival. There it is. Just, uh, which would have made him the first Russian in history to assume an opening title role there, well, etc. And um, these, uh, the tattoos suggested Nazi sympathies, which the singer subsequently denied. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he had the, the inverse triangle of Auschwitz as well on his chest. Eh? Um, here, the main controversial tattoo in the video still images a partly covered swastika had been completely covered by a large eight-pointed star designed by the time of the Bayreuth withdrawal so he um, 
uh, he put instead an eight-pointed star, you know, octagon, like under the uh, the logo of the Wagner Group. You know, remember, it was a uh, one of their logos had a uh, a Templar's cross with on an octagon. Yeah. And he explained that the swastika never had been his intention. Yeah, yeah, okay. That you just made a. Uh, it was a coincidence. He made a swastika on his chest. I mean, it was a coincidence. I mean, yeah. So that's uh, Wagner Bayreuth. It's a. Uh, it's a hot spot for Nazis, and it always has been, and it goes on. Oh, and uh, the uh, the swastika guy, Yevgeny Igorovich Nikitin. Uh, he was trained at the St. Petersburg Cons Conservatory. Well, St. Petersburg is Teutonic Knights. It's put in its swastikas all over and Auschwitz, inversed pyramids and octagons and the Wagner group, just like this Wagner play. Here, the Beirut place, so it all fits together. Right? It all converges in St. Petersburg. So, here you can read in Wikipedia about the Bayreuth Festival. And um, here, uh, Richard Wagner. The, um, the Bayreuth Festival is a music festival held annually in Bayreuth, Germany at which performances of operas by the 19th century German composer Richard Wagner are presented. So here you can see the uh, the, uh, the house here, the Bayreuth house, and here you can see the inverse pyramid of death here at the lawn. Uh, I tell you people, they know it because this is the um, this is the elite of the Nazis coming here. You know, they they, they know this stuff. Right? I mean, I mean, you don't do this by accident, eh? And it's all, I mean, especially with the history it all has, eh? Which is still going on. Uh, so here you see about the uh, Bayreuth under Nazi Germany. Uh, so I, I'll show you shortly about this. Yeah, Bayreuth under Nazi Germany in the 1920s, well before the rise of Nazi Party, Winifred Wagner, she was English, by the way, became a strong supporter and close personal friend of Adolf Hitler. Her correspondence with Hitler has never been released by the Wagner family. She and other festival leaders were members of Nazi chief ide ide ideologue um, Alfred Rosenberg, Kampfbund für Deutsche Kultur, which actively suppressed modernist music and works by de degenerate artists. The festival maintained some artistic independence under Nazi rule. So there's Wagner, you know, the Wagner group, you know, Nazis, I mean, you can see this, you know, Hitler, it was his favorite hangout here, you know. So why does Putin, he, who says he hates the Nazis, why does he call it the Wagner Group? Eh? Come on, come on, people. They rub it into, under our noses, yeah. The composer Richard Wagner hated the Jaywalkers. And his daughter-in-law, Winifred Wagner, made a name Marjorie Williams from England whom you can see here, together with Adolf Hitler. She became a very close friend of Adolf Hitler in the same year of 1923, when Hitler was in Zurich, Switzerland, here in this original Swiss picture. So this is Wit Wikipedia about Winifred Wagner. And um, she was born Marjorie Williams, and uh, she lived until 1980. Uh, she was a friend and supporter of Adolf Hitler, himself a Wagner enthusiast.
So, you know, if you hear Wagner, a Wagner group, you know, you know it's related with this here. You know. In 1923, Wagner met Adolf Hitler, who greatly admired Richard Wagner's music. When Hitler was jailed for his part in the Munich Beer Hall Putsch, Wagner sent him food parcels and stationery on which Hitler's autobiography Mein Kampf may have been written. In the late 1930s, he served as Hitler's personal translator during treaty negotiations with uh, Britain. And he had the Bayreuth Festival. So. Oh, you can read it yourself. And here we see the English connection to Hitler, Wagner, and the origins of World War II with the British Baroness Unity Valkyrie Mitford, another Hitler supporter of the English nobility. But okay. I could reveal to you a lot more concerning this. But I just wanted to explain about Putin's Wagner group and very un-Russian name of this Teutonic pack of assassins, enemy of the Russian people and, of course, enemy of the Ukrainians. So here you see Ride of the Valkyries by Richard Wagner and the same name as the Baroness Unity Valkyrie Mitford uh, was a personal friend of uh, Adolf Hitler. The Wagner Group and its funny choice of name for a Russian is another proof of Putin being in the order of the Teutonic Knights, who are the northern branch of the Knights Templars. And as you can see here, they are just as multinational as the Templ Templars were and still are. These are the Knights Templars, the descendants. This is absolutely octagon of the Nazi Templars in action. And they got all their money stashed in Switzerland, of course. And even Alistair Crowley, who spent a lot of time in Switzerland, he had a child with a Swiss lady. Alistair Crowley also wrote a play called Tannhäuser. As Alistair Crowley had his Thelema temple in Sicily right next to the Teutonic Knights commandery of Palermo, which I explain in this video here. Here's the Teutonic Templar's cross. Uh, here's St. Petersburg, about here. This is all Teutonic Knights territory and Prussia and here is Palermo like here where the, um, the Thelema temple is just right next to it and here it says come to Rhein und Burg des Deutschen Ordens the um, come to Rhein it means commanderies and um, castles of the uh, Teutonic Knights it's all connected, you know, all these people, they're all connected. And uh, so here's the title of the video and it's on the same channel here. So go and have a look. And at a certain moment, all four of them lived in Munich, Germany at the very same time. Adolf Hitler, Alistair Crowley, Ian Fleming and Prince Bernhard Zurlippe Bisterfeld, the guy who founded the uh, Bilderbergers. So I explained that in this video here. It's like 10 years old. So here you can see uh, Unity Valkyrie Mitford, again, the Baroness, personal friend of Adolf Hitler. Well, she was there as well. 
so here's the title on this channel here the nazis won the second world war while the germans lost the war i can assure you that it is no coincidence that russia is almost written the same way as prussia the only difference is the p the p from putin prussia without a p becomes russia thus giving the answer to the question what happened to the prussians and where did they go to yeah look at the word if i take the p away you get russia putin's p colonizing prussia or colonizing russia maybe mr putin here can tell you the whole story about the disappearance of the prussians or prussians i mean why else would a slavic country like russia aggress another slavic country huh? and put in the teutonic and his wagner boys seem to be heading for world war three but the war will be restricted to eastern europe and its slavs because of this here and the reasons i explained to you before in this video the whole nazi thing is pure evil satanic and directed against the european peoples and especially directed against those who seek to unite in order to preserve their national and ethnic identities against pharaoh's agenda it's the same in world war ii Here it says nationalism had unified germany and italy hitler he's pretended to be for the german people until the moment he had them all united and then he destroyed them put in he did the same here the pan slavism slavic nationalism wake up slavic peoples the desire to unite all of the slavic people under one empire so putin he's pretending to be in favor for the pan slavism and the um the slavic national identity so he pretends to be uniting them and but in fact his goal is to destroy them both ukrainians polis russians the lot of them it's the same technique people it's over and over again they use the same technique do you get it watch the channel here of the ukrainian yulia valova and see in her videos the work of putin's teutonic knights her channel looks quite harmless well, i can tell you the videos are not you can already see this in the in the thumbnails i eh? really a lot of bloody videos i eh? and in this video of hers you'll see a 10 year old european girl from the ukraine die and the parents cry because of these global politicians gangsters of pharaoh so there's her channel again and here's the title and here in this channel by the name of dronescapes you can see some more genuine hardcore war footage made by the people themselves and not by pharaoh's prostitutes you can see the thumbnails there you go 
I guess the Ukraine war is going to be the best documented war ever. Even with high definition footage from above by the various drones hovering around, which will make you feel like being in Hollywood's Terminator 5. The Drone Wars. Welcome to the future. Here we can see Vladi the Liar holding a recent 2022 speech in Moscow during the Ukraine war and standing in between the two Masonic pillars of Yachin and Boaz. A lot of blue for Pharaoh's war crown with blue arrays symbolizing the winds of war like a storm raining down on the Ukraine and on Europe. The white, blue and red pharaonic crown colors in the Russian flags. The double-headed phoenix for the old world order and the new world order of pharaoh's nobility combined in the republic. Therefore, the crown and the slayer saint of St. George, the patronage of the Knights Templars and the Baltic branch of the Teutonic, Teutonic Knights, to whom Vladi the Liar belongs to. So here you see Putin standing here, and the same thing you can see once more here. And this is white for the Perhet. The White House uh, for Upper Egypt, which stands for the New World Order. So here you can see the two pillars of the Freemasons, Yachin and Boaz. And here the arrays, you know, like, and blue, it stands for the war crown of Pharaoh, because that's where they all come from, you know. And these are like the winds of war, you know, because blue is pharaoh's war crown the flag of the uh, of uh, russia the uh, russian federation is white blue and red red is the old world order the pertasser meaning lower egypt stands for the red house meaning pertasser white is upper egypt in the south in demotic pharaonic that is Berhet, meaning the white house and it stands for the new world order so pharaohs in the united kingdom they had a white crown and a red crown and when they united the kingdom they put the two crowns together and pharaoh also had a blue crown the um the crown of war that's why the whole picture is predominantly blue so all the initiates they know well, war is going on and we're going to prepare wars and you know etc um, here you see the double-headed um, phoenix it is a phoenix uh, one head is for the old world's order the old vertical rule of pharaoh of the feudal system of the um, of the aristocracy who come out of pharaoh and on the other side is um, uh, the New World Order. And it's a double-headed bird because they united, you know, after the revolution, which was only a transition from the Old World Order to the New World Order. But the Old World Order and the old aristocracy, um, they still have a lot of rights. And... Um, so I explained it all in my film, The Swiss Beast, in the 18-hour pentology. That means five parts, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. And also in the, uh, my video, The, um, the Arist um, Nobilities, uh, the Nobility World Wars. Here you can see St. George, which is the patron of the Knights Templars and also of the Teutonic Knights to whom he down here belongs to. And this is also why he has a red tie, 
stands for the for this one here, the uh, the old world's order, because the guy is uh, definitely of uh, aristocratic descent. So um, it's it's here the crowns, of course, you know the crowns because it all comes out of the nobility. Both the horizontal rule now or here, and the old vertical rule of the feudal system. And I explain this also in another video on the on, on my same channel, uh, Gure. So it, it all means that Putin he's highly initiated. Everything is occult. Every part of this image is occult. And it's, it symbolizes a, um, a certain uh, meaning. And um, the British royal house, they also have this in the, um, you know, you, you see, uh, uh, you always see the queen having this on her, on her chest because it, it's, it's one and the same thing. You know, it's not only the, um, the patron of the, um, of the Knights Templars and the Teutonic Knights here, Saint George the Slayer Saint. So watch my film, Slayer, Slayer Saints, uh, Pray and Slay. I think it was. And but also the Queen has it, and they have both. They have um, Saint George the Slayer Saint, like, like the Georgia Guidestones. I mean, this is where it's coming from, you know. And uh, and both and the uh, the archangel Saint Michael and that's the archangel Saint Michael is the patron of uh, the mafia. So they got a legal mafia like this here because out of the Knights Templars, the whole uniformed gang army, I mean the higher grades police, you know, who are controlling the slaves, they all come from this. And this is again also the double-headed thing, you know, on one side like. They have their legal mafia and the other side the illegal mafia, like the uh, Vorisagonia, the Russian mafia. And on the other side, you got the Komitet Gosudastveno Bezopasnostia, the uh, sort of legal mafia, the KGB, now called uh, FSB, of whom this guy, he was a, um, a colonel or a lieutenant colonel in it. So Yachin and Boas, it's it's completely occult, and um, I mean this guy is not Russia, he's not even European. It's all from Pharaoh, right? And here, eight times the horizontal rule of the octagon of the Nazi Templars. Here they are, eight times the horizontal rule, standing for octagon. Here there are four flags for the concept of four, and it's all occult. You know, they, they, these people, you know, they're not from Europe, they're not Europeans, they are foreign power. They originally come from Egypt and they want to destroy the Europeans. They want to destroy the white race. And here, once more, the top part of that picture you just saw before with the eight horizontal lines. And here with uh, St. George uh, in the middle. And here down here you see Putin, but it didn't fit in the picture. Um, you know, uh, in the frame, I mean. So this is the dragon. St. George is killing the dragon. And uh, uh, the dragon is us, the Europeans. We are the dragon. And the whole of mankind actually are. You know. On top of the image, you see three Templar crosses standing for the three orders emerging into one called the Third Order. The three orders are the Hospitallers, the Knights Templars and the Teutonic Knights. And as in Russia, the Teutonic Knights and their Mr. Putin rule over the Russian Federation. Therefore, the big crown in the middle at the top, standing for the Teutonic Knights, 
who derive out of the Knights Templars and the Hospitallers, who are all three symbolized by crowns, because the three orders derive out of the nobility. The wings of the birdie birdie are spread the same way as on a Teutonic Knight outfit and helmet, and the same way as their goddess Isis of this enemy of mankind. I reveal to you now and here why I always say birdie birdie two times. Well, it's because this pharaonic bird of prey has two heads. Birdie, birdie. In the left claw, birdie birdie holds the earth with a Templar's cross in it, because the Templars rule over the entire earth with their new Republican horizontal rule of the Octogon Nazi Templars. When I infiltrated the Swiss Octogon of the Nazi Templars in the Alps, Swissy usually referred to their man Putin as the Black Prince. Their Teutonic knight dressed in the traditional Teutonic black, the Black Prince. The earth here next to the Black Prince and the Templar's cross ruling over the earth is showing two squares and the whole thing is in a circle symbolizing the compass because with a compass you can make a circle thus the whole item saying square and compass of the freemasons with 13 circles covering the relatively short vertical rule of the feudal old world's order and the larger horizontal rule of the Republican New World Order. Thirteen circles because of Friday the 13th, 1307, when the Knights Templars got arrested in France, and nine circles on the horizontal line because the horizontal rule got initiated by the nine original Knights Templars like Hugues de Payen, Godefroy de Saint-Omer, and the rest. Pharaoh's magic wand in Birdie Birdie's right claw. I might explain you some other time, because it will take a lot of time and this video is already getting far too long stretched. Watch my video on Saint George entitled Slayer Saints Pray and Slay here on the same channel in order to understand more about why the Black Prince is showing Saint George the Slayer Saint everywhere in each photo taken in Moscow. So here's Slayer Saints, Pray and Slay. And also watch this one. Here's the title on the same channel. And then I have another video about the, um, about the uh, Saint George as well on the same channel. Ah, here it is about St. George Guidestones here on the, on the same channel. Here's the title. You must absolutely watch this if you understand what's going on in the Ukraine now, why Putin is showing it all the time when he has taken pictures of him in Moscow together with the Georgia Guidestones uh, project. So you go watch this film if you want to understand the whole shebang. Therefore, the ones in their shiny uniforms who beat up and terrorize the Russian people. 
when they dare to criticize Tsar Vladi or protest against the Ukraine war. Have the Templar logo of their royal slayer saint by the name of Saint George on their Russian police cars, like a Templar knight on horseback waving the standard of Saint George in a crusade against the Slavic peoples in order to annihilate the white race. From September 11, 2001 until around Friday the 13th, 2019, Pharaoh's prostitutes and Pharaoh's politics only talked about the kebab wars and its terrorist attacks. Then, by a magic button, from one day to the other, there were no more terrorist attacks ever again. And they only talked about the Wu flu for the next two years, until February 24th, 2022, the day of the Russian invasion, with simultaneously the Wu flu stopping and all sanitary restrictions lifted from one day to the other. We passed from one agenda to the other through unexplainable abrupt endings and simultaneous abrupt beginnings, literally replacing one with the other at the exact same time. From the terrorist agenda, to the Wu flu agenda, to the Ukraine war agenda, like a play script by a Masonic playwright. Look, here it even says, committed to improving the state of the world. The state of the world, the world state. And as these pharaohs are not really into improving the condition of the world, amongst themselves it definitely means committed to improving the world state. As their man Hitler said, one state, one people, one leader, a world state, a singular world state, one pharaonic empire, a world state, ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer. And it's a dark and evil agenda indeed called the Ordo Abkau, Pharaoh's eternal war agenda, from kebab wars to bug war, and from bug war to the Slavic war, made by our masters. Once weapons were manufactured to fight wars, now wars are manufactured to sell weapons. My weapon of me, Homie Ross, is the blast from the past. The blast from the past. We've all been lied to so much by the media and by the politicians that we don't know anymore what to believe, if it's true or not. Like, for instance, the atrocities being done in the Ukraine. First of all, you must understand that there are not just two parties, Russia versus Ukraine, but that there is also a third party of the enemy within, 
like the Nazi Templar Wagner Group here, for instance, who are in fact behind the massacre in Bucha. So Russians and Ukrainians will hate each other and wage war with each other. This third party is the octagon of the Nazi Templars of pharaonic origin and their base Switzerland in the Alps, who always try to set up peoples against each other so they can have all the power afterwards, just as they've done in all wars. And Mr. Putin and his Wagner group are both part of the octagon, which I explain in this video here, entitled Black Prince of Prussia and Pharaoh's People's Product, PPP. Here you can see the title in the same channel. So this picture here is taken from the Ukraine war and those who say, well, but I don't see any blood. Well, the blood has run into the sand here, 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 and here. So first of all, are Russians capable of all the atrocities being shown by the media? Well, the answer is a yes, a plain, an affirmative yes. The Ruskies have done the same in Afghanistan and Chechnya, murdering millions. And their specialities are rape, mutilation, looting, and destroying all the houses of the civilians in the middle of winter, just as it is happening now in Bucha, Kiev, Ukraine. And I'll quote for you, Kassan Bayev was the single surgeon for almost 80,000 people during the Chechen wars. At one point during the conflict, he performed 67 amputations and eight brain operations in a 48 hour period. He was also known for treating both Chechen and Russian soldiers. And I read the book in French of this good man about 20 years ago. And Kassan Bayev said, the worst Russian soldiers were the Kontraktniki, who were real butchers murdering women and children. Kontraktniki is the Russian word for contractor or mercenaries, like the Wagner Group. And the Kontraktniki are typical octagon of the Nazi Templars. I was in Russia in the 80s during the Cold War, and I can only confirm that this is how the Ruskies are, with some minor exceptions. I was even inside this building here, going in from the back side. There you can see the building. These doors were all closed and I went in from the back side. I suppose these doors are always closed from this side. And I walked through here from this side and I went in in the middle on the other side. And they never found out who I really was. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to pronounce it, you know, this way, but um, if you want to talk about dumb, well, you can find them here. Let's let's say that, you know. Just go and see the YouTube channel Stop a Douchebag, how senselessly aggressive 
and without any sense of justice nor conscience these Ruskies behave. So here you can see them fighting, you know, for, for no reason at all. It's it's incredible, you know, if you look, if you watch this. And if you see this, you know, so this is the, the channel name, SADB World. And if you, you know, the architect attacks. And if you see the, the you know, the senseless violence, you know, of the Ruskies, well, you understand that they are quite capable of all the, you know, the um, the horrible things going on in the Ukraine, uh, rape and everything. I mean, you you can see it happening in Russia, you know, and uh, this this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like, well, you 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 can see the mentality. Um, well, of course, they're not all bad, but there are very many who are very bad you can see this in this on this channel i mean these guys filming they're doing a good job you know they're they're good russians i would say but there are really far many many you know violence and evil people walking around there which you can see on this channel you know and this is happening you know this has nothing to do with ukraine so this is like a uh, in a, in a neutral perspective by Russians themselves. And then if they can't win the fight, they start lying and they slip into the victim's role. Just as I've always seen in Switzerland, by the way. And yes, there are, there are Swiss minorities all over Russia. God knows how many there are today. And here, for instance, and if you if you think it's only the men who are violent, well, you're mistaken. Uh, the women are just as violent. I mean, this channel is you can see Russian violence all over, and then they lie. You know, like this woman here. She, then she said, she said her kid had a heart condition. Do you believe her? A children's doctor almost runs over a mother with a child. I showed that in my other video, you know, they, they just run over children. They don't care. And now they're doing this in the Ukraine. Like, uh, yeah, all, you, you can violent women. It's, it's incredible. I mean, you, you, you would never seen this anywhere else. I think yeah, they, 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 they try to run over people. This guy is escaping like, um, you know, this trying to run over a woman with a child here. Uh, it's just, it's, if you want to see Russian violence, well, go and see this channel and, and, and look how they look. You know, these women, they start screaming and, and they get physical. Look at this, you know, they, they get really physical. It's it's not only the man. And then they try to behave like a, like a mafia boss and all this. They pull out guns and baseball bats and knives and oh, it's it's incredible. So, yes. The Ruskies are capable of all the things they are, they are being accused of now in the Ukraine. They are capable. Look at all the fighting. This is now. This is filmed by Russians themselves, by good Russians. Look, guy pulling a gun here where it says POW. Um, they're capable of it. You can see it. You know, this is going on in Russia, you know violence for nothing and then they lie you know and the police hardly comes you know nobody cares and it's so corrupt that many have you know they have a lot of fingers inside the police a lot of mates inside the police you know they all try to run over people and because they just drive over the pave the pavement you know the sidewalk it's chaos. So I understand the pharaohs have enough of these people, you know. And this is what's going to happen, you know. There's going to be a reset on Russia. The aim of the Ukraine war is more Russia than it is the Ukraine. And it will come, you know. The whole world is going to hate them now. So here you can see in the video section of the Stop a Douchebag World how disgustingly violent the Ruskies behave. 
see here it's all they come with their big cars you know it's, it's going too good for them so they need some economic sanctions and a reset i totally agree with pharaoh on this one eh? look they're all fighting over nothing and and here fighting and they always aggress the um the weaker ones i mean that that's that's real rusky eh they they pull guns and they they uh, they attack the weaker the, the weak ones like children and yeah, you see fighting uh, look how aggressive they look you know look at that it's all about it's all fighting and macho stuff here and you know if you punch them one time you know they're, they're down and they don't get up anymore you know because these guys who are filming they're like wrestlers and and real fighters but they they don't really go into it you know they they behave well you know the ones filming they're young kids and look it's all aggressions and fighting they try you know the russians try to run these kids over and and that's how they behave they well they think they're just kids you know and but these kids are, are real good wrestlers and they behave you know they, they don't end up in violence and uh yeah, they even this one is even pulling a knife here. The police comes, well, they don't do anything here. The police, they, they keep on hitting the police. <laughs> this one here, down here. The police is standing there and he keeps on hitting and they don't care. And look how aggressive the women are. Look at this one here. Look at the girly here. And here, there's another girly. They, they just attack the man, you know. They know that when the man, they, they retaliate. You know, they, they, they got everything on the, everybody on their necks, you know, you know, they even take this one even takes the child out, you know, as a, you know, to slip into the victim's role. Like this, this guy's extremely aggressive. This one over nothing. That's yeah, another fight. This is Russia. You know, they even attack a guy here with a, uh, with a crutch. Ruskies, they like to attack the weak. And the defenseless you can see that here like kids yeah, another attack here and, and they all pretend they all come with a big mercedes they're big gangster cars and it's 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 a it's a mafia-led country and they need a reset and i say go ahead pharaoh go ahead give them a bloody reset eh? it's enough you gave them everything, you know, they're, they're going to have, they have everything, McDonald's and big Mercedes and Volkswagen, American cars and what they do, you know, they behave like monkeys. Look at this one here. They behave like monkeys, especially the women. Look at them. It says woman. Well, we know what that is. It's a pink list killer, probably. And they know, you know, the women, they know that as a man, you can't retaliate because the women can hit a man. That, that, that's, that's what Europe is like. And if you're and a man, he, can, he cannot retaliate. Here, look, another fight here. And the, the kids here, that they're just defending. Here, another fight, you know, just a lot of aggressive energy for nothing. Over nothing, really. Yeah, cops coming. Yes, yeah, fight women very aggressive. So this this is Russian TV, real life. You know, yeah, fights here, fights here. I mean, go ahead, Pharaoh. This time I agree with you. Give him a reset. You know, just squeeze him down, and you know they they're. they're they got they've gotten too arrogant you look at this women here aggressive fight aggressing a man and he knows he, he can't he can't do anything back you know, he goes to prison here again you know these kids are okay look look at the big the big one hey, attacking him you know for over nothing and these women aggressive they say oh i've got connection in the uh, in the kgb like and all the, every time hear this too it's such an aggressive territory Russia is. You know, the woman attacking the, the guys here, this this one, oh, you know, look, look look at my clothes, you know, I'm I've got connections in the parliament. I know Mr. Putin, you know. 
This is yes. He hit. They hit the young guys here. They they don't do anything back. Give him a give him a reset. Finish these Russians. Finish it. You know there goes Pharaoh. You go ahead. Yeah. And this this is real life, real life TV. And there are very few Russians who stand up. Very very few. So Pharaoh has to do it himself. The NATO has to do it. And uh, I totally agree with it. I totally agree. And it's well, it goes on and it goes on. You know, it's um, it's really sickening. So go and have a look if you want to know if it's real. You know the atrocities uh, the Russians are doing on Ukrainian children and women, and it is true. If you've seen this here, stop a douchebag world. You know it's true. They can do it. They love violence over there, apparently. Well, they love violence. Well, give them violence, hey. Go ahead, Pharaoh. Give them violence. I mean, they're they're begging for it, hey. They're really begging for it. And the whole world hates them now. So go ahead, world. Uh, here are the proofs, people. I'm, these are the proofs what they're capable of, you know. I mean, here they still sort of, well, they don't give a damn about any laws in Russia, you know, but uh, they're still some somehow tied to the laws and the uh, and the consequences of their actions. But you can see if you give these guys, you know, in a Ukrainian town with all the weapons and you, and you put them there, these Russian soldiers, you know, they just they just go berserk and they, well, like it's happening now. This is the mentality. It's, it's, I, I think this is really shocking. It's a really shocking YouTube channel. Uh, these are things you see nowhere else in the world, really. Roskis did it, people. They did it. It's true. But it's not Russia, Ukraine in this war. There's the enemy within, in between, who puts a lot of. Um, oil on the fire. I understand that Pharaoh has enough of these Ruskies who need to be re-educated with a reset afterwards, as humanity is Pharaoh's bread race, human livestock. So I agree with you, Pharaohs. Just go and have a reset on the Ruskies. So Pharaoh had their Teutonic Putin send Ruski soldiers into the Ukraine during the coldest part of winter in order to delete them without proper logistics. I'll read it for you. Why Russia's logistics failed? Well, I'm explaining that to you. It was deliberate and it is a trap. It has to do with a reset. Not enough food, being hungry all the time. I'll read it for you here. Russian soldiers loot Ukrainian shops. Frozen toes, frozen bodies, shivering the whole time. With old fashioned conventional weapons and World War II era tanks against NATO's high-tech smart weapons. So here you see the drones and the high-tech portable missile launchers of NATO by the English and Americans and all this. And these are really old-fashioned tanks, you know, World War II era almost. Uh, I noticed the cannons are not even uh, shock absorbed, you know. Uh, they are absolutely have no satellite support like an Abrams tank for the shelling. You know, like an Abrams tank, you know, every shelling, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's a bullseye, you know, because it's all satellite linked. These are absolutely not. I have no chance at all. This is, this is all scrapyard stuff. There's no more, no more place in a modern warfare. 
The Russian soldiers are just cannon fodder, and they know it now, but it's too late. They were trapped into it because Mr. Putin and his pals of the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, they wanted a reset and there's no way back either. So they say it, we are cannon fodder. They know it. So it's the lie by Pharaoh that wins over all entire armies. You know, they believed Mr. Putin, but he lied, of course. It's Vladi the liar, and he's part of the Teutonic Knights. They're trapped into Pharaoh's lies, and with firing squads behind the Ruski soldiers' backs to eliminate the deserters. Thus, Ruski soldiers trapped by the Octogon knowing some liters of looted vodka would do the rest under these conditions and lead to terrible atrocities on the local population, which was exactly what Pharaoh wanted. And as you know now through my videos that this guy was Swiss, he wasn't ethnic, he was a Swiss American general and president, and of course a member of the Swiss Octogon going for all key positions. And he said, you will not find it difficult to prove that battles, campaigns and even wars have been won or lost primarily because of logistics. Well, yeah. It says in military officers' academies that with a good army you can win the battle, but with good logistics you win the war. Armies win battles, but logistics wins wars. To which I'd like to add one more thing, which is even more important, and that's the signaler call, the radio man. Scouts gathering intel, intel from the air, to know where the enemy is, how many there are, direction of movement, and what they're doing. This is even more important than the logistics. The intel passed on through the signaler core has destroyed armies hundred times the size of your own. It's really not hard to understand where the Ukrainians get all their intel from. And the flash in the US Army INSCOM logo is the symbol for the signaler call, incorporated into the US Army Intelligence and Security Command. So. Without the U.S. signaler call, the Ukrainians could never have destroyed so many, so much Ruski armor in such a miraculous way. So here is the flash in the middle of the Army Intelligence and Security Com Command, the INSCOM. This is the flash of the signaler call, because with the electronics, everything has become more complicated. And there's not just one signaler core anymore. It's integrated in the whole thing, together with the intelligence gathering and all that. This is a Sphinx, of course, the army intelligence. It's all pharaonic. Eh? This looks like to be a aristocratic lord with his wig. And uh, this, of course, is the, um, the seven arrows of the Statue of Liberty which are the concept of three and the concept of four, which I've already explained to you. And this comes from the New World Order Horizontal Rule, the Republican Rule, uh, from the, um, from the um, uh, Liberty, uh, Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. The, uh, the Statue of Liberty, it's from Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. The... Um, from the French uh, Revolution, 
and uh, well, which was given from the from by the by the French Freemasons to the uh, to their their biggest horizontal rule ever made uh, in America. And this is the uh, the torch of the Statue of Liberty, of course. Here's a key, like in the Vatican, the logo of the Vatican and the Swiss banks, the Swiss UBS bank. Uh, it's it's full, and here you got the torch again of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, here again, the two keys here of the uh, the Vatican. I think that this is exactly the Vatican, almost the Vatican logo. Here it says 7075 instead of 76. That's interesting, right? Of course, this is the Vesica Piscas, you know, the two forming an oval in the middle. The two rings here, that means we are a chain, like a chain of command or an organization, like in where we go one, we go all. You know, this is this, is this you know, by the Knights Templars, uh, one for all and all for one. That's what it means. You know, they are very, very organized and they stand all behind each other. Whereas humanity, you know, it's all f everybody for himself. You know, here again is the um, the flashes of the Signaler Corps, which is called, I think this is in it's English, Signaler Corps. In America, it's just called Signal Corps. Uh, but I prefer the, uh, the name Signaler Corps. Mr. Putin, of course, knows this, where the Ukrainians got their, get their air reconnaissance from, from the NSA and the US Army Intelligence Command. But as he's part of the Teutonic Octagon, he plays major league with his Octagon pals commanding the US INSCOM, thus deliberately betraying the Russian people for the new world order goals. So the miraculous victories by the Ukrainians over this Russian, all powerful, scary Russian army is due to the US signaler call. Simple as that. Why do you think Vladi was best pals with Donald? Huh? It seems like Putin saying, hey, you see that young chick behind? Uh, that's my wife, and she could be my granddaughter. Trump replying, yeah, that's why I always got them from Eastern Europe as well. See what you mean, pal. Gangsters with young girls, pyramids, and Egyptian palm trees where they all come from. Typical pharaonic nobility. Just look at Trump's eyes. See how they're moving. Right, left, right. And yes, also atrocities committed against the ethnic Russians in Ukraine's Donbas region which you can witness in the channel of Patrick Lancaster here. And especially these videos here are quite bloody and filmed right after the impact of cluster bombs. So here you can see there here, massive cluster bomb. Uh, quite bloody videos. Here's some more about cluster bombs here, cluster bombs. I see a lot of bloody people, eh? People are bleeding, I mean. All right. Yeah, a lot of dead bodies everywhere. Well, you can already see them here. So, also in the Donbass region, uh, the people are being shelled. But who can really tell who shot the bomb or launched the missile? as it's all Russian-made bombs and missiles anyway, and launched from a 30 kilometer distance or so. Therefore, I tell you, 
that the enemy within of Putin's Nazi Templar Teutonic Knights and his Wagner boys did it to spark the hatred between nations, which has always been the objective of the Third Party, also called the Third Reich. The Third Party, you see, Das Dritte Reich of the Enemy Within and Octogon of the Knights Templars. So the Third Party, or the Third Reich, their aim is to have the other two parties fight each other, like two nations, two peoples, two religions, two races, or whatever. This is what Pharaoh's aristocracy, this is their strategy, which they have always been following. And it goes on, and it goes on. So this is interesting. This is a, a website to stop Wagner Group and its crimes. As I already told you, Wagner, it's a reference to the Nazis, which I've shown you in my film about the, um, the Black Prince in the same channel. So you can read it here. I like this website. I mean, they're doing something, apparently. I hope so. I, I've got a good feeling about this. And um, isn't this uh, Chinese, this, this thing here, Vion? Wyon? Hmm, interesting. You know, the Chinese are far more peaceful you know, then you th I think the Russians are behind it. It's all Julie Vitskovskaya. Some good Russians probably had to flee the country, eh? Uh, as they speak, or it must be somebody who speaks, uh, understands Cyrillic and uh, Russian language. Otherwise, you can't find all these things. And pictures like this, this is what the Wagner Group, what they're doing. It says, Wagner Group, or how to cure plague with cancer. Hmm. It's it's a mafia. Oh, they having it's white supremacism, Nazi tattoos, mafia style business model. Model. So they got Nazi tattoos, and Mr. Putin he's shouting hysterically. Oh, the Nazis, the Nazis, the Ukrainians are the Nazis. I mean, look at this. Wakey, wakey, people. The Nazis are inside. It's the Third Reich. The third party. You know, they do false flag operations, you know, like the shelling in the Donbass. They're behind it. They're behind it. And also in Bucha, you know, the, uh, the atrocities. Uh, it gets all on the back of simple Russian soldiers who, who didn't do it. You know, they did it. They're doing it all over. You know, look how they're performing these guys, you know, with swastikas and all this. I told you, Mr. Putin is a Teutonic Knight. Yeah. It's all Knights Templars. It's Octogon. So this is very interesting. I, um, I'll see if I can contact them. So, people, these are the real Nazis, and these are the ones who are behind the shelling both in the Donbass region, because nobody knows who really did it. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't tell me that. Eh? There's nobody who, who can really say like, well, you know, it's, it's like 30, 30 miles away, you know, when the missiles are being launched. Come on, you, you can't know it. It's just specula speculations. And the Wagner group is apparently also behind the... Uh, the butcher massacres and, and uh, this is octagon. This is Templar stuff. They are, they have no human feelings and they've been doing this for at least thousand years in the form of the octagon. And of course, before that, we had the Romans and the, and the, and the Pharaohs and which is the same group or the same origins, but 
this octagon has been terrorizing humanity since a uh, thousand years and their base is switzerland so watch my video the swiss beast home of the devil looking at pharaoh's politicians the best way for a coward and a liar to beat his enemies or to defeat humanity is to have the enemies fight each other i quote when two fight the third one takes advantage and then you take over control you see the two dogs here are fighting the dogs of war ukraine russia and the third one takes everything he's quietly eating this is what's happening when everyone is dead and exhausted you take the women and slave the children and install a ruling system to control the land and its people here you see these two are fighting one and two russia number one ukraine number two they're fighting and here's three number three he takes it all he takes all the treasures all the money all the wealth all the power all the women three because it's the third reich like putin with his wagner group killing both ukrainians and russians so these ones continue to fight each other they have already done the same thing during the second world war and the nazis won the war they're still there we can see it it's wagner it's putin and they're all over they're in the, they're having control over the us the ukraine europe the whole world and they always use the same pharaonic technique number three the third reich mr hitler he didn't die in 1945 you know, now he's dead but it's still going on you know the paperclip organization or the paperclip project they all came into the us all the nazis and in russia was the same thing the nazis went to the us and to russia same thing nazis won the war number three the third reich they win it all this is the true nature of the third reich third empire and enemy within who have the other empires or groups of people fight each other the third reich is back now with their old nazi names like wagner who was hitler's favorite nazi composer who lived in switzerland the base of the nazi templars funny name huh for a russian fighting force reminding you that the nazis were the biggest enemy of the russian people who butchered about 25 million russian men women and children putin is a nazi and an enemy of the russian people the problem is that humanity has been reset and followed up by a preset with a fixed binary system in their heads which only allows them to see the ukraine war as a soccer match between two parties in a binary system and only saying putin is the bad nazi versus saying that only zelensky is the bad nazi humanity is trapped into the yin yang preset of dualistic awareness also called the soccer match dilemma and its conception of only two parties there are in fact three parties 
the people, Putin and Zelensky. And both are Nazis, folks. Both Putin and Zelensky. And they're waging a war against the Ukrainian and the Russian people, framed into the hooliganism of the Freemason Ordo Abkau. This is why the Freemasons have the black and white binary system in their checkerboard configuration, because they know that these are the rules and conditions of the playground here on Earth. And it is, in fact, a soccer field where two parties are playing, the blacks against the whites, Putin against Zelensky, with the spectator masons here watching the soccer game and the people bleed, that's why they're red, around it. And this is a throne. Here you can see, of course, the square and compass. The circles here stand for the compass, the, all these little circles. circles. Here are, is a square for the square and compass, like here. This, these are, of course, the uh, pillars of Yashin and Boaz, who were standing at the temple of Pharaoh Solomon. And Solomon, as it says in the Bible, he was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. It was all about pharaohs, the whole book. And you see this a lot at the entrance of a lot of houses. You know, with the ball on top of the entrance, here's the gate-like. And the ball means the world domination, which they are trying to achieve and already have, of course. So that means somebody living here, you know, it, it belongs to the gang. That means if there is a war, or an army passing by, don't kill the people here, don't destroy the house, you can rape all the Europeans next door, that's no problem. And I, f I filmed it in my film, The uh, the Pharaoh Show. Well, this is probably another famous uh, Freemason. And uh, so here, they're all sitting here, right? So the masters, on their elevated level, sitting on their thrones, looking down at humanity and the two-dimensional black and white binary playground, who will never understand what's really happening above in the 3D, where the masters sit and who decide over the binary playground in which humanity is imprisoned, unable to pierce through until the higher levels deliberately being kept within the gates of the binary system, the invisible prison guards in our own minds and souls. For our master pharaohs here, it's like watching a soccer game with humanity bleeding out in the middle on the binary playgrounds. And with this binary system, the evil ones have infected the human spirit somewhere in between the source of souls and the arrival on planet Earth. Watch this impressive interview in this video here to understand the concept of the source of souls. Here's the title, The Source of Souls, Well of Life and Place of the Book of Life, also in the channel Gure, the same channel. And I tell you, it's only the brave ones amongst you who will be freed from the binary shackles keeping you prisoner inside Pharaoh's binary zoo, 
for the obedient coward sheeple, there will be eternal damnation. It is, in fact, entirely the other way around than those oriental holy books have infected your belief system with. The binary system, it's just in your mind. Be brave and fight back, and it will melt like ice in the sunlight. Or do you want to end like this here? Thank God, me, homie Ross, I've got a screw loose in my head that loosened me from the preset binary system, being able to think outside the matrix, enabling me to have run away from the yin yang soccer field hooliganism of the Ordo Abgao. You all know that a computer runs on a binary system, right? It uses only zeros and ones that function like on and off. How does binary work? Binary code works by representing symbols in a way that computers can process and understand. IT is done by breaking the symbols into a numeral system of two digits, one and zero. Apparently, the human brain also works like this, according to many experts. And this is what an expert on computers says about it. I don't think there's anything unique about human intelligence. All the neurons in the brain that make up perceptions and emotions operate in a binary fashion, Bill Gates. The only problem is, Bill, I think your binary system has a little problem with spelling. Intelligence without the G, neurons with the U and the E turned around. Hey, Bill. Maybe that's why mankind has been able to invent the computer. <laughs> because it works in a similar way. That's why most people have a soccer head or a soccer ball head only identifying the binary system of a football game with one team playing the other team, only two teams. And one can see on the image of the football haircut how they identify with a concept they can barely grasp. But there are exceptions without these limitations within the brain functions. But who are unable to wake up the binary soccer heads? Impossible. Look, even the ball is binary, with black and white spots on it. It's that much the soccer heads love the binary system, because that's all they understand. Here, in this video on Brighton, you can see the pervert Zelensky in ladies' underwear which I don't want to show you the picture here in my clean channel because I don't even want to see the gentle bender here in my still virgin channel. So here you can see this is Brighton, here you can do the search. So this is the title here, you just push the, you just punch the title here and Put it in the search bar here on Brighton, which is a, um, a video platform without censorship, or at least 
you know, for the normal things, there's no censorship. So here's the title once again, and here is the the name of the the channel. You can also punch that in there. And there are also videos how he plays the piano uh, without using it, his hands and with his trousers down. So maybe you understand what I mean. And um, so you just put in the um, here in the search bar here, search, you put piano Zelensky and it will pop up. And here, still on the Brighton.com video platform, uh, when you punch in Ukraine war footage in the search bar. Oh, look, there's me. Oh, that's very well. Thank you. Uh, you did it well. Somebody um, re-uploaded my video, I just saw, which is a good thing. So please, uh, everybody... Um, download and re-upload my videos all over because one of these days they're going to disappear in the um, in the censorship video platform where I'm at now and there's also this video here Ukraine war crimes by the deplorable preacher where you see some real hardcore executions uh, on um, surrendering soldiers you know like uh, being castrated by a uh, by a uh, AK shot in the in the testicles and um, knee capping and um, the real deal, you know, things you could you'll never see on the uh, censorship platform uh, where where I'm at now. So go and have a look. So it's it's. Um, it's it's you know the we have a binary system in our heads you know and people can't think out of the matrix and uh, which is the uh, the soccer game uh, dilemma the, the, there are not just two parties this guy here well, i'm not going to tell you his name here because it's probably my video gets censored if i do um well, he doesn't really think outside of the matrix you know he's also in the binary system and he's saying the uh putin is good and the um and the ukrainian uh zelensky is bad and uh which is the binary system the 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 uh it's the uh yin yang conception which we have in our heads and we have to loosen up some screws you know and reset our own system you know, it really is like this, it really is. So, um, but the images are interesting. You know, it reminds me of the things I I've, I've saw in my wars in, in Southern Africa. Why do you think Putin has let this picture be published with a black cross on his forehead? Putin. The man who controls the media in Russia. Why did he want to present himself with a black cross on his forehead? Well, because the black cross on his head represents the black cross of the Teutonic Knights, thus giving away to all the initiates in the world is allegiance to the Nazi Templars. It was on purpose, he showed us. Here you can see Kadyrov, the Chechnyan warlord, fighting at the side of Mr. Putin, the Teutonic Putin, and he has an octagon of the Knights Templars, the Nazi Templars, on his cap meaning that this organization is by the same Nazi Templars as Mr. Putin is a Teutonic Knight. And maybe those who say, well, no, the Octagon is Islamic. So we might ask ourselves, is Islam maybe also an invention 
by the Knights Templars, as there was in fact several Knights Templar Arabic orders, like Salahuddin or Saladin, he was part of. So how come there are these Kadyrovsky Chechnyans fighting for the Russians and fighting for the Chechnyan enemy? after the genocide the Ruskies and their Mr. Putin have executed on the Chechnyan people during the two bloody Chechnyan wars that were in fact no wars at all but mere bloody terror campaigns by the Rusky army on mostly unarmed civilians. So here you see the first Chechen war, a uh, hundred thousand Chechnyans killed and the second Chechnyan war was even worse with far many more people murdered and Mr. Putin was responsible for this all. So how is it possible that the Kadyrovsky Chechnyans are fighting for Mr. Putin now? There's something very suspicious in the air, something very fishy and rotten going on. So here he is again, Kadyrov, a pal of Mr. Putin. And again with an octagon symbol here, which is octagonal. And I know about symbols, I can promise you that, and I know these symbols, it is Nazi Templar. And the war he's leading now in Ukraine, it is Nazi Templar stuff and it's against the peoples of this earth, innocent people being slaughtered by these guys here, the Nazi Templars. And there is also a circle in here, you know, in the middle of the, uh, the crescent moon here, which stands for the compass. And here I see a square. So it does say square and compass. And there is the octagon. And the Freemasons, the square and compass, they come out of the octagon of the Knights Templars. And this is why he is pals with Mr. Putin. This guy is an enemy of the Chechnyan people. The Kadyrovsky are typical Lebensborn, where just as these German children Chechnyan children have been kidnapped and abducted to be trained as perfect, obedient, brainwashed soldiers by and for the octagon of the Nazi Templars from the Alps, as you can see here, the Alps, which we can see happening again in the Ukraine where boys are kidnapped to be never seen again and girls are raped and tortured. Yeah, I read it for you. Russian forces kidnapped 2,389 children from Donetsk and Luhansk, US em Embassy says. The US Embassy in Kiev cited Ukraine's foreign ministry as saying 2,389 Ukrainian children have been illegally removed from the Russian-controlled territories of Luhansk and Donetsk, Oblast and taken to Russia. You don't believe it? Well, I believe it. And you know why? Because they're doing this again and again and again, these Nazi Templars. This is the Lebensborn program. It's like in this American film Soldier from 1998. Here, I read you the plot. Here you can see the image. It's with Kurt Russell. Interesting video because it's the reality, as in many movies. Here's the plot. In 1996, so uh, a part of a new military training program, orphaned infants are selected at birth 
and raised as highly disciplined soldiers dedicated to a holy military routine. They are trained to be ruthless, obedient killers without any morale code of conduct. You can see what it is. Code of conduct is a set of rules outlining the norms, rules and responsibility or proper practices of an individual party or an organization. And any deemed physically or mentally unworthy are executed. Survivors of the training program are turned into emotionless, dedicated fighting machines with no exposure to or understanding of the outside world. Well, when I when you read this, when you hear this, I see I see the Kadyrovsky, because also in Chechnya during this Chechnyan wars, um, Russian terror, many children have just vanished and disappeared. They were kidnapped by the Russians, and now you know, like twenty years later or thirty years later. We got this, um, this, these terrible Kadyrovsky uh, machines, you know, like emotionless. Yeah, it says emotionless, dedicated fighting machines. The same with these Wagner boys. You know? They make soldiers, you know. I mean, that's what they do. And this is exactly what's happening today. As many Hollywood movies, it's like a uh, it's like a preview, you know what's going to happen or what what they're going to do with us. Yeah. Well, this is exactly what we are seeing today with those Kadyrovtsi, who are hated by real Muslims and by real Chechnyans as well. So here we this is Kadyrovsky with his octagon here. Yeah? Knights Templars, right? This is the Sun Euroglyph, which I filmed you in, in the Pharaoh show and many other. And here, the circle stands for the compass. So where's the square? Well, here it is. It's a big square here. So it says square and compass with another Sun Euro Hieroglyph in it. And here's the concept of four. One, two, three, four. Uh, it's 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 Masonic. Here in this vid in this uh, picture here, you can see it even better that it is the Sun hieroglyph. As I, as I filmed it in many videos, filming it on buildings horizontally, vertically. Well, I mean, what what is this symbol doing here? Has it has it got anything to do with Islam or something? Look, it's like Adolf, he seems to be saying Heil, you know. Hitler and the Nazis did this with the Lebensborn and the Hitler Youth. For, you know, the, uh, the Hitler Youth in 1933. And I read it for you, how successful was the Hitler Youth at indoctrinating children? Well, we all know this by now, they were very successful. I'll let you read the rest yourself. Yeah, you can see Mr. Hitler and the Hitler Youth. So this is the true face of Mr. Hitler sending children into the war. The boy here must be like 10 years old. This is Mr. Hitler. This is what he did. Another liar like Putin and children disappearing in the Ukraine. Nazis have always been doing this. Wakey, wakey, people. The Brits did the same with the Boy Scouts. I'll read it for you. February 22nd, 1857. The birth in Paddington of Sir Robert Baden Powell, national hero of the siege of Mafeking during the Boer War. His innovative approach to the situation kept morale high and his experiences led to the founding of the Boy Scouts, you know, to make perfect little obedient soldiers. And here, Fleur de Lys of the nobility, you know, all these nobilities, a Swiss cross on his chest and everything. Well, there are the famous child soldiers, or rather infamous child soldiers of Africa. 
the Islamic State did it and they're still doing it. These type of phrases, uh, I can't pronounce it for you because then my, the machine will recognize it and they will take off my video. Uh, the same sort of things the Kadirovtsi guys were being taught, the same as the Hitler Youth. They also had like similar phrases being taught. And um, it's, it's always the same, you know. So now children disappearing in the Ukraine and well, they're going to be taught these kind of phrases you know, for the next wars. The Romans did the same thing taking away little children of the European tribes in order to raise them as legionnaires who then got fed by the beast, so to speak, and making the Swiss god out of them in Rome. Pharaoh has always been doing this, making perfect little soldiers by making them and building these children from start. Like the Swiss pharaoh here is taking away children from their parents to make obedient little Swiss banksters out of them. On the NATO side, we also have an enormous conflict of interest with the Western military industrial complex earning loads of war money. War is business. With all those high tech and very expensive man pad missile launchers by the military industrial complex. Huge cargoes of weapons being sent to the Ukraine, like a present from the West. Ballistical jackets, drones, tanks, airplanes, and other high-tech goodies. Here, I quote for you. Biden says US is answering Zelensky's plea and warns of long and difficult battle. Raytheon and Lockheed Maidonos need that long and difficult battle to rake in trillions of defense dollars. The military industrial complex. War is business. The Ukraine even responds with unthankfulness saying that the West, the NATO and the European community don't help the Ukraine enough. Zelensky even said that the NATO is weak and confused. He says it's weak, you know, it's all bent like. Why? Because our leaders want more war from both sides, from the Russian side, from the NATO side, from the Zelensky side, they want war. Wow, the Ukraine gets all the help in the world and then spits back at the helping hand. And look, the military industrial complex, they even make t-shirts saying, well, this guy, Zelensky said, I need ammunition and not a ride out. So who likes him saying this, that he needs more ammunition? Well, these ones, of course, the military industrial complex. This is Octogon and they want perpetual war. It's going on for 2000 years. The business of war, Octogon, Switzerland where all the money goes. War, good for few, bad for most. Red wine for few, red blood for most. War 
is good business for the military industrial complex. Therefore, saying all over the news all the time, Ukraine needs more weapons. This is Kuleba, the Ukraine foreign minister. The military industrial complex is happy with this guy. Yeah. Ukraine needs more weapons. If you wonder why the taxes are going to raise soon, well, you know why. Like in any business, you know, and it is a business, they come with excellent selling arguments. And the same foreign minister even says on what Ukraine needs, weapons and sanctions, and the rest will be done by the Ukraine. This is a selling argument. You know? Give us the weapons and, we, and we'll do the rest. You know? It's business. This is a selling argument. It's business. The military industrial complex. It's pure business. The man pad goodie for the Ukraine is short for man portable air defense pad standing for portable air defense operated by one man man pad 80 gm means anti-tank guided missile so i quote biggest batch ever delivered us delivers 20,000 80 gm and man pads the military industrial complex is happy the west's man pads versus putin's war planes but it should it should stand here in fact the military industrial complexes man pads so Who's gonna pay for all the military industrial complex high tech presence to the Ukraine? Huh? So, who's gonna pay for all the military industrial complex high tech presence to the Ukraine? Huh? So, these statistics are from an article from last year 2021 and last year they were all already planning the rise of the taxes in england so this is from england britain with about 300 percent you know going up from one uh what was it one billion to two and a half so there's a rise of 250 percent or the rice is actually 150% more. And, um, and the rice was supposed to be coming in March 2022. So this means they knew that the Ukraine war was coming. They planned it. You know, you can check it out yourself. You know, just follow the money and, and you get to all their crimes, you know. The March 2022 plans is a rise of 150% more in taxes in the UK. And I guess the US is the same and the rest of the NATO countries, it's the same. They want to bleed us out, you know, to get the money into the military industrial complex. It was all prepared from both sides from the russian side as i already explained to you in my videos and also from the nato side and the 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 ec european community side because the enemy is on is in both sides it's the enemy within you all understand what this means right it means you're screwed so also here it's better to have a, 
a screw loose in your brain so you can get out of the binary system and understand what's going on instead of paying taxes to the nobility. So the taxes are going to rise again with the government's military industrial complex smiling and getting more money for Pharaoh's offspring while Europeans bleed again. Then the Latin letter Z or Z in American on the Russian tanks, trucks and armoured cars while well, in fact there is no Z written that way in the Russian Cyrillic alphabet. And here it even says here square and compass. The high higher officers or maybe all the officers, they're all part of the octagon and the, uh, the Freemasons of course, they are in military orders and medieval military orders and such, especially generals and colonels and such. So here's the square, you see, and the circle is the compass. You can make a circle with a compass and it even is, it even says here, the concept of three in the form of a pyramid. And this, the square is the concept of four. It has four corners. So it says the concept of four and the concept of three. It says square and compass together with this one here, which I'm going to explain to you what it means. So these people know exactly what they're doing. I mean, wh why else would they put this here and this here? Well, I'm going to tell you. Well, it's half of a Nazi Templar swastika, as I've shown you in this video here. Only, unfortunately, mirrored, but it's the same. It's just coincidental that it is mirrored. I could have just uh, as well have done it from the other side. It doesn't make any difference as people say that the swastika turns right or left. It's uh, nonsense really. And here's the video. From pyramid to Templars cross to swastika on the same channel in Gure. Then where is the other half of the supposedly Z swastika? Well, here it is. If you take the N from NATO and superpose it on the not very Russian Z, you get a Nazi swastika without even needing to turn it. It just nicely fits in. You see, here is the famous or the infamous Z on the Russian armor. And their adversary of these ones here, of the Zorro here, it's these ones here, the N. And by coincidence, because these guys are completely nuts with symbols, that they just can't resist it. You know, there's something evil pushing behind it that needs them to put these symbols there, like a dog pissing on a corner. This is my territory, you know. So if you superpose the Russian N, or let's say we start with the N, and we take uh, with the Z, and we take the N, you superpose it here, like it is, you know, like this, duck, 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 on the Z, where well, you get a swastika, just as I filmed you in that video, only by accident, I took the other way around, you know, I could have just as well, there was 50% chance because it's really the same thing, I could have done it like this here, you know, with this diagonal instead of using this diagonal, which is the same. On the, on the other way, you take the Z, you superpose it here on the N, and you get the Z duck, duck here, and you get a bloody swastika. Eh? And they know it. So this means on both sides, you got Nazis. That's what it means. 
and that means they help each other. You know, they um, they are together. I mean, that's what I've been telling you. It's the same. Zelensky, Putin, they're all Nazis. You know, the NATO, all the politicians, it's all out of the Nazi Templars of the Octogon. Well, here it is. You take the Z and you pull it over the N. The Russians, together with the NATO, or like, say, Putin, because it's not the Russian people, Putin, the Teutonic Knight, with his base in Switzerland, together with NATO and Zelensky, and you get this. You know? He got Putin on the Russian armor, like here, the Z, the Zorro, and he got NATO. You might say this is far-fetched, but I've shown you so many things, you know, it's, it's always the same. They are, these people are led by demons. It's, it's stronger than themselves. They have to do it. They can't do it otherwise, you know, because they've got this allegiance with evil. So they, they must do it. They get their orders from the other side or from evil. It's stronger than them, you know. And they just want to have all the earthly pleasures and power, you know. So they must do it. So the Z and the N are complementary. Putin and the NATO complement each other, like man and woman, the two sides of a coin, or the two wings of the same bird. Birdie, birdie, remember? The Ukraine war wouldn't even be possible without the enemy within on both sides. It, it wouldn't be working. As they are working together, the both sides, towards their combined goal of the Nazi swastika, standing for a worldwide Nazi dictatorship. You remember, Ein Volk, Ein Führer! Ein Reich, huh? one people, one leader, one empire. You remember, huh? Well, this is it. They are complementary. The Z superposed on the N, and you get this. Look, it's all over the internet. You know, they even say things like this here. Well, I'm not going to pronounce it. You know, I don't like swearing anyway, but I, I would get problems with my channel. Look, here's the Z in a square, half of the of the swastika, and here the other guy has, uh, you know, Zelensky. He has a uh, also on a green T-shirt. He has a Templar's cross. We're being fooled, people. We're being fooled by them. Look, it's all over. The Z, you can buy it on Amazon. Well, they only think about making money. You know, you can find it here, you know, in the streets of in, in, in Russia, like here. That's amazing here as well. So, you know, so this... The, you know, to influence the people, you know, to hype them up, like uh, make them fanatic, you know. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wouldn't you like to be one of these, hey? Look at our strong arms and all that. Be Zorro. And they don't even know what it means, hey? It's all over. I hear one from the other side. Humanity, humanity. Oh man, these are the sheeple, you know. It's uh, for the TV warriors, you know. All this, you know, the TV warriors, you know, go do bodybuilding and drive around in a nice pickup and put on some heavy t shirts, both in Russia and in other places, and play the, play the strong man. But they all fear death. Like the Swissies, you know, they wanted to play with me, you know, and put
put three guns on my head. They wanted to play with death, you know, and think how strong they are. But the ones who did that, you know, they fear death. And I will confront them in a real way, give them the real deal, see how they're going to be shaking. Here, you can see Putin together with a guy who's called Dmitry Utkin, who is a leader in the Nazi Wagner group of those mercenaries and private mercenary group private army of the Teutonic Mr. Putin. And here we can see the Wagner Group officer Dmitry Utkin posing for the American Playboy magazine or something. And uh, what do we see? The tattoos here. Here he's got the SS sign. And here some officers sign of the SS what is it, colonel or something, or general maybe. And here is the um, the eagle, the Nazi eagle, which is not an eagle, but a falcon. Only a falcon stays up in the air like this. An eagle doesn't, with a swastika and all on it. So this means we have the Nazis on both sides. Half of them are with the Ruskies, with the Wagner group and their Z symbol. And the other half are in the NATO with its complementary N symbol, complementary to the Z in order to make the swastika. And the other half are with Zelensky, president of the Ukraine, with a Templar cross on his chest where the heart is, which is the same symbol the Nazis had around their neck, calling it the Iron Cross. So this, uh, this is the symbol of the Nazi Templars. And we all know the NATO was founded by Nazi Wehrmacht and SS generals like Nazi General Hans Speidel, Nazi General Adolf Heusinger, Nazi General Reinhard Gehlen, and many others becoming high NATO generals. I read it for you. These NATO generals had unusual backgrounds. They served in the Third Reich. Amid the Cold War, two German generals, well, there were more, <laughs> were among the few NATO commanders with direct experience fighting the Soviets, not to mention the Allies. So they fought the Allies as well, and they became NATO generals. Eh? This is the Third Reich. This is the enemy within. Here you can read about it. Well, there's a lot more. There he is with the uh, Hans Speidel, a, uh, a Nazi general, and he has the same cross as uh, Zelensky, because it's all the same. The Nazis won the war. And there's much more, also politicians and all this. I already mentioned a couple of them, you know. Adolf Heusinger, yeah, with the, uh, the swastika here and the... Uh, uh, the falcon on his breast here, and there are many more. Now here he is again, Adolf Heusinger, well just before you saw him in a Nazi uniform, now you can see him here in a, a NATO uniform. I mean it's almost the same, the word, even the word, NATO Nazi, Nazi NATO. It's almost the same symbol. And I've showed you the origins in my film with these symbols like here. Um, I, I, can make, I can make with these things here, I can make a swastika. I've shown you this. Remember, this, um, I, I just re-uploaded it a couple of days ago. Nazo. It's the Nazo. Nato, Nato, Nazi. It's the same. And then this is just, I'm just showing you too. I mean, this film is not really about that. And um, 
See, NATO uniform with the head of a Nazi on it. Nothing changed, people. It's still the same. The Nazis won the war. And they're on all sides. Well, here you can see him again. He's uh, Heusinger, front left. So here he is, standing together with Adolf here. <laughs> and he became a general in the NATO. Can you believe it? You know, they all got the Zelensky crosses here and the Templar crosses here. Now well, here he is. Oh, nothing changed, you know. That, that's why the N and the Z, it makes a swastika, because it's on both sides. Here you see Heusinger with Robert ne McNamara. Oh, the guy who, uh, who, who bombed the hell out of... Uh, Killing three million Vietnamese all together, you know, a whole bunch of Nazis. Eh? Yeah, Hans. Here he became Hans Speidel. He yeah, he became the the NATO general. Uh, well, it's a shame, everything you know. Wakey, wakey, people. Here's the other NATO N N NATO. General Hans Speidel. Here you can see him in his Nazi uniform. There you go. With the swastika and the uh, the birdie birdie. And uh, probably more pictures. He became a NATO general. I mean, you have to take orders from this guy, you know? Can you, can you imagine? You know, here's Speidel. Together with uh, um, Eri von Manstein. I suppose this is Speidel. Uh, my grandfather was killing these guys, you know, or he was fighting these guys. And he, he died because of these sort of guys in 1942. And then, and then they all became NATO generals, you know, like in the Allied army, so to speak. Yeah. Here's Speidel with. Uh, Erwin Rommel, so I guess this is Speidel, and this is the uh, Rommel, you know, the desert fox as they call them, who got beaten by the SCS, I already explained it to you, and here he's um, Adolf Heusinger, he, he swapped the uniform, and he's, he's standing here in NATO uniforms, <laughs> the same guy, I together with the other one, Heusinger. Yeah, we, we're we're still stuck with the same ones, you know. They just swap uniforms. It's amazing, everything. Everything is a lie. Everything is a lie. Well, here's another charming dude. Here you can see him. It was Colonel Reinhard Gehlen, and together with uh, Alan Dulles and the, um, and the and the CIA, they mounted the Galen organization, you know, spying on Germans. You know that there were still the German people; they were still like ordered around by Nazis. Uh, he became the head of the uh, the German intelligence uh, office, or you know, called the uh, BND, Bundesnachrichtendienst. Yeah, Munich, working for the CIA. I mean, well, we all know what the CIA does, eh? Um, there he is. Oh, he was a a a, a major general, Reinhard Gehlen, Nazi general. Right, it says Nazi general. He was not a colonel. Yeah. Alan Dulles, they're all in it, you know, William Donovan, uh, the uh, the paperclip project. They call it the paperclip project because the files were so big, you know, they had to put paper clips on it. They're real big ones, you know, not the normal ones, the big ones. You know, the ones that can hold a horse. You know. It didn't hold the Nazis back, eh? So here's the Galen organization, and it became the Bundesnachrichtendienst, the Federal Intelligence Service. Oh, what a service, eh? It's more like a service in tennis, you know? Make a, uh, 
giving a big hit like and they are in munich you know and what happened in munich a couple of years later was a uh the palestinians they uh there was the olympic games and some palestinians they murdered a lot of about 10 jaywalkers or more sportsmen and they're all they also in 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 munich both the olympic games were in munich and the federal intelligence service the bundesnachrichtendienst in Pulach. and uh, i mean why didn't they do their work i mean they didn't you know they knew it of course they knew it they were living next door of course they knew it it had to be it had to come like this you know in order to get more money and more you know so fight terrorism or whatever it's always something about it like this they, they call it the org maybe it's more orcs the orcs with a c the org the galen organization and that was well, that was far before the uh, the internet they already called it the org dot org the dot orgs and uh, yeah they should have known it about the um, the Palestinian attack who just, who just climbed over the fence with all their weapons and everything. They knew it, people. These Nazis, they knew it. I mean, it was just a couple of jaywalkers, who cares, you know? That's how, uh, that's how Nazis think, eh? The Templar Nazis, the Nazi Templars, still the same bloody thing. Here's another one. There, there are loads of stories like this. This is the U.S. Army Captain Larry Thorne. They, the American authorities, they they just changed his name. He was even in the uh, the Green Beret and Special Forces, killing people in Vietnam. The guy just loved killing, you know, in Special Forces. He's in the German Special Forces, the the SS. A Nazi. Here he is again, another uniform. The guy just loved killing. So the the U.S. authorities have said, "Well, come on, let's take him." You know, it's all paperclip stuff, right? Um, U.S. Captain uh, Larry Thorne. He had a different name, of course, before when he was wearing this uniform. He had a different name. Do you see the same? He was an officer, the same three things like the uh, the Wagner guy had. Exactly the same with this one here and the other one here. So this is just another example how a Nazi officer, he became a NATO officer. The, uh, the Nazi, the Nazo, the NATO. Uh, the, the NATO is a Nazi organization. You know, all the proofs are there, and, and many, many more. Now, watch this symbol very well, because it's coming back in a minute. It's the symbol of the, the V of the Nazi Templars. Even Churchill was doing this, V for victory. And it's called the Honor Chevron for the Old God. Ehrenwinkel der Alten Kämpfer. So the... Um, the Honor Chevron for the Old Guard was a Nazi party decoration worn by members of the SS. The Silver Chevron, it's a French word, which was worn on the upper sleeve, it's a French word because the nobility, they speak French, right? On the upper sleeve on the right arm was authorized by Adolf Hitler in February 1934. All members of the SS who had joined the Allgemeine SS the NSDAP or any other party organization prior to January 30th, 1933, were entitled to wear the insignia, etc. The rest you can read yourself. So it's, um, it's an important symbol. You see here, they all have it. You know, it doesn't mean corporal, you know, because they're, they're all generals here. Yeah? There's Himmler, Reinhard Heydrich. And the rest of the gangsters they all have it so it means they're part of the the honorary guard and um, so remember this very well because it's coming back in a minute i'm going to show it to you 
in order to prove that on both sides, Russian, Ukrainian, NATO, <clears throat> they're all Nazis, Nazis, and they're just grinding the people in between who are bleeding. So it's called the Old God, Ern Winkel, the Alten Kämpfer. That was from 1923. I think this is Ern's home, isn't it? It must be. It doesn't say. And uh, when in Munich, again in Munich, there was the the uh, the uprising with uh, Adolf Hitler when um, Hermann Göring he got shot in in the stomach. So after World War One, 1918, uh, all the nationalist stuff had started really, you know, and they were the Alten Kämpfer, the old. It means the old. The old fighters. So there it is again, all over the Nazi Templar V, which we can see on the Russian armor, uh, all over now. In the together with the Z, in this uh, Ru uh, Russian Ukrainian war. And as I've been telling you for many years now, the Nazis won the war, and we're still. In the Third Reich, with Templar V's on Russian armor, which you can see here on helicopters and here on armored cars and trucks. And uh, well, there was also a Russian paper clip. They also went to Russia, these Nazis, after the war. You know, Putin spells and all that. that that's where he comes from. You know, it's all Teutonic Knights. Here you see Heinrich Himmler with the V sign of the old fighters, Alte Kämpfer. So this is not a corporal rank symbol here, because this was a the head of the SS. So he was not a corporal, right? like in the American army or, or English army, this is like corporal. American army is the other way around, but it's all Templar symbols. So he was a Obergruppenführer, which means a general. So this doesn't mean corporal. It means Alte Kämpfer, as I just explained to you. And these Octogon Nazi Templars are just crazy with their secret symbols. And they just can't resist this sick, uncontrollable inner drive to use these secret symbols and transmit them amongst each other. Stop fighting each other, dumb people. You must all unite and fight your leaders of this terrible enemy within. You all see the octagon here, and here of course the swastika with the falcon. So next to their regular armies from both sides and both under Nazi Templar control and next to the various armies within these regular armies like the Azov, Wagner, Gadirovci, Ukrainian Foreign Legion and others, there's also the Octogon of the Nazi Templars, who swap uniforms and put on run Russian uniforms to shell and kill Ukrainians, and who after that do it the other way around, swap uniform and put on Ukrainian uniforms to shell and kill the ethno-Russians of the Donbass. It's a two-faced enemy, the enemy within, who kill both parties, both sides of the conflict, so the various peoples will hate each other, which already is the case. Mission accomplished. All the money for the military industrial complex and the octagon enemy within pass through their Swiss Nazi Templar 
banks. It says on a Swiss t-shirt, it's in my DNA with a fingerprint and a Swiss flag. And still many people say that this is not the fault of the ordinary Swiss people. And that's only the elite masters. Here you can see another popular Swiss t-shirt where it says SS for Swiss. And this is the uh, topographic of Switzerland. Here's Italy, here's Germany, here's France, here's Austria. Proud to be Swiss SS in the Templars colors, red and white. So I lived 20 years in Switzerland where the ordinary Swissies hated me and aggressed me with corrupt Swiss cops like Hans Rudi Kuni lying stuffed together only because me I was telling the truth about the Swiss banks. I tell you that those whom you call the ordinary Swiss, they love their Swiss banks of which they're proud of and they'll do anything to protect these Swiss Nazi Templar banks and even terrorize, lie and commit murder for their masters. And here it says on a cop, I'm not perfect, but I'm Swiss. And that's kind of the same thing. Now, if you think this is some sort of particular Swiss humor, well, it is in a sort of, in a way, but it's not just humor. They really believe this, you know, and they, they present it to others under like the, um, the image of a joke, you know, which is not a joke. I mean, what's funny about this, hey? They really believe this, that they're better than the rest of the world, you know, because they never had a real good spanking, you know. Two world wars, they were not in it, never in any war, you know. They never had a good punishment, so they really think they're better than the rest of humanity. And I lived there for 20 years. And I can tell you, they really believe this, that being Swiss is something supernatural and, and you know, the idea, like the Übermensch, you know, like this Nazi idea of, of being the superior race or something, you know. The Swissies are the product of the 13th century Knights Templar, Lebensborn, Hitler Youth, Kadirovci, forced breeding program of small children with which the Knights Templars started right away when founding their base in the Alps on August the 1st, 1291. It is known that the Knights Templars raped little boys in order to subdue them into the order. Just as we see the Freemason initiated political and aristocratic elite doing today, Jeffrey Epstein, Prince Andrew, Jimmy Savile, the rest of these perverts and here in, in Switzerland having children slaves until 19 89, which you can see in this film here, in my channel, Gatsefrat. Or here in this documentary, Switzerland's Stolen Generation on SBS Dateline. And this is very much related to what's happening in the Ukraine, what Putin is doing with the Kadyrovsky Lebensborn. There were little children who would be, who were kidnapped during the Chechnya wars, just as Ukrainian children are disappearing and being kidnapped by the Russians. And the Swiss did this until 1989, as you can see here in the picture. The children had to do forced labor 
and they were kidnapped away from their parents. And the Swiss are still doing this today, actually. Uh, but now they only take them away from their fathers, mostly. And um, it's, it's the same thing. It's a Templar technique. And it is related to the Ukraine wars and the Teutonic to, uh, Putin. By knowing all this, what the Swissies did to little children and still do, and which every Swiss person knows, they dare to make cops like this. Legends are born in Switzerland. How dare you? So this is Baldur von Schirach here, this one. And he was the leader of the Hitler Youth. You know, and he's an, he was an aristocrat with the von in between his names. And with his hand on the, on the boy's ass and almost sitting on the boy here. You know. So if I look at Baldur von Schirach, the head of the Hitler Youth and an aristocrat, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that many little Hitler Youth boys got raped by these Nazi Templar perverts in order to spread the genes of violence into the boys' DNA, making them ready for genocide and company. And when I see this with his hand here and, uh, you know, making little Nazi Templars out of normal children, I, I have to think of uh, Kadirovtsi, the Azov, but, you know, there are a lot of children running around there as well. And all the Ukrainian children disappearing, being kidnapped by the Russians. You know, history is repeating itself all the time. This is the Sea Gate, I can't pronounce this word here, Big Pharma Switzerland and Organized Crime video by the Wolf Clan Media on Brighton. And I found something very interesting in there at 48.48. 48. 48 minutes, 48 seconds. So now here it is at 48.48. 48. Here it says Interpol and the video, the Seagate, Big Pharma, Switzerland, organized crime by uh, the Wolf Clan Media. And wow, look at this. So I guess when I found these here called Interpol in the Wolf Clan media film on the Swiss gangsters, well, I'm sure Interpol won't do anything against the real evil creeping up upon our children from behind, but rather protect the evil of the initiated elite masters and their Swiss base because in their Interpol head office in Lyon, in France, in the fancy glass structure of the building, in a grand architectural way by and for the elite and the powerful of this world, they have a huge square and compass protected by the octagon on top covering it up meaning that their military wing the octagon protects the inner circle of the freemasons with their square and compass so you see here this is octagonal this is the outer circle i'll show you more pictures where you can see it's completely octagonal so this is the outer ring which is protecting the inner circle. This big circle here stands for the compass because with a compass you can draw a circle. And in the cross here, you got like four squares. And here also four squares every time here. Four squares, four squares. And I got it three times here. Four times, three times. It's a concept of three and four. So it says in the middle square and compass which is the inner circle being protected by the outer circle which is the the military wing of the octagon which is the top of the nazi templars you remember in that video i once filmed and i filmed it in a uh, 
some a plastic cake form. Um, I try and find it for you. So it's everywhere. You see, it's everywhere. So I wonder if the Wolf Glen Media have have seen this. So let's get your teeth out, Wolf Glen Media. The Wolf Glen. We need the Wolf Glen against this here. So here it is again. I found it. I uploaded this like three days ago, and I thought, you know, I saw it somewhere. So it has the same things, you know, the circle here. This is a hexagon here, another circle. Here's the octagon, and all around it here is the square. You can't see it, you know, the whole. But I, um, I, I made this ten years ago, and I've got, I've got a better, better video on my channel, Gatsefrats. So it's the same thing as in the Interpol uh, roof, but um, it it has a different story in a different way. So the square is all around it is a square, and the square that's us, the people. Um, and the octagon has to, you know, the military ring which is here in the middle, has to protect the inner ring the uh, the hexagon which stands here this is the hexagon six corners which usually stands for the square and compass because you can nicely fit it in here and uh, and in uh, all in the middle is another circle which stands for the concept of three which is them mm, our masters which is the side of a pyramid which is the old world order here which is absolutely the middle circle and then you get the next circle which is the square and compass which is the, the freemasons the politicians it's divided by another circle and then comes the next circle which is the military circle the octagon then the, we get to another circle to separate it and the octagon military circle like the police and the army they have to protect the concept of three and the freemasons the inner circle the politicians and the one in power from the square which is the people uh, we all all the way down uh, down at the pyramid the hierarchy of the pyramid where the grass is well where the grass used to be you now it's all sand in the desert eh? so i uploaded this april the 11th it's just three days ago or four days ago on the same channel and here's the title and all the way down on the earth where it's all happening, right? There's another octagon representing the military Interpol, who are part of the Nazi Templar octagon. So here you see the roof again, and here's another octagon. This means to say that on the ground, they have the very visible octagon saying Interpol, meaning that Interpol is part of the octagon. And the colors are white for the Per Het, White House, New World Order, Horizontal Rule, and blue for the war, or the uniforms of the Blue Gang all together with the tools of the pharaonic goddess Ma'at in it, her sword and the pair of scales. Here you see the sword, the pair of scales here. Here's blue for the war crown. It's all white around it for the new world order, the, the White House, the bear head. Here you can see Obama here walking. And all around it, it's also octagonal, you see. It's so important for them. It's all octagon. Interpol is octagon. That's what it says. Here it says Interpol. Uh, I don't know what this means. You know, PC, police corps or something. And for the ancient Egyptians, Ma'at means the order of things. The order of the universe. But also the Freemason order out of chaos, Ordo ab Kao. Here it says, Ma'at, order and justice. So later on in history, she became the sword 
she became the Lady Justice with the sword and the pair of scales, you know, the balance, the pair of scales. So the um, Egyptian Ma'at, you see here you see the sun, Amun-Ra, behind it. The Egyptian Ma'at became the Greek goddess Themis, or Themis, like the river, the Thames, it's the same thing. And here is the, the, the balance, what they talk about. So nowadays, she is a Lady Justice with a sword and here the uh, the pair of scales and she is blindfolded uh, today as well lady justice is blindfolded and it is really blind justice what we see in the western world it's nothing to do with real justice it's blind justice for the elite here she is tamis or lady justice and the river now, blind justice, blind pharaonic justice. You know, they don't even see us. And um, in French, the river Thames, it's called La Tamise, like Thames, Tamise. Same origin. So here you can see the sword of Thames, the goddess. And here's the pair of scales of Ma'at and also Thames. In the pharaonic colors blue and white maybe this used to be red or it should be red and it's absolutely complete maybe like walking over it it you know it gave another color or so the whole thing is by our masters who are not from europe it's all pharaonic um, they moved over to Greece and then to Rome. It's all the same power, like the Lady Justice. It's uh, from Rome, which we have today, blindfolded, blind, blind justice, which is terror. It's absolute terror, and um, that means blindfolded, blind justice. They don't think, you know. They don't have to think, you know. It's all, all justice matters um are all in the advantage of the master so that's why she can be blindfolded you see we always use lose the people is always the loser in the whole thing you know so we're being ruled by the masters which is in the colors it's in the symbols it's in the octagon it's all over pharaohs are ruling over us so over the earthly interpol octagon which you can see here floats the square and compass in the roof yeah as the invisible powers seeing to it and over that all is the invisible octagon of the nazi templars where it all derived from both freemasons and interpol so this is from the top maybe by a satellite or a drone so on the top over that all is the roof which is also octagonal and then the whole ground is in a circle for the compass with again again a little square here there's a little square here and a circle here it says square and compass well all over here you can see the um well the, the little squares in it here and there are the uh, the big octagon which we uh just saw in in glass as well and here's another octagon the whole thing in a circle they just can't get enough of it eh? so i showed one more time what i've been explaining to you so on the ground there's the octagon which we can see a military order with guns and all sort of goodies and drones and in another octagon here you got three st stairs here because the hierarchy, you know, where it's going up, that's them, you know, the concept of three. It must be that, must be three, therefore. And so this is the visible octagon with octagon badges and all that. And over that, you got the square and compass, which I explained to you. And over that, which I've just shown you, in the roof, there's another octagon. And the, uh, in glass as well, on the roof. It is the roof. And that is the original octagon, the invisible octagon of the Nazi Templars and their base Switzerland, 
who rule over the Freemasons, the Square and Compass, and these Freemasons, they rule, of course, over the military order, the Octagon. So they are, in fact, two Octagons. You know, but it is it is one and the same, you know, but in their configuration here, um, you know, they, they present it like this, you know. It's also like a spider's web, you know, you get a whole spider's web here on the ground. Eh? And in the sky here, it also has the colors blue and white, just as down there on the on the floor. You know, it's like projecting what's in the sky on the floor. And it looks like a whole, uh, the crosshairs of a scope where they're aiming at us, of course. That's why the color blue, which is also down here at the floor. They are aiming at us with these crosshairs. That's what it means. You know. Through the white, the New World's Order, the White House, and blue for the war. And it's not only in the sky, it's also down here. The crosshairs aiming at us, the pharaonic crosshairs. And Interpol is, of course, an organization by and for the elite to control the slaves. Here it says Interpol Global Financial Crime Task Force. And here the logo of Interpol. Well, I've never, ever seen them do something against Switzerland their Swiss banks or their Swiss pharmaceutical companies never ever and I dropped three complaints at the French court against Switzerland and their banks and everything I never heard anything anymore of it and I was in the same country where this Interpol is it's all a joke Interpol protects of course the mafia Interpol protects the nobility and its various rapists like Prince Andrew and others. Interpol protects the corrupt politicians and Interpol will always protect the motherland of the Octogon, Switzerland, with its powerful Nazi Templar banks and its highly criminal Swiss pharmaceutical companies. And here you can see Interpol organizing an international forum called Technology Against Crime, with a lot of circles in the logo representing the compass, the square in the letter T, a pyramid in the A, and again the colors blue and white, blue for the war and white for the New World Order Perhet White House. So here you can see all the circles standing for the compass. The square is here. And here's a pyramid with a Templar V as well. The upside down, which we also see. And here are the ones who are organizing it. Technology against crime. They use the minor slaves' crimes as a pretext for total control and its 666 chip under the banner of technology against crime. Lyon, where the Interpol is, means lion, the symbol of the nobility, and Lyon is the old capital of France under the Roman Empire. So here you can see the coat of arms of uh, Lyon. There are three times for the concept of three, Fleur de Lys, and blue for the war. And uh, here are the other two pharaonic crowns, red and white. And here's the lion. There never were any lions in Europe. So under the Roman occupation um they called it a look dunum um lyon and that was the uh, the capital of the goal the uh, the go the celts the celts in in france they were called the goal 
and the capital, the Roman capital of France was uh, Lyon. So it's, um, it has a lot of history and um, it's completely in the middle of France. So um, the Interpol, they didn't search the place where to put, where to put themselves uh, by accident. You know. They are everywhere. Like I filmed this here on a house next door in the village I had been staying this winter. I got at first attracted by the owl representing the Roman goddess Minerva, the goddess of wisdom usually depicted with the owl. Therefore, another symbol the Freemasons use. When I looked further, like here, it said Venus. It says Venus. Another Roman goddess and a representation of the Egyptian Isis. Therefore, there's the bird for her son Horus, the falcon, depicted twice in order to show the bird with one eye missing, as Horus had lost one eye. Then there's a long horizontal line for the horizontal rule of the New World Order with a little vertical arrow on this timeline representing the old feudal vertical rule back in time. And at the end is the sea, probably standing for the Roman Sea, meaning a hundred years for this timeline. Underneath the timeline, it says I and B, the letters I and B, for the three Masonic pillars Yashin and Boaz, and in Latin the J was written as an I. In the middle of the symbolism is the octagon, standing for 1743 on the timeline. Because the sign was made in 1843 at the end of the timeline. So here it says 1843, which is here at this, in this period. C is 100 years until here. So we get here in 1743. So what happened in 1743? After this, we get another 100 years in, seven, in 1643. So what happened here? I'm going to explain that to you. Here's I and B for Yashin and Boaz. Here's the octagon, what it's all about. It says Venus. And here it says the bird. It shows the falcon here with the eye missing. And here there's the eye. So why is that? Why does it have the eye here and not the eye here? Well, because Horus, he had one eye missing. He lost it in a battle with Set, or Set on, Satan. So, in a little village, you know, they're everywhere. You find things like this. You don't even have to go to big towns like Lyon, and where the Interpol is, and, and Paris. No, it's even in little villages, they're everywhere. So here is 1743 in France. It says in French here, but that doesn't matter really. So let's have a look what happened in 1743. So what happened in Alsace, where the clay table is at in 1743, where the octagon is at? Well, on September the 13th, there was the Treaty of Worms, when Alsace was given back to France. Here it says, Le 3 septembre, or it says, 13 of September, the Treaty of Worms between Austria, Great Britain, Saxony, Hanover, and Le, uh, the, the Piedmont. Um, they, um, well, they gave back um, Alsace, Lo Lorraine, and uh, Les Trois Évêchés to France. 
So Alsace went back to France and this clay table stands in Alsace and it's exactly where the octagon is in 1743. So here you can see the Treaty of Worms in 1743 and it was signed on September the 13th, 1743. So this in Alsace, uh, it's a very important date and it's all related to the octagon. And that's why this date says exactly at the clay table where the octagon is. Because 100 years before that, during the 30 year war, the Swiss mercenaries of octagon, they murdered the entire population of uh, not yet Alsace, but uh, of the uh, the Upper Rhine and the Lower Rhine, as it's called in French. 95% uh, of the population were murdered by the Octogon. And um, I fear the people of the clay table, they know it, they are initiated, you know. On top of that, the Treaty of Worms happened on a Friday the 13th in 1743, which you can see here. Friday, September the 13th, 1743. And Friday the 13th is very much related to the octagon of the Nazi Templars, who were rounded up on that date by the French king. I read it for you here. On Friday, October 13th, 1307, the Templar Grandmaster Jacques de Molay was arrested. King Philip IV of France ended the Knights Templars on Friday the 13th. And ever since, Friday the 13th has been known as a bad luck day. Here's the Knights Templar cross. Therefore, here, the octagon for Friday the 13th of September 1743 on the timeline. So here the octagon it stands for 1743 because this C 100 years from here to here the C stands for 1843 the end of the timeline. So this is Friday the 13th and Friday the 13th is octagon. So from 1843, where the sea for 100 years is, to the octagon is 100 years on the timeline. Then back 1643, from the octagon to the downward arrow, arriving in the middle of the 30 year war, from 1618 to 1648, when Swiss mercenaries butchered. 95% of the original population of the non Alsatian Alsace. So from here to here, it's another 100 years. So from 17, Friday the 13th, 1743 to here, we arrive in the middle of the 30 year war, which is also very important for this region. So we arrive in 1643. So it's two times 100 from 1843 minus 200 you get 1643 and i'll tell you what happened then and exactly in 1643 the french marshal viscount de turenne finally arrived in alsace but it was too late as everybody had already been murdered by the swiss mercenaries so here you can see the Viscount of Turin. There he is. And I'll show you the, t the timeline here. Here's the coat of arms. It's quite interesting. Of course, there are the three dots here, which you also just saw on a Russian tank. You know, the concept of three, like this, or maybe the other way around. A lot of fleur de lis. How many are there? There are eight castle of course the crown uh, to and and um, so marshal of france here he was the uh, the marshal of france and here it says 
he began, Turenne began campaigning in June 1644, crossing the river Rhine at Breisach. So I, I am at the uh, river Rhine here. And uh, so 1643, he was um, here where, um, in, in Alsace at this place where the, the, the clay table is. And he slept in the village, uh, which I already showed you in a video, um, where, the, um, where the Pope Leon, where he was born, and he was also the Pope Leon. He was the, um, he was the son of a, uh, of a duke. So if you look at the timeline again, it, it really matches perfectly, you know, 1643. And then 100 years later, you get to the octagon in 1743, Friday the th 13th, and then at the end, 1843. It, it matches completely with the timeline on that uh, clay table. It's amazing. So there is a Turenne. There's a lot of other aristocrats. Uh, there he is, Turenne the Viscount of Turin. And in fact, right next to the very interesting clay table is La Butte de Turin, the hill of Turin, which I filmed at the end of this video here about Régine's return to the source of life. And Régine and family live 100 meters from the fascinating clay table with the octagon timeline. So here you can see La Butte de Turenne. There's even a shield here somewhere on this side here, who was here in 1643. And he slept in the village of uh, Egisheim, where I filmed the, uh, the Pope Lyon, which I'm going to show in a video after. And here's the title, The Source of Souls, Well of Life, Place of the Book of Life, on my channel, Gure. So about the near-death experience of Regine in Alsace. And here, La Butte de Turenne, the Viscount of Turenne of 1643, the beginning of the timeline. I guess the Octogon Interpol of the Lions town are not going to investigate the crimes around the octagon timetable because it's all part of the same pharaonic gang with its crosshairs aimed at humanity i'll turn the crosshairs back on you swissy and your neutral crime syndicate hey eh, swissy i'll explain you in this video how the Swiss are behind the Ukraine war. As everything always leads back to the base of all evil in the Alps of Pharaoh's elite always. And here it says House of Switzerland Davos WEF World Economic Forum, it says, with the only square flag in the world in the Templars' colors, House of Switzerland, Davos 2020. Why does it say House of Switzerland? What house? Where is the house? Well, it's Pharaoh's aristocratic house like the Perhet White House of Pharaoh or the Per Tasser Red House of Pharaoh as Switzerland is Pharaoh's world base the Swiss beast home of the devil and the whore of Babylon they even say it themselves the House of Switzerland, the Per CH, Per 
Confederatio Helvetica. Here it even says, Welcome to your house of Switzerland. To whom does your refer to? Well, to all these worldwide descendants of Pharaoh, of all races and all nations, who all traded with the whore of Babylon, because it's their house of Switzerland. I can tell you for sure that this your does not refer to any simple Europeans or any other normal earthlings, because the moment you get too near to your house, or rather their house, you'll get taken apart, arrested, fined, and thrown in prison. By the way, this lady here happens to be Ukrainian, and she says the right thing. Gangster party in Davos. So here you can all see the Swiss octagon guys with their assault rifles here, being afraid of a naked European. Look at the symbol here. In the middle is a circle for the compass. There are four arrows around it for the concept of four, which happens to be the square. So it says this, the, the uh, concept of three and four, because the circle is a concept of three. So it says square and compass. And this thing also is a octagon, because there are eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it says octagon, square, and compass by the gangster party in Davos with the Swiss octagon guys defending the Swiss beast. The Swiss octagon here will make sure that you, normal earthling, can't attend their gangster party. Here you can see Russian President Putin together with Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum in Davos discussing the reset on humanity. And the Ukraine war has been decided at the WEF World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland by the global elite and its various political state gangsters. Only the date hadn't been fixed yet, for which an enormous scandal had them hurry into the Ukraine war. So in this picture you can see Putin here in the Kremlin talking with Klaus Schwab in Davos, Switzerland, and this might have been very well the moment on which Klaus Schwab said, okay, Vladi, you can go on with your Ukraine war. Go ahead. You got a green light. But first, something else, which is, of course, also related to Switzerland and the Swiss. And for which you should see this video here, made by Chris Hampton and Wolf Clan Media, entitled Berg Wargate, Big Pharma, Switzerland and Organi Organized Crime 2022. For the reasons of censorship, I had to replace the C word in the title with Berg War Gate, as the C word risks my video being taken off, as only the big media corporations are allowed to pronounce the word without risking further censorship consequences. So, 
here is the title here i'm not going to pronounce that you, i'll let you read this yourself full documentary um, i'll let you read it yourself just punch pause here and this is on the website here are their websites so you you have to watch it here the video on this thing here rich planet tv apparently but you can watch it at a some other uh places as well but best of course watch it here this is the original so the guys would be happy if you watch it there yeah wolf clan medium so here it is on rich planet tv show number 296 and it's one hour so that's part one and there's also the part two it's altogether two hours by the u.s filmmaker chris hampton so go and watch it i just saw you can also see the video uh, here's the title on brighton by wolf clan media but i think it's best to have a look at rich planet because it's their site apparently and uh, they would be happy if you watch it there i suppose it says in the film that the two biggest pharmaceutical and chemical companies in the world are both by this tiny country in the alps their names are roche and novatis and roche is the biggest where i always thought that novatis was the biggest which i explain in this 2020 film here about the various criminal activities of novatis and novatis having a virus laboratory in china in the area of the 2019 virus outbreak so here's the title and it's on my channel homeland security you see here they have in china these ones here novartis they have a a virus laboratory exactly the same place where the outbreak in 2019 took place so it explains in the wolf clan media film that there is a huge conflict of interest through which the swiss roche company made themselves not just billions but trillions of dollars as the pcr wu flu testing machines belong to the swiss roche company with the whole of humanity being forced to make the wu flu pcr tests legalized by all those gangster politicians coming together also in the same country of switzerland who are all working for some multinational company from switzerland and its various lobbies meaning that the swiss roche company had the pcr virus testing machine ready before 2019 wu flu so it just needed a worldwide bug to make some easy bucks and trillions of dollars fraud profit so go watch that film chris is a good guy who also wants a better world and i was happy to finally find someone like chris hampton who has also realized 
that there's something rotten in the state of Switzerland. I'm quite sure that all the Russian rumors about those bio labs in the Ukraine are just fairy tales made by those whom you can see here who don't want you to think about Switzerland as the center of all crimes against humanity. And it's here where I wanted to explain you the Swiss connection to the Ukraine war, as in Ukraine war made in Switzerland. Our masters just flipped the switch from one day to the other. From one day you didn't hear anything anymore about the thing to the left starting with the sea and all of a sudden all talks were about the war and the whole Ukraine war is a distraction of something very important that happened only four days before the beginning of Putin's Prussian war on the Ukraine starting on February 24th 2022. So just for the record I show you here one more time the 2022 Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th 2022. So I'm going to show you what happened on February 20th and what triggered the Ukraine war, the reason of the Ukraine war, which is made in Switzerland. So four days earlier on February 20th, 2022, a huge financial scandal related to the Putin's pals and the Swiss banks erupted by the name of Swiss Secret in French, meaning Swiss Secrets, which is the largest ever leak from a major Swiss bank, involving more than $100 billion from over 30,000 clients of the Swiss bank by the name of Credit Suisse, and therefore the name of the scandal called Swiss Secret or Swiss Secrets. So here you can read about it, Swiss Secrets. Uh, on February 20th, 2022, the Süddeutsche Zeitung reported that over a year ago it had received secret data through a secure digital mailbox on more than 30,000 Credit Suisse bank customers, etc. And it goes, um, it's a leak, details of more than 100 billion uh, dollars. So February 20, 2022. So this is the uh, the name of the bank here, Credit Suisse. That's why the name Swiss Secrets or Swiss Secret, same thing. Swiss is the name for Switzerland in uh, French, like uh, the Sisters of Isis. Remember, Les Sœurs, uh, Suis, Sœur Isis, the Sisters of Isis, and. Um, so this is only four days before the war. And I've been telling you all the time since more than 11 years now on YouTube that every war gets organized and decided out of Switzerland. Every single major war, even the small ones, it gets always decided in Switzerland. So here we can see another perfect example. So I made videos about it, like the uh, nobility world wars and the Swiss beast, home of the devil, 
in which I give all the proofs that Switzerland, you know, the, the, the beast of the Alps, they all, and every war gets decided there. And now we can see it so clearly with Putin and the World Economic Forum and, and Klaus Schwab and, and Zelensky, they're, they're all there. And it always comes out of Switzerland, people, believe me. Because Switzerland was founded by the Knights Templars. And you see the dates here, February 20th, 2021. Only four days before they decided to, uh, to cover it all up with a major war. And actually, on the very day, the Germans and their Süddeutsche Zeitung newspaper and the OCCRP, Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, were supposed to have a live broadcast about it on the internet on February 24th, 2020 at 1800 hours Central European time. Then the Ukraine war started and nobody talked about the biggest Swiss banking scandal ever. No more. And here you can see it here. On February 24th, 1800 hours Central European time, they were going to talk about Credit Suisse here and the Swiss secrets. And this, dear people, is the reason of the Ukraine war and the exact day and time it started to cover this up. And as a matter of fact, nobody ever talked about it anymore ever since. On the list are a lot of dictators, aristocrats, drug lords, mafia bosses, and a lot of Putin pals, like the Belarusian Aliaksa Alexin, a close associate of the Belarusian dictator Lukashenko. Another Putin pal is the Syrian Abdul Halim Kadam, or the Venezuelan Luis Carlos de Leon, an aristocrat, and the Venezuelan Nervis Villalobos. So here, at the uh, the Swiss Secrets uh, website, and again February twentieth, four days before the Ukrainian war. So here it says notable people named. So Abdelaziz Bouteflika, another dictator, and as uh, Putin, uh, I mean he's full in the Middle East, you know, in Syria and all that. It's not the Russian people, really. And King Abdullah of Jordan, aristocrats, and the Queen Rania. Look, does she look Arabic? I don't know. Um, oh, here he is, Aliaksei Alexin, a Belarusian businessman who's closely associated with Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. In summer 2021, the European Union, USA, Canada, and Switzerland imposed sanctions on Alexin as a wallet of Lukashenko. So th that's where the money goes from um, the, uh, the Belarusian people, who are also a victim of it all. So they would lose all their money, you know, if this would have come out. So um, it, it needed a little war, yeah, in, um, in the Ukraine which will be over soon, I think. You know, it's not gonna be a third world war. It's just a distraction. Uh, and here's the other one, Alexander Lukashenko, the, um, the dictator. Uh, it's, it's all, they're all, in, they're all Freemasons, Knights Templars, and uh, you know, you name it. Yeah, Hashim Yavan Bakht, they're all they're all pals of Putin and Lukashenko. They all they all know each other, you know. And here, Haji Saifullah Khan Bangash. Um, ah, he was the minister of uh, finance. Uh, so yeah, he, he's there where the money is, you know. So 
this is how the how he got hold of the uh, the money of the people oh yeah this is the house of bourbon actually i think it's bourbon uh, the two sicilies and um he's a pretender to the french throne um you know it's the uh, nobility i mean and, and and look at the templars cross around his neck the white templars cross with the crown over it it's all aristocracy dictators um Anals El Fiki, Egyptian politician, Ivan Guta, Ukrainian. <clears throat> he had moved over 200 million into shell companies, etc., etc. Ukrainian agricultural baron. Oh, there he is, Abdul Halim Kadam. He was a Syrian politician, the vice president of Syria. High Commissioner to Lebanon. Oh, they know how to know how to get those titles, eh? And uh, he was a loyalist of uh, Assad. And um, they're all pals of Putin. Putin was in Syria. I mean, you just have to look at the uh, the Wagner Group. Where in what countries have they been uh, fighting or terrorizing the people, rather, who are fighting for their justice? You know, in in certain countries and don't want their money being stolen so then the um they send in the wagner group and all these countries you know <coughs> they're all pals of mr putin of course zahid ali akbar khan um, engineer research laboratories oh, well, a lieutenant general vakar ahmed khan in the senate all these people they all are mcdonald's pakistan a, a businessman a sultan another aristocrat yeah sultan ali lakhani they are they're all on the list and many many others there are thirty thousand people on the list can you imagine that this this list is a bomb you know and they didn't want further talks about it Luis Carlos de Leon you know de Leon it means he's an aristocrat uh, former prime minister of the Ukraine Lazarenko so he was probably under um, yeah this guy was under um, uh, the the other dictator like in the Ukraine the one um, who was the president at the time of the uh, the Euro Maidan uh, Ronald Lee Fuk, Fuk Shu, um, a chairman of the stock exchange, you know, that they all know where the money is. Well, Marcos, Fer well, he's very corrupt, a dictator, a, a kleptocrat, that means he's stealing, you know. Uh, his wife, the same, they're all very corrupt, known for this. Hisham Talat Mustafa, um, uh, the parliament of, uh, so uh, he took 800 million and it's all Credit Suisse. So again, that's why they call it the uh, Swiss secrets. Gamal Aldin Mohammed Hosni El Sayyad Mubarak. Well, that's another aristocratic name. It says World Economic Forum behind the picture. You can see that. Um, Said Kair, oh, the intelligence, you know, they, they all go for the key positions so they can um, keep the people in, in, in hostage. Rana Mubashir, a, uh, a journalist. Khaled Nezar, a general. And um, Oh, he was his father was an officer in the French army. And here Akhtar Abdur Rahman, another general. They're all and the uh, he's from the ISI, the um uh, the secret intelligence of um, uh, um Pakistan. Billy Rautenbach. Ah, we get to the South Africans here. Um, this is, uh, well, we don't say Zimbabwe, we say Rhodesia. 
it's Zimbabwe is not a good name. And it's not the real name. Kosim Roba, Tajikistan, well, I mean, Radulovic, a Serbian drug lord. They're all, you know, the, the Swissies, they like drug lords, you know, give them a lot of money. And the Swiss are proud of it, you know, of their banks, you know. It's about the only thing they have, wealth and banks, you know. For the rest, it's empty, you know, it's just like a, a, a spiritual, mental hole, you know, there's nothing there. It's empty. It's, uh, it's only for the rich and it's only about money. For the rest, it's, uh, it's a boring, empty, not free place. Uh, so what was he? Hussam Salem, a, a businessman from uh, uh, Egypt. And of course, the, the, the list is far much longer than this here. It's uh, 30,000 people. And I guess 30,000 people, they haven't even been through it all. You know, it's so much. Armen Sarkisian, you all see the name, the syllable Sar in his name, meaning the king or pharaoh, like in a sarcophagus or Caesar, the Tsar. So this is another aristocrat. He was the prime minister of Armenia. They all go for all these pharaohs. They all are on the, on the key positions. And then they go stealing from the people. You know? I mean, that's what the aristocracy has always been doing. Eduard Seidel, a German businessman, the biggest bribe scandal in German history. Here we got Alvaro Sabrino, uh, an Angolan uh, banker. So he's got a Portuguese name because um, Angola uh, was a, um, a Portuguese um, colony. And um, yeah, I was sent there in the war when the when the Portuguese uh, withdrew their from their colonies in 1966. Then the Russians came, and uh, it was during the Cold War. So South Africa said, "Well, we don't want those Russians uh, right next to us because they promised the Angolan people to come um, with agricultural like help and tractors and all that." and um, agricultural machines but they came with uh, with uh, tanks and helicopters and so a 20, 23 year old a 23 year war started off from 1966 to 1989 that was the end of the uh, the soviet era in 1989 then the russians they withdrew and um, which is called the border wars and um well, he he laundered 5.7 billion you know here yeah. then we got a james soon another from the people's first party in taiwan from the taiwan frigate scandal with france omar suleiman a general intelligence officer you know god knows how many people he tortured uh, the vice president of Egypt, and he was uh, in the um, intelligence, just like Mr. Putin himself. Eh? And um, <clears throat> Nadesta Toka Tokayeva, first lady of Kazakhstan. That's it's a funny country anyway. Kazakhstan. Remember how the Russians were there just recently? You know, like in uh, what was it, January? Uh, Vazif Talibov, um, uh, Azerbaijan, another authoritarian ruler of the Nakhichivian Autonomous Republic. And here's, I, I never heard of this. Eh? So it's some sort of a, uh, next to uh, Armenia, a um, Islamic uh, Republic, who are not really very Islamic. <laughs> So Antonio Velarda is from the Andrangheta. Remember how I made this video about it, how they have the same uh, rituals, uh, satanic blood rituals like the Navy Seals and the Knights Templars and the Freemasons. Uh, Calabria, there's the car in it, you know, meaning the soul when you're still alive, like in America and Canada. Uh, all these, um, they're all pharaonic names, 
the, the, the origins, yeah. And here, Nervis Villa Lobos. He funneled almost 25 million and uh, 11 and a half million euros through Credit Suisse, uh, through Andorra. That's a principality in the Pyrenees, in between the mountains, in between France and Spain, where you can buy cheap stuff because they don't have any, um, no taxes being paid. Well, here you got uh, Hugo Chavez. He's also on the list. You know, they all got nice smiles and then they, uh, they steal everything of you. And Bruno Wang, a businessman and a philanthropist. 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 Okay, difficult word. And, um, uh, you know, they, they earn a lot of money and then they, they just give like 0.01%. Uh, they give it away. So everybody thinks, oh, he's harmless and what a nice person, you know. They, they always do this. So they, they, they sort of bribe us with it, you know. And, well, here are the rest. And here are some other Swiss leagues here from 2015. You got the Paradise Papers from 2017, the Pandora Papers. It's it's all it's all related to Switzerland, eh? This this is even that long ago. I mean, have you heard about it? I haven't. They just you know it's all hidden under the Panama Papers. Well, we heard about that one, and now we got you know, banking in Switzerland. So, people, this is the base of all evil. You know, I've been telling you this. You know, you, and they don't. They just want to hide it and rub it under the carpet. So it needed a lot of a, a little war in the Ukraine, which is going to end soon. Mark my words. It's it's not going to be a, a world war or something. It's just um, uh, they want a new system, as I told you in my previous videos. They want to mix everything up, and uh, it's the agenda, and then. Uh, um give everyone the um, um the bug war poison of pharaoh the list of criminals <clears throat> dictators oligarchs aristocrats and polytricksters of the swiss se secrets scandal also corresponds with the list of countries where putin's private Wagner oligarch army has been active in order to protect dictators and drug dealers, aristocrats and the rest. So this is, in fact, it says here, join Wagner, join PMC, private military company Wagner to protect the peace and tranquility of some civilians from bandits and terrorists. Well, this is inverse speech of course it's a lie it's exactly the other way around you know they always lie all these politicians it's it's a um it's a politician army you know of the oligarchs you know so this is a complete lie in fact the wagner group it attacks it attacks the civilians and it protects bandits oligarchs and terrorists People from the same countries the Wagner Group were active in can be found on the Swiss, Swiss secrets list, as it's the aim of Pharaoh's nobility to parasite on humanity and steal from entire nations and peoples with the help of Switzerland, which is Ali Baba's cave of these pharaonic robber barons look i almost made this film almost 10 years ago in 2014 ukraine crisis rich russians move their money to switzerland for fear of sanctions many wealthy russians now move their money to switzerland being a neutral country now it's party time for the Swiss private banking industry, based on information collected from Swiss top banksters, um, bankers, sorry. Um, so here you can see this, it's, um, it's from May 10th, 2014, 
on my channel Hatsafrat. Here's the title. Octogon orders and Putin obeys. This is how it is. So, and as Putin himself in 2014 had already 2 billion frauded dollars in the Swiss banks, I suppose the Prussian Putin is also on the list somewhere and probably under another name. I already showed it here in my latest film, The Black Prince of Prussia, here on the same channel, Gyuri, about uh, Putin already 10 years ago. He was having two billion dollars uh, uh, in Switzerland. Yeah, and this is apart from the uh, Sw Swiss secrets scandal. This is being written today how Swiss markets help pay for Russia's war in the Ukraine. And commodity markets are in the spotlight as Russia keeps selling its oil and gas through special deal specialized dealers in Switzerland. The business brings in billions of dollars that could be used to fight the war in the Ukraine. So commodities are in fact are products that hasn't been that haven't been um, harvested yet, like oil and gas, it's still in the ground, or like wheat in the Ukraine, which is going to be very expensive because um, the people in Ukraine uh, and maybe in Russia as well, they can't sow the wheat now, so there won't be any harvest. So the wheat which isn't there yet that has to be like half should be harvested like uh, in october this year this is called a commodity on the on the stock exchange you know so there's a lot of um, speculations going on with commodities and commodities can bring down the entire stock exchange and bring another financial crisis which might be very well be the case because of the um the oil gas and wheat commodities uh, which are going to be very unstable now so here you can read it once more revealed credit swiss league unmasks criminals fraudsters and corrupt politician swiss secrets so the Swiss cross is like turned around and it opened the uh, the lock here, Switzerland. It's a mountain full of money. So therefore, because of the Swiss secret scandal, Vladi the liar knew that he was going to lose everything he had robbed from the Russian people and put on Swiss bank accounts in the motherland of the financial elite so it needed a distraction in order to suffocate this huge financial bank affair so four days later putin started this strategically senseless ukraine war in order to rub this latest swiss banking scandal under the carpet and for some other reasons I already mentioned to you. Thank you Switzerland for making this war possible. The art of distraction and mission accomplished and the whole world only talking about the Ukraine war distraction with the world media liars leading the general public opinion to follow this diversion and diversionary war. So the global financial elite and oligarchs like Putin and his pals have all the time to transfer their accumulated wealth from the Swiss banks from their Swiss caves and Swiss safes to a safer place. Thus, nobody talking about the Swiss secrets scandal anymore. Swissy, 
you've got a lot of blood on your hands again of innocent European children getting butchered because of you, Swissy, with anybody who dares to talk about it goes to jail, gets terrorized and tortured as you did to me and my family, Swissy. For Pharaoh's world elite, their various dictators, oligarchs and their gangster bays in the Alps, the death of thousands of Ukrainians and hundreds of slaughtered Ukrainian children is just a mere collateral damage and a small price to pay for the safety of their wealth and treasures of this murderous gang ruling over humanity. The Swiss Swiss Secrets Credit Swiss Bank used to have another name before 1997, which was Schweizerische Kreditanstalt, with a logo reminding of a Nazi swastika. So here you see their logo, which they had before and during the Second World War, you see. It says Schweizerische Kreditanstalt. And they had another big scandal in the 1990s about the Jay Walker um, bank accounts, which they, uh, they wanted to keep. And they had to pay out uh, one or two billion, I think one billion. So, and after that, I think it was in the same year, 1997, uh, they changed this uh, swastika sort of logo uh, towards the new, their, their new logo. You know, they're real smart, they're always into hiding the Swissies, right? like the hidden bank, uh, the hidden hand of the Freemasons. You know, so Schweizerische Kreditanstalt. So you see this here, they got both names here in German, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt. Here they got their swastika logo with a lot of squares in it, you know, for the square and compass. And the French name has always been Credit Suisse, you know, the Suisse secrets. And this is from 1990 and they changed the name and the logo until to the, the Swiss, the French name. Uh, Credit Suisse um, in 1997 and this is from 1990 and I think the scandal with the Jay Walker uh, bank accounts from the out of the Nazi era with all these people murdered by the Nazis and the Swiss didn't want to give it back I think it was in the same year as from uh, 1997 or around there and then they completely changed the uh, the logo of course, the Nazis and Mr. Hitler, they adored the logo, of course, you know, and also the Freemasons because it got a lot of squares in it. The compass should be here as well somewhere, but I, I should have to study it. And of course, it's in red and white Knights Templar colors. So here you can read it. So it was not only the Credit Suisse here, but here the Union Bank of Switzerland called UBS, but the, the the year was 1997 and the Credit Suisse, they were deep into it as well. You know, they were a bit smarter. They already destroyed the papers. And um, so this guy here, Christoph Maley, um, is a Swiss American whistleblower and former security professional. In 1997, Maley illegally disclosed to third parties that the Swiss Bank Union Bank of Switzerland was destroying documentation of, uh -huh -huh, I can't pronounce it, sorry, after a federal arrest warrant, etc. It was a huge scandal. Oh yeah, they had to pay uh, one bill, one point two five billion uh, dollars to the uh, the Jaywalkers. So of course I can't pronounce this word here. 
because uh, if I do, uh, my video might be censored by the um, by the Jaywalk censorship. And um, so this guy he visited me once um, in Bern when I was still in Switzerland. Really nice guy. We had dinner together, and uh, good person. And um, so we, st we stayed the whole day. Um, here you see, you know, Credit Suisse, you know, they're involved in it anyway, you know, they're all involved in it. And they got here the Swiss Bankers Association. I wonder what kind of a logo they have. Might be interesting to know that. Um, well, let's have a look then. So it's the same year when they changed this sort of a swastika logo. You understand? Always, you know, sly bankers, you know. Oh, look, they got a red dot. That's all, the sun. And the red dot for the, um, meaning the compass. You know? So, because um, this is Amun Ra. And um, so there should be the square as well, somewhere as well. But the square was already in the, um, in the swastika logo. But, uh, okay, it's not really obvious, but... Um, must be a square somewhere and then the other one there must be somewhere a circle um, referring to the compass so when you read this swiss nazi propaganda about switzerland having the lowest crime rates in the world it is of course a lie and inverse speech as they are in reality the biggest gangsters who ever walked on the earth and of course for the major crime league they play in of swiss banks and swiss pharmaceutical companies you must be able to present a so-called safe environment to attract the various criminal clients from all over the world to deposit their stolen wealth in a safe environment. Strictly held together by the authoritarian Octogon and its corrupt Swiss Nazi police and fascist Swiss authorities, who by all means have just one thing in mind, and that's to keep a low profile on a national level, abiding by the Swiss Omerta, laws of silence. It says, one in two citizens in Switzerland have guns, lowest crime rates in the world in Switzerland. Well, it really looks like paradise, doesn't it now? But they just don't talk about the major crime league they're in, eh? People, I say it again, there's only one way to stop all these wars and injustice towards humanity. And that's to entirely annihilate Switzerland. With their Nazi banks, their highly criminal pharmaceutical companies, their totally useless ONGs in Geneva, like the United Nations, the Red Cross, and the rest, and their conspirational Swiss WEF World Economic Forum. So here we can see the former revolutionary leader Muammar Gaddafi of uh, Libya, and I'll read it for you here. After the Swiss police accused Libyan leader, so I repeat, the Swiss police accused the Libyan leader, uh, Gaddafi's family of criminal activity in Switzerland. So that was a lie, as the Swiss police, they always lie, and I know them, they lied a lot towards me and my family. Then Gaddafi submitted a proposal to the United Nations to abolish Switzerland and divide it up between France, 
Germany and Italy. Good idea. Just eliminate and reset the damn place called Switzerland. That has already too long been the Alpine base for all the world's robber barons. Enough is enough, a eh, Swissy. Let the vengeance of the revolutionary leader be upon you, Swissy. And if I, Sean Ross, must be his spell of vengeance, then so be it, Swissy.